in the remote area of the north of the Heavenly Dragon Empire, Tianzai Castle was located. The structure erected on the snowy mountain has a hundred-year history. It has a great reputation due to the fact that it takes only women into the ranks of its students, and each of those who study in it is even more beautiful than the previous one. Among the mountains, on a deserted corner of Tianzai Castle, the main character practices the use of weapons, honing his fighting skills, brandishing his long spear. He, suffering from fatigue accumulated during the training, declares that he will not give up for anything, even if there is not a drop of Kai blood in him and he cannot cultivate. Making another lightning lunge, cutting the air with his weapon, and uttering loud exclamations, he shouts that he will continue to try his best. His strength is already running out, and the hero freezes, breathing heavily and dropping drops of sweat from his chin. With a deafening thud, he hits the back of the spear on the ground and leans on it with his whole tired body. Cursing loudly and exhaling heavily, he declares that he is absolutely exhausted. Staggering from exhaustion, he drops his weapon to the ground, causing it to make a loud clang. Suddenly, a feminine silhouette appears behind him, who, addressing the main character, who has fallen to his knees from fatigue, calls out to him, calling him a young master. Coughing from fatigue, the hero continues to shudder at the very ground. A beautiful girl in perplexity asks the main character why he is here again, declares that he is only hurting himself. But the hero tries to calm her down by calling her sister Zio Lion, and tells her that he is fine and that he just wanted to work out a little. But the girl, covering him with a warm cape that she brought with her, objects to him, calling him the young master of their castle. She says that the hero should take care of his health. After that, she informs him that the lord of the castle asked her to bring the hero back, but adds that if the lord sees him in this state, he will be extremely excited. The hero, in response to Zio Lion's remarks, silently lowers his head, leaning on his spear. The girl sighs heavily and sadly asks how many more times she will have to speak before the hero hears her. The same one addresses her by name, forcing the girl to look at him questioningly. The hero declares that he knows that trying to cultivate when he has no Kai blood only harms him. But then he convinces Zio Lion that even in this case, he will not give up so easily. In response to his words, the girl only looks down worriedly, again calling him a young master. Changing the subject, the hero asks her to hurry up and go inside, exclaiming that the lord of the castle is already waiting for them. But as soon as they entered, they began to look at them haughtily from all sides. A lot of girls looked down on the hero. Someone announced his arrival, someone sarcastically asked what he was doing here, and someone just clicked contemptuously, pretending sincere surprise. One of the girls asked why the lord of the castle insists that the hero hang around here, calling him garbage. Someone in response declares that he is here only because of his aunt, because otherwise, according to the girl, such garbage would never have received permission to enter here. Zio Lion, irritated and with a bit of sadness, silently looks at the girls crowded behind them, many of whom smiled contemptuously after them. But the main character did not even look up, he silently walked past them, not paying attention to their insults to him. But the girls did not let up. One of them continues to throw humiliating words at the main character. She calls him a man who only knows how to hide behind his back. Someone once again allows himself an insult to him, calling him garbage, and someone exclaims that the hero is the worst and pathetic. And even though he didn't show it, it was safe to say that he felt lonely, as if everyone in the world hated and despised him. He knows that these girls look down on him because he is weak and cannot cultivate. Feeling dozens of contemptuous glances, he realizes that they hate him because he is the son of the previous lord of the castle. The hero realizes that the anger directed in his direction is caused by the fact that he violated the secret rule of Tianzai, which states that a lord cannot marry or have a child. The hero knows that his mother not only violated this rule, but also ran away with the same man as soon as she gave birth to him. Clenching his fist with all his might from anger and a sense of injustice, the hero painfully realizes that to this day nothing has been heard about his parents. Suddenly, the hero's thoughts are interrupted by a familiar voice. The girl, calling the hero Tian Yun, rejoices that he is finally here. The hero turns around and realizes by someone's exclamation that Lady Lord is behind him. The same one, gazing intently at the hero, only asks him if he has sneaked into the street again to improve in the martial art. It becomes clear that her name is Shizu Yun, and that she really is the current lord of Tianzai Castle. After a while, Tian Yun calls her aunt in response to her question. But Shizu Yun, genuinely worried about the hero, says that he does not look good, and then asks if everything is fine with him. In response to her concern, the hero convinces her that he is fine. 
According to the memories of the previous bearer of this body, Shizu Yun and Tian Yun could not even think that they were related by blood. The memories of the time when they were still children make it clear that because his mother asked him to take care of him, Shizu Yun protected him all this time. And even though she understood that he would not be able to cultivate, she would do anything to help and support him. Interrupting the hero's reverie again, the Lord turns to him and asks what he is thinking about. Lightly tapping her index finger on Tian Yun's forehead, she told him that she didn't blame him for cultivating, but asked him to remember the boundaries. And then he adds that if the hero does not agree with this, then she will get angry at him. After Shi Zhu Yun scolded the main character, she, to his surprise, hands him a dark red box covered with a floral pattern, and declares that it is for him. Tian Yun, surprised by the sudden gift from his aunt, asks her what it is. Without waiting for her answer, he opens the box and discovers something lying on a yellow pillow in it. The hero exclaims in shock that it is a divine dragon blood pill. Under the general surprise of the girls, who have been following the dialogue of the heroes all this time, Tian Yun realizes that the divine dragon blood pill is very expensive and valuable. And what they say is that it contains a huge amount of Kai blood. He is surprised to realize that the Lord has paid a high price to get her. She, with a completely incessant face, confirms his assumptions, stating that it is, and it really is a divine pill, and then asks the hero to take it. She says that the divine dragon blood pill will greatly increase the concentration of Kai blood in Tian Yun's body. The main character tries to object to his aunt, but she gently touches his cheek with her finger and smiles sincerely, silencing him. She objects to him that she will not accept any objections, and asks him to use her and renew his blood. And with the same sincere warmth, she tells him that this is all she wants for him. Suddenly, this touching scene is interrupted by a girl. She politely bowed in front of Shizu Yun, informs that the people from the Sky Spirit Clan are already here. In response to this news, the hero repeats her words with surprise, as if not believing in them. On these lands, the factions are divided into five levels. The fifth level is the Divine Nation, the fourth is the Great Empire, the third is the Honorable Estate, the second is the Great Clan, and finally the first is the Great Castle. The hero understands that the Sky Spirit Clan is one level higher than Tian Zai Castle. Shizu Yun, turning to Tian Yun, asks him to return to his place, because she has a lot of things that she needs to sort out. And after that, she, turning away from the hero, loudly commands the others to follow her. As soon as the ant left the hero alone, he began to realize that the Sky Spirit Clan just wanted to force Tian Zai Castle to give them their slot so that she could infiltrate the ancient ruins. But he bitterly realizes that he is not able to do anything about it, because he is too weak. The hero, lowering his head, begins to think about what will happen if he restores his Kai blood. But before he could even finish his thought, he was loudly called out, without even calling by name. Tian Yun, startled by the suddenness, raised his head in surprise. He saw three strong guys in front of him, who were clearly not looking at him with good intentions. The guy who was right in front of him sarcastically asks, calling him a young master, if the hero wants to give them a divine pill. He declares that they need it in order to break through to the next level. And then the guy sarcastically adds that it won't work on the hero anyway, so why not give it to them? The hero knows this guy. It was a disciple outside Tian Zai Castle, Feng Cheng. Tian Yun angrily recalls that these scoundrels shamelessly entered their Tian Zai castle, thanks to the Sky Spirit Clan, in order to find their Dao partners. But the hero is not going to obey right away. He asks, what will happen if he does not refuse? In response to this, Feng Cheng menacingly looms over him and with a surprised exclamation and a sarcastic smile asks him if he really thinks he has the right to refuse. He asks, accusing Tian Yun, about why he behaves like an upstart, and makes the assumption that this is due to the fact that the hero is under the protection of the castle. Smiling nastily again, Feng Cheng calls the hero just garbage, because even his own mother abandoned him. Unable to stand the guy's insolence, Tian Yun loudly insults him, causing him true anger. In this rush, Feng Cheng instantly swings at the hero, simultaneously wishing him death. Without even having time to follow the opponent's fist, Tian Yun receives a strong blow to the jaw, which only caused him to gasp loudly before collapsing to the ground. Falling flat on his face, the hero did not even notice how the box fell out of his hands, opening from the impact on the ground and causing the precious divine dragon blood pill to roll on the floor. One of the guys who came with Feng Cheng exclaimed loudly, drawing the attention of others to the fallen treasure. The hero, being exhausted, denies what is happening with horror. But to his suffering, the guy who just hit him just laughs and declares that Tian Yun doesn't need her anyway. With another contemptuous smile, Feng Cheng jerked towards the pill, intending to take it away from the hero. 
but, to his surprise, the hero shouted for him to take his hands away from her and grabbed his wrists. In the rush of the fight, Tianyun did not notice how he took and swallowed the pill himself. In response to this, Feng Cheng only became more furious and asked in shock how Tianyun dared to eat his divine dragon blood pill at all, and stated that he was going to kill the main character for it. He, shouting that he would force the hero to spit it out, together with his two companions rushed at Tianyun, intending to strike again. But to Feng Cheng's screams, the hero only declares that he will not get the pill even if he dies. And at the same moment, strange flashes flashed around the hero, and an unknown voice congratulated him and announced that the player Yui Tianyun had successfully activated the account of the insane pumping system. The hero opened his eyes with all his might and asked himself in surprise where this voice came from and what happened. He will see how his entire entourage broke into many pieces, and the three guys flying at him with their fists froze. The hero was in a state of shock, continuing to endlessly try to understand what was going on. He was asking why these people who attacked him were now frozen in the air. But instead of answering, he again heard a voice from nowhere, informing him that he had received a thousand experience points. But the hero did not have time to realize his words, as under the new congratulations that the player Yui Tianyun increased his level and reached the first stage of body refinement, he was thrown into the air. But then, without even pausing, the voice sounded again, notifying the hero that he had again increased his level, having already reached the second stage of body refinement. Not understanding what was happening, Tianyun just kept asking questions, trying to figure out what kind of crazy leveling system and what kind of player he was talking about. But the voice wouldn't let up. He again proclaimed that this time the player, having increased his level again, had already reached the fifth stage of body refinement. Suddenly, a panel appeared in front of the hero's eyes and a rapidly filling loading strip. Clenching his fist with all his strength, the hero felt the power filling him. Ordering the villains to get lost, he swung and hit Feng Cheng with all his strength in the stomach. His partner, who was about to attack the main character, only shockingly uttered the name of his friend, who fell backwards. Feng Cheng's face was contorted with a grimace of pain, while Tianyun stood threateningly, and his fist was smoking from the power overflowing him. He looked in surprise at his palm, which was now emitting a blue glow. His eyes lit up with newfound strength, and he asked himself with an enthusiastic smile, is this really the system of insane pumping? Feng Cheng was on one knee, gasping for breath. His friends were behind him, on both sides. He was breathing heavily and looking at Yui Tianyun with horror. He asked in shock if the main character had already earned the fifth level of body refinement. He denied his own words, saying it couldn't be. In this world, the stages of cultivation are divided into nine stages. The first is the stage of body improvement. The second is the stage of spirit improvement. The third is the stage of core consolidation. The fourth is the stage of spirit avoidance. The fifth is the stage of Zen transformation. The sixth is the spiritual stage of Zen. The seventh is the stage of the spirit king. The eighth is the stage of the sacred king. The ninth is the stage of the divine king. Yui Tianyun looked down on Feng Cheng with undisguised contempt. He looked down at him and invited him to verify his own words for himself. But the hero had one single thought in his head. He would never have thought that one pill from dragon's blood would help him so much. Out of fear, Feng Cheng bowed his head in front of Yui Tianyun and began to tremble. He pleaded with the main character and begged to let him go, saying that he was wrong about him. Continuing to tremble with fear, Feng Cheng swore to Yui Tianyun that he would never dare to ask him to give him a pill again. To which the main character, enjoying his absolute superiority over the enemy, ordered him to either rot or bow down before him, and maybe then he would give him a chance. Feng Cheng was shamefully silent and trembled all over his body. Yui Tianyun, in response to this, silently sighed and began to turn away from him. But, suddenly, a sharp blade was waved in the air, and the face of the now defeated enemy was reflected in it. With a grimace of true anger, Feng Cheng rushed at Yui Tianyun, intending to get even with the enemy who had so humiliatingly defeated him. He rushed at him from behind, rapidly reducing the space between them, and shouted for the main character to roll on all four sides. Feng Cheng's blade had already almost pierced Yui Tianyun's body, but to the surprise of the enemy, he turned around sharply and grabbed him by the collar of his robe, lifting him off the ground. The main character swung and knocked Feng Cheng down with all his strength pressing him into the floor and causing the ground to split under his body. Filled with anger, Yui Tianyun shouted at the enemy, as if asking if he was still trying to sneak attack him. The main character squeezed Feng Cheng's wrist in his hand, who was still holding a blade in his palm, with which he intended to attack Yui Tianyun. Without hesitating for a second, the protagonist plunged the weapon directly into Feng Cheng's chest, causing him to grimace in pain and horror. 
Having done this, Yui Tianyan kicked his enemy's limp body, causing him to fly away a dozen meters. Feng Cheng only managed to let out a pitiful exhale. One of his companions, who had been standing aside in silence all this time, called him by name out of the horror that overwhelmed him. Yui Tianyun, seeing the condition of his enemy, suddenly thought that perhaps there was poison on the tip of the dagger. And then, to his surprise, a voice from nowhere spoke again, congratulating him and this time stating that the main character had successfully killed Feng Cheng, a disciple of the Heavenly Spirit sect, thereby earning 300 experience points and 5 insane points. Without stopping, he congratulated him again and informed him that Yui Tianyun had acquired the Eagle Clan technique and the Falling Feather Sword technique as well as one recovery pill. To the new surprise of the main character, a window appeared before his eyes again, thanks to which he could see all his techniques and other objects. Additional information about the technique stated that both of them had a low rank. Yui Tianyun saw through the translucent menu how Feng Cheng's comrades rushed to his aid, despite the fact that he had been dead for a long time. The only question in his mind was, did they give him a reward for killing him? The window changed again. Now it displayed Yui Tianyun himself, surrounded by many cells. The word above his image was status, and below, under the window itself, were his characteristics. They read as follows, the player's name is Yui Tianyun, the player's level is the fifth, the player's experience is 300 points out of a thousand, madness points are five, the player's cultivation technique is not, the player's skills are the eagle clan technique, the falling feather sword technique, the skill is madness mode, level one. Yui Tianyun looked at this window in surprise and only wondered if this was it. He, having thought of it, immediately exclaimed that these characteristics were like from some kind of game. He immediately realized that for a gamer, this is a no-brainer. The voice again announced new information. He again congratulated the player Yui Tianyun on the successful activation of the character, and added that he receives a box of newbie gifts. Immediately after that, the voice asked the main character if he wanted to open it. Yui Tianyun confidently looked at the window and also voiced his agreement. In response to this, the voice announced that the main character receives a tenfold experience card, which, however, will only be valid for one hour, two regulatory pills and a box of gifts for a beginner of the fifth level. Yui Tianyun realized that his body has no cultivation abilities at all, so the system of increasing the level that has appeared will help him a lot. The window made a loud sound, and the main character realized that if he increased his level, he would become insanely strong. However, after that, he immediately asked the question, what kind of madness mode is this? Without thinking twice, he pressed his finger on the window, right on the button that says madness mode. In response to this, the voice began to explain the mechanism of this mode. He explained that the madness mode can double any effect, including alchemy, taking potions, attack, cultivation, gaining experience and much more. Yui Tianyun could only smile in surprise. The main character asked if everything could be strenuously doubled, and this is only the first level. He exclaimed that it was just a divine skill. Yui Tianyun smiled broadly and said that the effect of cultivating and taking the potion could be surprising. From this, the main character realized that taking one pill would be regarded as taking two pills. But then Yui Tianyun twitched and forced himself to stop in his own reasoning. He saw a message in the window saying that madness mode absorbs one point of madness every minute. He looked at his number again. He only has five madness points. The main character swore and said again that the madness mode would take away one point from him every minute. He said that he now has only 5 points of insanity, and that all this will disappear if he only blinks. Breathing heavily, he concluded that the reward for killing Feng Cheng was too low for him. Interrupting Yu Tianyun's thoughts, the plaintive cries of Feng Cheng's comrades resounded throughout the square, who repeatedly echoed his name, until finally one of his comrades proclaimed, trembling all over, that he was dead. He turned to Yui Tianyun, who was standing silently to the side, and while his face was distorted with unbearable anger. He shouted that it was the main character who killed him. But Yui Tianyun was cold. He looked contemptuously and calmly at comrade Feng Cheng and asked him if he had killed him. The main character said that if he had not attacked him with a blade, the outcome would have been completely different, and Feng Cheng would have been alive. Suddenly, interrupting their conversation, footsteps were heard, and a female voice loudly asked what was going on here. Yui Tianyun turned around and realized that it was his aunt Shizu Yun. The girls who came with her found a body lying on the square a second later, and exclaimed in shock that someone had died. Lord Shizu Yun stood silently by and looked down angrily. Feng Cheng was lying lifeless on the ground with a knife sticking out of his chest. Suddenly, a man's voice turned to Aunt Yui Tianyun, 
calling her the Lord of the Soup, and asked what was going on here. Shi Ziu Yun turned around in surprise and saw the one who addressed her. This person turned out to be a disciple of the Heavenly Spirit sect, Fang Yun. Next to him was another man the second elder of the Heavenly Spirit sect, Zhao Hua Long. The girls gathered in the square made way for them. Lord Shi Ziu Yun only addressed one of them, Elder Zhao Hua Long. But as soon as they approached the place around which everyone was gathered, the disciple Feng Yun was horrified by the picture he saw. He rushed to the lifeless body and plaintively called Feng Cheng by name. He bent over him and angrily addressed him, calling him brother, brother, repeating that he had been killed. Then, with undisguised anger, he turned to Yui Tian Yun and exclaimed that he had killed his brother. But, ignoring Feng Yun's grief, the protagonist coldly told him that their people wanted to take his precious dragon blood pill, and that he just rebuffed them. In response to his words, one of Feng Cheng's comrades, who attacked Yui Tian Yun and tried to take the pill from him, exclaimed that they did not steal anything from the main character, and that it was all a setup. He stated that they were just out for a walk, and Yui Tian Yun beat them up. His friend picked him up and began to confirm his words, saying that everything was like that, and they just decided to take a walk, and the main character allegedly said that this was his territory, and the first one eventually attacked them. He didn't let up and kept saying that before they realized everything, Yui Tian Yun attacked Feng Chen. The words of these two convinced Elder Zhao Hua Long, and he gritted his teeth and asked in surprise how their disciples could decide on something so low. He turned to Shi Zhu Yun and demanded that she bother to find an explanation for this. His face took on a menacing and disappointed look, and he said that only the best students were allowed to join the palace. Zhao Hua Long stated that they wanted to continue the relationship between their families. The elder admitted that he didn't expect any of his students to get hurt just walking around the castle grounds. And, addressing Shi Zhu Yun, Zhao Hua Long asked her if the Lord really wanted to destroy the existing relationship. Offended by his statements, Shi Zhu Yun menacingly forced him to explain himself, asking what he was hinting at. Interrupting their conversation, Feng Yun shouted, pointing at Yui Tian Yun that he had killed his brother, and therefore he demanded a deadly duel between the two of them. Elder Zhao Hua Long, breathing heavily, said that this was a fair petition. He stated that their students had not violated the rules of Tian Zai Castle. Pointing at Yui Tian Yun, he said that he had injured them and also killed Feng Cheng. Adjusting his mustache and looking at everyone with contempt, he added that one should not turn a blind eye to this, and offered to resolve it with the help of a fair fight in the arena. Zhao Hua Long said that whether it will be a defeat or a victory, the decision will be made based on the results of the match. Shi Zhu Yun joined the elders' conversation, defending Yui Tian Yun. She stated that the main character is not part of the selection team, so the Heavenly Spirit sect needs to choose another disciple. But Zhao Hua Long was furious. He turned to the Lord, saying that he didn't care whether Yui Tian Yun was a member or not. He announced that the matter was that he had challenged the authority of their Heavenly Spirit sect to a duel. The elder stooped menacingly and, exhaling heavily, asked if they really wanted to provoke a deterioration of the situation. But Shi Zhu Yun insisted on her own and was not going to back down. She stated that she refused it and that they could choose any student except him. Yui Tian Yun heard the voices behind him again. A lot of girls started insulting him again. One said that he, Tian Yun, was trash with a lack of Kai in his blood. Someone said that the main character would die quickly in a fight, and Tian Zai Castle would fall. The third voice confirmed the previous words, saying that everything was right, and he was a terrible loser. He just made too much noise. But all of them decided that this whole situation would end badly for the Heavenly Castle. The main character heard them, but did not utter a word. Zhao Hua Long suddenly said that if he remembered correctly, then Yui Tian Yun was the son of their previous lord. He sarcastically continued to say that, allegedly, there are rumors that the main character does not have enough blood energy and that he could die at any moment. The elder of the Heavenly Spirit sect added that it was no wonder that the master of the Heavenly Castle did not want him to participate in the duel. He looked at Yui Tian Yun and said that even if he is a scum and does not possess Kai, and this battle is just a waste of their time. Now the main character is the man who killed their disciple and challenged their authority. Zhao Hua Long said that otherwise they would not have such ties in the future. Out of anger, Yui Tian Yun clenched his fists, but to the surprise of all the surrounding people, Shi Zhu Yun hit the elder of the heavenly spirit, leaving a slap on his face. Zhao Hua Long could not withstand the blow of the Lord and collapsed almost to the ground, and only the fact that his disciples picked him up allowed him to stay on his feet. Holding onto his burning cheek, he shouted at Zhu Yun's soup in bewilderment, asking what she was doing, and was she really looking for a war because of this fool? But Zhao Hua Long's words did not confuse the Lord in any way. 
She looked at him menacingly and said that the word is not a sparrow, if it crashes, you won't catch it. She asked the elder of the heavenly spirit if Zhao Huolong had heard such an expression. Shi Zhu Yun asked him, if Tian Yun is a non-entity, then are those three lying on the ground even worse than non-entities? Zhao Huolong got to his feet and lowered his gaze menacingly. He assured Shi Zhu Yun that she had made a big mistake. He told her that this slap was disrespectful to him and his clan. The elder of the heavenly spirit sect, stopping his angry disciples, asked the lord if he was wrong. Then why did she not want Yui Tian Yun to fight? In rage, Zhao Huolong angrily said that he would not want problems for him, but he had killed their man and therefore should be responsible for his actions and their consequences. Shi Zhu Yun glared back at him angrily. The lord said that she was sure that Yui Tian Yun would never have attacked without a reason and this whole situation happened only because of their thieving students. And after that, she threatened that if they still blame Tian Yun, then let them not expect her to be polite to them. Yui Tian Yun stared in shock at the light surrounding her aunt Shi Zhu Yun. He realized that it was the aura of a strong person at the stage of Zen condensation. At the same moment, the girls standing behind them began to draw their swords and grin at the members of the Heavenly Spirit sect, ready for battle. But the disciples of the sect did not just stand there. With an unkind smile, they also drew their weapons from their scabbards, intending to attack. But to everyone's surprise, Yui Tianyun spoke up. He loudly proclaimed that he accepted the challenge and would fight on behalf of the heavenly castle. All the people surrounding him uttered surprised exclamations, and even the girls who insulted him more than once were shocked by what they heard. A moment later, the same voice rang out again, notifying Yui Tianyun of a new task. It consisted in the fact that the main character had to defeat a disciple of the Heavenly Spirit sect and lead the Heavenly Castle to victory. Yui Tianyun did not understand this message. He asked himself, what does it mean to win? Is this a side quest? But, exhaling deeply and assuming a threatening look, he declared that this task was as ordered. The window reappeared above Yui Tianyun, and a voice from nowhere loudly announced that the reward for completing the mission would bring the protagonist 10,000 experience points and 200 gold and heavenly armor in the amount of one armor unit. Silhouettes of awards appeared in the air in front of Yui Tianyun's eyes, which had just been voiced by a mysterious voice. In front of him floated the heavenly armor of God and 200 experience units, both of which glowed with a bright blue light. The main character looked at them with fascination and then said that this generous reward was really good. Everything that Yui Tianyun will receive for completing the task will be very useful, especially, as the main character noticed, experience will be useful. But a second later, he noticed one detail. Yui Tianyun realized that the weapon seemed rather low level to him. In this world, weapons and treasures are also divided by quality. There are five categories of weapons. The first class includes weapons of the usual type. The second type of weapon is a relic. The third class includes weapons of the sacred type. The fourth class includes weapons of the spiritual type. And finally, an artifact type weapon belongs to the fifth class. Yui Tianyun, after thinking it over, decided that this was only an initial mission, so he couldn't expect to expect too much. He narrowed his eyes, looking somewhere into the void. Zhao Huolong laughed nastily and sarcastically exclaimed that it was very good, and since the main character agreed to a duel, then the lord of the castle of Shizu Yun should have absolutely no complaints against him. Concerned about Yu Tianyun's action, his aunt addressed him by name and very seriously asked him not to talk nonsense. Behind her, worried girls stood silently. The main character at first stood silently, listening to Shizu Yun's doubts, but then, with a heavy sigh, he spoke. He asked her, calling her auntie, to let him do it and join the duel. The main character said that if he cannot solve this problem himself, then he is not worthy of being protected by his own aunt. His eyes lit up with confidence and determination when Yui Tianyun promised that he would fight in this duel and bring victory to the great Tianzai castle. He looked up at the sky, and a strong wind hit him in the face, dispersing his desire in him. The surrounding people looked at him in silence, but in shock, when the lord of the castle of Tianzai Shizu Yun sighed and said with her pink lips that let it be so and that Yui Tianyun would represent them at the duel. The elder of the heavenly spirit sect, Zhao Huolun, met her resolute and menacing gaze with only a nasty grin. He said that in this case they would meet in two weeks and decide in the arena who is worthy to live and who is destined to die. Yui Tianyun said that he agreed to these conditions, but he set one but. The main character stated that the rest of the battle should be conducted according to standard rules and nothing else. Standing face to face, they looked into each other's eyes angrily. Zhao Huolong stated that the standard rules would naturally be taken into account. He added that they held a grudge against them and now only their battle would be deadly. 
The elder of the Heavenly Spirit sect only stared menacingly after Yu Tianyun and, turning around abruptly, loudly proclaimed to all his disciples who were from him on all sides that they were leaving. Yu Tianyun did not notice how one of Zhao Huolung's disciples came up behind him and hit him with his elbow with all his strength on the head. He glared at him and ordered the main character to prepare a coffin for himself and wait for his own death. Only soft footsteps echoed throughout the square as the people from the Sky Spirit Clan walked away from Tianzai Castle. Following them with her gaze, Shi Zhu Yun said that was enough and ordered the girls, who had been on the square all this time, to return to their business without delay. The same, in response, politely bowed to the lady of the castle and obeyed, addressing her by status. But the girls, rapidly leaving the deserted square, continued to laugh and insult Yui Tianyun. They said that he had made a problem out of nothing, and now the place of the entire Tianzai castle and the ancestral ruins would depend on this battle. Someone picked up one of the girls, saying that the main character is really worthless, but he still agreed to a duel. Someone aptly pointed out that even if we accept the fact that Yui Tianyun somehow managed to kill Feng Cheng, his brother, Feng Yun, is on a completely different level. The main character was left alone with Shizu Yun in an empty temple. Castle Lord Tianzai turned to him and comforted him warmly, saying that when the time came, he would not need to force himself. She assured him that it wouldn't be a big deal even if he lost to his opponent. Shizu Yun added that all that is important to her is that Yui Tianyun will remain alive, and she will be able to figure out everything else on her own. But despite her fears, the main character only smiled playfully. He looked directly into the eyes of the Lord of Tianzai Castle and asked her if she believed in him. Shizu Yun turned to him uncomprehendingly and looked at him. But, a second later, she exhaled heavily, frowning, and fervently said that, of course, she believed in him. She clung to him, gently looking into his eyes and gently said that Yui Tianyun should make sure that he would not harm himself. The main character couldn't help smiling at his aunt's concern and gently calmed her down so that she wouldn't worry, and he would definitely win this duel. He smiled as sincerely as his pride allowed him, and with a pinch of sadness and some kind of fatigue, he said that even if he dies in the upcoming battle, the main character no longer intends to prostrate himself. Yui Tianyun blushed and asked Shizu Yun to let him be stubborn, at least this time. The main character opened his eyes wide and looked at the Lord of Tianzai Castle. Yui Tianyun said that he did not want his aunt to be judged because of his act at all. The main character said that he didn't want anyone to hurt her again. In response to his frank and warm words, Zhu Yun's cheeks blossomed in her face, and her cheeks turned pink. Aunt was moved by Yui Tianyun's words, so much so that tears sparkled on her scarlet cheeks. She touchingly lowered her head and, covering her mouth with her hand, called the main character silly and asked what he was talking about at all. In response to her words, Yui Tianyun gently touched his aunt's cheek and wiped away the rapidly running hot tear. To the surprise of the Lord of Tianzai Castle, the main character asked what she meant by calling him a baby. He stated that Shi Yun is not much older than him at all. Yui Tianyun smiled sincerely and exclaimed that it was fitting for him to call her his big sister. But, in response to his tenderness, the Lord of Tianzai Castle only got embarrassed and angry and climbed at him with her fists. She hit Yu Tianyun on the head and loudly proclaimed that he was still a brute. The main character finds himself in his home in Tianzai Castle. Yui Tianyun was sitting in his room all alone, and even the shutters of his windows blocked the bright sunlight that was so persistently trying to get into his room. He was sitting on his bed and thinking out loud that, if you think about it, the main character has already received a bag with gifts of the fifth level, but has not yet opened it. He was overcome with curiosity, and he decided to see how good things could fall to him. With a familiar sound, blue translucent windows with text appeared again in front of Yui Tianyun's eyes and the voice congratulated the main character again. He announced that Yui Tianyun had activated the lottery function. The voice also said that the main character received three recovery pills and two new skills. The first was the Great Star Absorption Technique, and the second was the Northern God of the Lower World. It also turned out that he had received a bag of gifts of the 11th level in addition. Yui Tianyun exclaimed enthusiastically that this was a very good start. He recited the names of the new skills again namely the Great Star Absorption Technique and the Northern God of the Nether World. The main character looked at his reward with surprise and did not understand if he really got all these amazing fighting skills just for getting the fifth level. Having examined his acquired techniques in the windows that appeared, he announced that he couldn't wait to find out what skills he could get in the future. After that, Yui Tianyun added that he wanted to know what the lottery was about. By pressing his finger on the corresponding button that appeared in front of him, he activated the lottery. A disc with many compartments appeared in front of him in the blink of an eye. 
These compartments contained inscriptions of things like divine abilities, cultivating techniques, consumables, ordinary materials, accessories, weapons and equipment, skills, and finally luck. Shocked by such an unusual sight, Yui Tianyun could only make a surprised sound. After taking another look at the ring, he began to reason. The main character noticed that consumables have too many slots, while skills and cultivating techniques have only a few. He subtly noticed that compared to the other categories, divine skills have the least slots. After thinking about it and making the appropriate calculations, Yui Tianyun concluded that, it turns out, the ratio to get what you want is 1 in 10,000. The main character confidently stated that he would need a lot of luck. But as soon as Yui Tianyun pressed the button again, the window popped up into the air again. A loud voice announced that, due to the fact that the main character opened the lottery for the first time, he is given as many as three free chances to play. Without thinking for a second, Yui Tianyun loudly agrees to the conditions of the voice and pulls his hand. A deafening sound is heard in the air, and a voice announces that the lottery wheel is activated. The wheel starts spinning at an inhuman speed, causing the symbols located on its square to flash insanely fast before Yui Tianyun's eyes. But the main character did not even think to look away. The only thing Yui Tianyun did was breathe heavily, endlessly saying the same thing. He whispered about what he wanted more than anything in the world a divine ability. The tension from the rapid rotation of the lottery wheel forced the main character to squeeze both of his fists with all his might. Yui Tianyun was shaking with impatience and kept talking, asking for something to give him a divine ability. Finally, the lottery wheel stopped, but the main character did not have a divine ability at all. Yui Tianyun only dropped a weapon. But, even though he didn't get what he wanted so much, the main character was still incredibly happy. He exclaimed enthusiastically, enjoying the fact that he had at least a weapon. The voice notified Yu Tianyun again, congratulating him and saying that he had pulled out a weapon. Ice gloves. At the same instant, a silhouette of steel gauntlets with spikes like ice blades appeared in the air, which glowed with a bright blue light. Yui Tianyun looked at his new weapon with surprise, and asked if these were the ice gloves and if they were gloves. The main character began to read the description of the object displayed on a translucent blue window. Right above the image of the ice gauntlets themselves is a note explaining what the attribute of the ice attack is, namely that it reduces the speed of enemies. However, under the window with the picture of the weapon there was an inscription stating that this item has the usual quality, and that it can be improved. Below, a special skill was mentioned in a separate window. It stated that the player can use madness points, thereby freezing anything within a radius of 100 meters, and in this case this weapon will reduce the speed of everyone who falls under this effect. Yui Tianyun admired all this detailed information on the window. He enthusiastically declared that the speed reduction was a great effect, and that it was such a pity that this item only had the usual quality. But the main character immediately noticed that they could be improved, so he decided to leave them for later. Taking the newfound ice gloves in his hand, Yui Tianyun decided to sum up by looking at what he had in the end. Clicking on the translucent blue window again, he began to reason. The main character said that glasses are needed to improve. Yui Tianyun happily realized that this was a good thing, because he could easily earn the necessary experience for this. Touching the main character opened a new window in front of him with all his statistics. In front of him was the following. The player's name was Yui Tianyun. The player's level was the fifth. That is, the fifth stage of body improvement. The number of madness points was five. The cultivation technique was the art of the northern god of the lower world whose spiritual level or possession was zero points out of a thousand. The hero's skills are the great star absorption technique, whose spiritual level or possession was zero points out of a thousand. The player's weapons are ice gauntlets, whose quality was ordinary and possession was zero points out of a thousand. The player's divine abilities are madness mode, which requires 10,000 madness points to improve. The last point shocked Yui Tianyun incredibly. He asked in surprise if this mode was asking for 10,000 madness points. The main character started to reason out loud and said that he only got 5 points for killing Feng Cheng. He wondered if it could be that he would only get points by killing other people. Exhaling heavily, he only said dejectedly that this was really madness and that it was simply impossible. But after that, his old enthusiasm returned to him and he decided that maybe he should play the lottery again. But as soon as he tried to make up his mind, a voice from nowhere, accompanying his speech with a new blue window, announced that the lottery wheel requires as many as a thousand madness points for one game. Yui Tianyun was horrified by this news. He, as if not believing what he had heard, repeated the sum of a thousand points again. 
Having moderated his ardor and cooled down, the main character tilted his head and exhaled heavily. Yui Tianyun decided that it should be so, and for the time being he would forget about it. The main character began to reason again. Yui Tianyun realized that Feng Yun is at the 17th level of body improvement, which is higher than the stage at which the main character is by two whole units, and the threatening silhouette of his future opponent appeared in front of Yui Tianyun's eyes. The main character firmly understood that he just needed to focus on raising his level. Yui Tianyun confidently lowered his eyebrows and proclaimed that it was then that he would definitely win an absolute victory in the upcoming duel. Moonlight filtered through the shutters of the windows in Yu Tianyun's room, falling on his body as he sat cross-legged on the floor in silence. There was nothing but confidence and determination in his eyes. In the blink of an eye, he was on the roof of the temple and, hidden behind the darkness of the night, pushed off somewhere high. The main character did it so quickly and imperceptibly that the girl with a lantern patrolling the street below didn't even pay any attention to him. With insane strength and speed, pushing off from the ledges of the rocks, Yui Tianyun raced at full speed, covering incredible distances in seconds. Having cut the air with his jumps, the main character finally landed firmly and with a loud sound on the ground. He looked around confidently and playfully and announced that he should start already. And Yi Tianyun, who was dangerously holding his trusty spear in his hand, began to be surrounded by dozens of snow-white wolves, each of which had two red eyes filled with bestial rage and madness. Yui Tianyun stood in the middle of an icy desert, surrounded by dozens of wild snow wolves, whose skins were barely visible against the background of the surrounding mountains, and red eyes expressed nothing but animal hunger. Only these flashes allowed the main character to understand where his enemies were in this pitch black night. Yui Tianyun stood confidently and realized that it had been a long time since he had been here. The main character knew that, judging by his memories, he had not seen this place for the first time. Yui Tianyun cautiously looked around, analyzing the situation, and said that the real owner of this body wanted to borrow the very essence of the wolf and improve his blood, but he was too weak and almost died. Suddenly, one of the white snow wolves threw its muzzle and, opening its mouth full of razor-sharp teeth, howled at the main character. The beast's eyes shone so brightly in the dark. But Yui Tianyun was not taken by surprise and he said that this time everything will definitely turn out differently. At the same moment, the wild wolf broke from its own place and, growling deafeningly and aggressively, rushed at the main character. He ran so fast, pushing off with his thin but muscular paws with sharp claws, that the frozen ground, covered with ice and snow, crumbled under him, scattering cold crumbs in the wind. Yui Tianyun was ready to fight the beast, so, quickly taking a stance, he swung his long spear with a deafening battle cry and hit the wolf in the jaw. But, before the main character could catch his breath, the rest of the wolf pack rushed at Yui Tianyun, releasing sharp claws and exposing long fangs. The main character predetermined this and, with a dissatisfied click, said in disappointment that they were attacking from behind. Yui Tianyun swung his thin and light weapon again this time hitting two snow-wild wolves in the muzzles at once. However, this time, instead of letting the beasts fall to the ground, the main character decided to take advantage of the opportunity to apply his newly acquired technique. Yui Tianyun made a dash to the wolf and, swinging his hand, pronounced the name of the spell, namely the Eagle Claw Technique. As soon as the main character grabbed the snow wolf by the fur, he instantly petrified and froze in the air, not even able to resist. He was trembling, but there was nothing he could do. Marveling at his own new abilities, Yui Tianyun chuckled and exclaimed that the Eagle Claw's grip was simply amazing. And after that, as if out of politeness and addressing a furious animal, the main character asked the wolf to let him try something else on him. Of course, without waiting for the wild snow monster's consent, Yui Tianyun shouted, about to apply another technique that he had recently received. He bent down and, allowing a gust of force to ruffle his hair and bright red lightning to sparkle in his confident eyes, he pronounced the name of his second ability, namely the Star Absorption Technique. At the same moment, Yui Tianyun and the Snow Wolf, which he was holding by its snow-white fur, were surrounded by red bright glowing lightning, spiraling straight into the back of the stricken beast. The eyes of the main character lit up from the incredible power overflowing him. He shook and screamed. And immediately, as if on command, a new blue window appeared, accompanied by a familiar voice from nowhere. A mysterious voice announced that Yui Tianyun had gained one experience point, then continued that he had already gained two experience points, then three experience points. Holding the weakened mad wild animal by the throat, the main character's hand squeezed the barely alive beast with all its strength, glowing from the power flowing to it. But the voice wouldn't let up. 
He had already said that Yui Tianyun had gained 12 experience points, then 13 experience points. The muscles on the wrists of the protagonist tensed so much that Yui Tianyun began to tremble all over his body. And on the window, the numbers kept changing and changing incredibly fast. 36 experience points have already been obtained, now 37 experience points. Finally, the wild snow wolf let out his last breath, and his body went limp, and a grimace of shock and impotence froze forever on his muzzle. And at the same moment, a voice announced, congratulating Yui Tianyun that he had successfully killed the snow wolf. He added that thanks to this, the main character received 50 experience points and 3 madness points. The main character, without ceremony, threw the lifeless body of the previously incredibly dangerous beast to the ground and looked at his palm with some shock and concern. Marveling at his new strength, which he had recently received, Yui Tianyun said that this was what he expected from the star absorption technique. He confirmed his own assumptions and said that the technique devours someone else's Kai, and at the same time gives the main character experience. But a certain fear of his new incredible power, capable of taking someone else's life, was replaced after a moment by heated enthusiasm and a desire for easy pumping. And Yui Tianyun exclaimed that this was just wonderful, and that he immediately needed to continue. With a wide smile full of excitement, he rushed into the crowd of crazed snow wild wolves, intending to use the star absorption technique. Accompanying every victory of Yui Tianyun, the voice did not stop for a second. As soon as the main character once again took a new Kai from the body of a wild beast with burning eyes, the voice congratulated Yu Tianyun and exclaimed that he had successfully killed the snow wolf and earned 50 experience points and 3 madness points. At one point, even the main character himself stopped noticing the number of defeated creatures, and only went into a rage. Yui Tianyun enthusiastically realized that he could feel the Kai blood circulating through his body, and the internal energy filling his meridians. The main character realized that his steps became much easier and faster than they were before this simple battle. He smiled sincerely, contentedly and with a slight gloating, happily realizing how the cultivator still feels. Looking back and seeing many more wild animals only more enraged, the main character exclaimed that there were still many snow wolves left, and that they should not be wasted. But as soon as the mad animals with burning scarlet eyes rushed at Yu Tianyun again, he decided that he would try out his new weapon and instantly put a glove with silver blades on his fist making it glow with incredible strength. The main character made a sharp lunge, shouting the name of his weapon, the ice gauntlet, and a lot of bright lightning flashed around him again. In the blink of an eye, rushing into the crowd of snow wolves that were already about to attack Yui Tianyun, he scattered them all over their battle zone, killing several already lifeless beasts at once with one blow. And the voice accompanied this incredible blow with the announcement that the main character had successfully killed as many as five snow wolves, while receiving 2,500 experience points and five madness points. Looking around the battlefield and the lifeless bodies of his former bestial enemies, Yui Tianyun looked with a kind of madness and delight at his hand holding a silver weapon that smoked with glowing red streams of matter, and exclaimed with all inner delight that these ice gloves are amazing smiling all over his mouth and simultaneously opening his interface with the inventory, he looked at the objects. Finally, having found what he was looking for so hard, he said that now each wolf gives only 50 experience points, and that now is the time to use all the advantages. He solemnly exclaimed that now was the time to use the cards to gain tenfold experience. Yui Tianyun, standing in a confident and inviting stance and smiling heartily, exclaimed to the snow wolves that had already rushed at him, furiously opening their mouths full of incredibly sharp, dagger-like teeth so that they would attack him without delay. Wild, crazed animals did not contradict the main character and rushed at him with the whole impetuous crowd. Yui Tianyun soared into the air towards the snow wolves and, as if referring to the experience itself, exclaimed that he was following him and that he would definitely become stronger. The battle was unequal and therefore proceeded incredibly quickly, so much so that the main character stopped even noticing when he once again left his wild animal enemies defeated. And only a familiar unknown voice, when the hero left behind only the lifeless body of a snow wolf, endlessly congratulated Yui Tianyun and declared how many wolves he had killed and how many experience points and madness points he had earned so much. Thanks to the applied experience card in tenfold volume, the score of points was already tens of thousands, and the number of defeated enemies was hundreds. 
Here he has successfully killed seven snow wolves, earning 3,500 experience points and 21 madness points. Here he has already killed as many as nine snow wolves and has now earned as much as 4,500 experience points and 27 madness points. Now it's smaller. Yui Tianyun killed five snow wolves and received 2,500 points of precious experience and 21 points of madness. Only after an incredible amount of time, the main character, breathing very heavily, froze in the middle of a field with hundreds of lifeless bodies of wild snow wolves, finally allowing himself the necessary rest, and his ice glove, which he clenched into a fist, smoked with an unknown glowing red matter. Filled with an energy he had never seen before, Yui Tianyun only stood silently, listening to the voice speaking again, which announced to him that he had already successfully reached the sixth level of body improvement. That again, the voice stated that the main character had already successfully reached the seventh level of body improvement. And finally, the voice, once again congratulating him, ended with the fact that Yui Tianyun had successfully reached the eighth level of body perfection. But, suddenly, continuing to breathe heavily, the main character heard an inhuman furious howl that sounded very close. Wearily, he shifted his gaze from his ice glove to the direction from which the animal sound was coming. Yui Tianyun's gaze opened to a high icy ledge of rock, illuminated by a bright incomplete moon, on which stood a black wolf silhouette with familiar burning eyes. But this was not one of those ordinary wolves whose lifeless bodies were now scattered all over the snow field. Above the shadowy silhouette, an inscription in a golden frame decorated with the head of a beast hung menacingly and solemnly, stating that the king of the snow wolves himself was standing in front of Yui Tianyun. The main character, as if not believing his own eyes, repeated what was written in the window, namely the name of the new opponent. Yui Tianyun quickly realized and exclaimed that it must be the boss. The main character added that his name is even in a gold frame. The new animal opponent looked much larger than his former comrades, his fur was much thicker, his teeth were longer, his eyes glowed with a bright yellow flame, and there was a clearly noticeable diamond-shaped brand on his forehead. Immediately, the familiar windows appeared in the air again, and a voice announced that Yui Tianyun had a new task, which was that he now needed to kill the Snow Wolf King. He added that the reward for completing this task will be not a little, not a little, five experience points and a whole challenge of a Snow Wolf is a mount. This statement caused the protagonist to be genuinely surprised, such that he repeated the last words of the voice about the sled animal. With an inner gloating and a grin, Yui Tianyun thought that the Snow Wolf King would rather die than become a mount. The main character liked this idea very much, so he smiled and said that that was why he simply had to complete this task. At the same moment, the Snow Wolf King roared with all his might and with his eyes burning with mad anger, with his mouth open, rushed to Yui Tianyun. The Snow White Wolf was huge, almost five times larger than the main character, and so strong that, rushing at Yu Tianyun, a glowing red barrier formed around him under the influence of his inner strength. But, of course, the main character didn't care a bit, and he rushed at the beast in response, even urging him on, wanting the fight to start faster. Yui Tianyun shouted at the top of his voice that he would get the Snow Wolf King into his mounts. Finally colliding, the opponents left behind an incredibly bright multicolored flash of energy. It's been two whole weeks since the training. As discussed, a lot of people gathered in the main square of the Tianzai Temple to watch the duel. But Yui Tianyun still did not show up, so, unable to stand the weight, one of the members of the Heavenly Spirit sect loudly and indignantly asked the audience where, in fact, the main character was. It turned out that it was Elder Zhao Hua Lung himself who spoke. He indignantly raised his hand in the direction of Shizu Yun, who was standing at a distance from him, and, turning to her, proclaimed that if Yui Tianyun did not show up, then everything would not end like last time. All the muscles of the elder's face tensed from the insult. Feng Yun immediately intervened. He asked in a fit of rage that if this loser had escaped, then how could he avenge the death of his brother Feng Cheng? But ignoring the indignation of the members of the Heavenly Spirit sect, Lord Shizu Yun looked at them firmly and confidently proclaimed that Yui Tianyun said that he was not going to run away. Unable to withstand the insolence of her opponents, she sincerely asked if they could wait a little. In response to the request of the main character's aunt, Zhao Hua Lung, Grinning nastily, arrogantly said that he was betting that Yu Tianyun had stolen because he was scared and did not want to inevitably die in a duel. The elder ironically exclaimed that the heavenly castle of Tianzai had killed their disciple, and then disregarded the promise of battle. 
Zhao Huolong openly threatened that because of such audacity, they would have to give them the right to enter the ruins. Shizu Yun closed her eyes in rage and silently realized that she knew that, as expected, the goal of the members of the Heavenly Spirit sect from the very beginning was to rob their ruins. In a fit of superiority and arrogance, Zhao Huolong exclaimed that if the murderer escaped, the heavenly castle of Tian Zai owed them. But before he could finish his thought, a familiar voice from somewhere above interrupted him. Zhao Huolong twitched and turned in the direction from which the voice came. There, on the roof of the temple, Yui Tianyun stood and ironically asked who told him that he was scared. Standing proudly on top of the building and causing all the followers of the Heavenly Spirit sect to turn to him in disbelief, Yui Tianyun deafeningly proclaimed that he was here, as promised. He calmly but confidently and with a bit of gloating asked if they were ready for battle. Yui Tianyun jumped off the roof of the temple with a lightning movement, leaving a trail in the air behind him. Hundreds of girls gathered below looked at the main character in surprise. One of them said in surprise that she sincerely believed that Yui Tianyun had escaped. Another girl keenly noticed that the main character looks untidy and dirty, and made a bold assumption that he had been hiding in the mountains all these few days. But, uh, she timidly added that, to her surprise, she feels that Yui Tianyun seems to have changed. The main character was already standing proudly on the ground, and his appearance can really be described as shabby. Both on his clothes and on his face he had scuffs and small bruises, but he only smiled silently and steadfastly. Breaking the female whisper, Feng Yun loudly and maliciously admitted that at least Yui Tianyun was not a coward, since he still showed up for the duel. Zhao Huolun surprisingly politely said, addressing Lord Shizu Yun, that now that everyone was gathered, she should allow them to fight. The girls did not let up and began to whisper again, standing behind the aunt of the main character and looking at Yui Tianyun with some fear and doubt. Someone sincerely and comprehensively asked why he still returned and one, in response to this, assured that the main character would still lose with a bang. And only Shizu Yun stood silently, looking at the main character, and thinking that he still came, no matter what. Zhao Huolong stood silently and looked at Yu Tianyun with disdain, but in his mind he said that since this underdeveloped one had appeared, they could easily win one round. The elder shouted loudly about the conditions of the duel, stating that the winner who wins three rounds out of five will get a place in the ancient ruins. Zhao Huolong turned to his students and asked which one of them would fight in the first round for the Tianzai Palace. Yui Tianyun, without hesitation, proudly said with a smile that, of course, it would be him. At the same moment, the main character felt a strong female hand grab his wrist. Yui Tianyun turned around and saw a worried Shizu Yun. The Lord of Tianzai Castle plaintively extended her tender hand to him and said fervently that if the main character could not fight, he could just give up and admit defeat. But in response to Shizu Yun's concern, Yi Tianyun only smiled affectionately and tenderly, calling her his aunt, and asked her not to worry. The main character assured the Lord of Tianzai Castle that he would never allow anyone to humiliate him again. With these words, Yi Tianyun turned away from Zhu Yun's shield and, sighing, headed for the ring leaving her silently and fascinated to look after him. Zhao Huolong grinned maliciously and, addressing Feng Yun, whispered to Tom that he knew what he needed to do. In response to the elder's words, Brother Feng Cheng nodded to him and obeyed the order. Zhao Huolong sincerely grinned to himself, basking in superiority, and thought that thanks to the boy, he got a chance to humiliate Tian Zai Castle, as well as take away their places in the ancient ruins. After finishing the internal monologue, the elder proudly announced in his voice that the first round of the battle for the ruins was beginning, and he added that the only way to admit defeat is to leave the arena, and in no other way. Yui Tianyun and Feng Yun stood in front of each other on the stone platform, which was an arena, and silently drilled each other with aggressive glances. Suddenly, Brother Feng Cheng rushed at his opponent with a furious look and yelled, calling the main character a scoundrel that he would not let him leave this arena alive from him. Feng Yun exclaimed that he would torture Yi Tianyun until he himself begged to be killed. The guy swore that he would avenge his brother Feng Cheng. But in response to Feng Yun's threats, the main character only looked at him arrogantly and asked with a grin if he was serious. Yi Tianyun sarcastically told him to play around and show what he was capable of, and with these words beckoned him with his fingers, as if inviting him. These words made Feng Yun furious, and he, taking a stand and causing glowing red smoke to swirl around him, yelled for the main character to immediately apologize to his brother Feng Cheng. Feng Yun rushed at the hero, activating the eagle claw technique and forced his hand to take the form of a bird's paw, dotted with sharp outgrowths, and light up with a bright red fire. 
Shizu Yun, in a fit of emotion, exclaimed Yui Tian Yun so that he would not worry. The Lord of Tian Zai Castle promised that if the situation became too dangerous for him, she would definitely save him. In response to her loud statement, Zhao Hua Lung only laughed and sarcastically asked if she really thought that this trash would really have time to survive. Feng Yun's hand swiftly jerked towards Yui Tian Yun's throat, and he screamed for the protagonist to die faster at his hands. But despite the shouts of those around him, both supportive and insulting, Yui Tian Yun lunged and instantly grabbed Feng Yun by the clawed paw. And a second later, to the opponent's horror, bright red lightning sparkled around the main character. His eyes flashed with superhuman strength, and Yui Tianyun himself pronounced the name of his own technique, namely the technique of absorbing the great star. Feng Yun was shocked by such suddenness, and, falling to the ground, managed only to ask in horror what was going on here. Zhao Hu alum, seeing what was happening to his disciple, himself experienced a fear he had never seen before and cried out, asking what kind of technique it was. Being held hostage by Yu Tianyun's strong grip, Feng Yun screamed, realizing that his spiritual Kai energy was leaving his body. At the same time, the familiar blue windows flashed in the air again, and the voice began to echo that the main character gets one experience point, then two, then three. Feng Yun yelled for Yui Tianyun to let him go, but he did not even move, allowing the counter of absorbed points to reach first the mark of 16, then 17. Now the main character, smiling madly, got 23 and 24 points, now 33 and 34, then as many as 57 and 58 points. Suddenly, to everyone's surprise, the tip of the blade popped out from under Feng Yun's sleeve, from which green smoke was clearly coming. In response to such audacity, Shizu Yun shouted that Feng Yun was hiding a poisoned blade, and immediately rushed to Yui Tian Yun to help. But suddenly Zhao Huolung appeared out of nowhere and stopped her and exclaimed that she had no right to interfere in the duel. The elder himself was shocked by the turn of the fight, but he believed in his disciple to the last and that Tom would be able to defeat the main character. But, in response to Zhao Huolong's statement, Shizu Yun was surrounded by an incredible sparkling aura of power, and she ordered him to get out of her way. However, their brewing conflict was stopped by a loud cry of pain. Feng Yun stood with his own blade in his chest, and his face was distorted by a grimace of horror. In response to his plaintive moan, Yui Tianyun exclaimed haughtily that he was not surprised by his opponent's poisoned weapon. He, hitting Feng Yun's already limp body, declared that, as he expected, brothers are two boots, a pair. Seeing his disciple's body hurtling to the ground, Zhao Hua Long shouted his name and rushed to him. The elder picked up Feng Yun's body, calling him by name, but he was no longer breathing. He, trembling with fear, rage and grief, bowed his head over the body, while Yui Tianyun calmly stood aside. The voice congratulated the protagonist again and announced that he had successfully killed Feng Yun, a disciple of the Heavenly Spirit Clan. And for that, Yui Tianyun gets 700 experience points and 20 madness points. Accompanying the announcement with a picture of a red ball, the window notified the main character that he had taken possession of a healing pill. Not believing in what was happening, the girls whispered with renewed vigor and zeal. They didn't understand if it was really Yu Tian Yun and how he had become so strong. Only Shizu Yun was silent. She, seriously pursing her lips, said to herself that the abilities of the main character must be already at the 7th or 8th level of body improvement. Zhao Hua Lun flared up with sincere rage, and exclaimed that appearances were really deceiving and Yui Tian Yun really wasn't trash, and that it wasn't surprising that he had killed Feng Cheng after all. At the same time, the main character calmly stated that both brothers were still stupid, and that their death was dog-like. He looked down on the body slightly madly and coldly said that both of them got what they deserved. In response to such baseness, Zhao Hua Lung jumped up and looked madly at Yui Tianyun, and in his head sounded only that this child should not stay alive. Someone loudly proclaimed that the winner of the first round of Tian Zai Castle is Yui Tianyun. Shizu Yun breathed out a sigh of relief and said that he could come down now. But Zhao Hua Lung interrupted her menacingly, saying that he would not let him go so easily. He exclaimed that the main character had killed a disciple of their heavenly spirit clan, and since he had won, he should advance to the second round. In response, Shizu Yun looked at him menacingly and said that the elder just wanted to kill Yui Tian Yun. She added that he had already won, so he no longer needed to fight, and let Zhao Hua Long not think that he could force them with the name of the heavenly spirit clan. Now she turned to the main character and asked him to come down, saying that he no longer needed to fight and force himself. But Yui Tianyun only exclaimed that he was fine. He confidently raised his head and only asked Shizu Yun to let him continue and prove that she had not made a mistake protecting him and that he was worthy of her care. 
Castle Lord Tian Zai looked at him in surprise and thought that she had never seen Yui Tianyun like this. He asked what he had to go through to change so much in such a short time. Then Zhao Hua Lung joined in. He said that the fact that the main character killed Feng Yun does not change anything, and that the loser will forever remain only a loser. He turned to his other elite disciple, Mo Cheng, and said that he would be the next, merciless opponent, to which he tenderly bowed to the elder and accepted the challenge. The girls, seeing Yui Tianyun's new opponent, spoke warily. One said that now they will definitely lose, because Mo Cheng is at the ninth level of body refinement. Facing the opponent's gaze, Mo Cheng said that the main character is really strong. But then he added that Yui Tianyun's movements are too rigid and predictable, his strength is not explosive, and his movements are too slow. The young man smiled and haughtily said that if the main character could survive his three movements, then so be it, he would admit defeat. In response to Mo Cheng's audacity, Yui Tianyun smiled and thanked him, saying that he was too naive, thinking that he could finish him off with three movements, because he himself only needed one to finish Mo Cheng. In response to such a strong statement, he just kept silent. Zhao Hua Long chuckled and asked if it was just because he won in the last duel that Yui Tianyun thinks he is invincible. Mo Cheng smiled, and, jumping into the air, declared that his first move would be the technique of flying cloud steps. His silhouette broke into many small copies and he, laughing, exclaimed that the hero should try to avoid this attack if he could. Shocked by what was happening, Shi Zhu Yun realized that this was the technique of the Heavenly Spirit Clan. But in response to such loud statements, Yu Tianyun only grinned. He instantly swung, rushed to Mo Cheng, and, hitting him with his elbow with all his strength on the jaw, declared that it was too easy for him. The dark-haired guy tries to touch the man, but he does not succeed. Mo Cheng dissipates every time and leaves a haze behind him. The guy grunts questioningly, and Mo Cheng laughs at him and asks how the guy is going to touch him with such a low skill level. Mo Cheng talks about using the famous technique of the Sky Spirit Clan, the tread of a flying cloud. Mo Cheng appears behind the dark-haired guy and, grinning, adds that the essence of this technique is that everything he could touch was an optical illusion. Mo Cheng is too fast. The guy waves his hand in his direction, dispelling another optical illusion and indicates that the man talks too much. The guy swears, because he realizes that an illusion has appeared in front of him again. The guy is very unhappy that Mo Cheng continues to fly in circles, so it's impossible to touch him. Mo Cheng appears again behind the dark-haired guy and is going to attack him from the air. The guy turns around in confusion and sees a huge eagle claw trying to attack him. One of the girls who watched the fight, horrified, asks her master to be careful. The girl with blonde hair who is standing next to her covers her eyes with her hand, as she realizes that it is too late, and the dark-haired guy will not have time to dodge the blow. One of the spectators chuckles and says that Eagle Claw will give odds to anyone. These are the very consequences of provoking the Heavenly Spirit Clan. There is a bright flash, and then a light haze appears in the air, which dissipates after a while. Mo Cheng doesn't understand what's going on. He tried to attack the dark-haired guy, but his huge clawed paw was stopped. The dark-haired guy was holding him and laughing at the fact that the man got caught. That's all he's been waiting for. The viewer is shocked. He is surprised because the dark-haired guy knows the technique of their clan. Mo Cheng looks menacingly at the dark-haired guy. He still decides to finish the attack and says that even if the young man knows their technique, for him, he's still not the strongest opponent. He grabs the young man by the torso, lifts him above himself and is going to show what a real eagle claw looks like. The guy tries to wriggle out of the grip. He says he doesn't care about their skills. He's just going to get to his opponent. Then the guy tightly squeezes the eagle claw that grabbed him and, smiling, uses the technique of absorbing the great star. Mo Cheng feels his strength leaving him. He looks at the guy with horror in his eyes and starts puffing. It seemed strange to one of the spectators that Mo Cheng's aura weakens after he touched the young gentleman. Mo Cheng of the Heavenly Spirit Clan is amazed because the young man uses his terrifying skill. He asks Mo Cheng to get rid of him, immediately. The guy holds Mo Cheng's eagle claw, who is already just reaching forward, and says that he doesn't even have the strength to stand. The guy asks Mo Cheng why he's falling, can't he stand on his feet anymore? Mo Cheng raises his voice and asks him to let go. He is furious because he does not understand how he can lose to a weak opponent. Mo Cheng didn't think he would ever find himself in such a situation. But even so, he decides that he won't let Tian Yun win. Mo Cheng takes a black ball out of his pocket and squeezes it with all his strength, intending to take the young man with him. There is a flash that temporarily blinds everyone who is in the arena. Absolutely everyone covered themselves with their hands so as not to go blind. The girl looks at the battle excitedly and thinks about what happened to Tian Yun, whether he was able to survive. 
After some time, the haze dissipates after a blinding explosion and flash. The entire arena was visible again. The man from the Heavenly Spirit Clan sighs. He was sorry that they had to sacrifice a genius like Mo Cheng, especially because of some guy. He sighs even harder, pretending to be sorry. After the haze cleared, Tian Yun appeared on the battlefield. He was trying to get out from under the rock. He smiles and says that he is also very sorry that Mo Cheng has left the world of the living. The man from the Heavenly Spirit Clan goes into shock. He doesn't understand how the guy could survive after such a powerful attack. Tian Yun receives a message. He is congratulated for coping with the elite disciple of the Heavenly Spirit Clan, Mo Cheng. For this victory, he received 800 experience points and 35 madness points. The following message says that he has received a new skill the tread of a flying cloud and one healing pill. The guy rejoices and exhales with relief as he managed to eat a healing pill. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to deal with Mo Cheng. The guy gets up and rejoices that he now has the tread of a flying cloud. This technique will be useful and useful to him in the next battles. The host announces that the winner of the second round was a fighter from Tian Zai Tianyun Castle. The audience screams with delight. They are happy that Tianyun was able to win. Their young master is very strong. One of the girls shouts to him from the stands that Tianyun is inimitable. The girl with blue eyes looks at the guy with a smile and admiration, who also smiles back at her. Someone suddenly calls Tianyun by name. The young man is approached by a man from the Heavenly Spirit Clan behind whom his people are standing. He says that the martial art is meant to control the spirit, but he still used demonic skills and dealt with their two best students. The man demands that Tian Zai Castle explain itself to the Heavenly Spirit Clan. Tian Yun frowns. The guy says that the Heavenly Spirit Clan has the opportunity to do everything in a favorable light for them. They can make everyone believe that Tian Yun is to blame for everything. The guy says that in the first round Feng Yun left the world of the living because of his poison dagger. In this round, Mo Cheng used a pill so that no one would win in the second round after all. And yet, the people of the Heavenly Spirit Clan blame him for everything. The guy says that the man from the Heavenly Clan is the only one who wanted a deadly battle. Now he wishes for leniency. If the man is so scared, then let him admit defeat and leave. The man begins to get indignant and try to say something else. But the young man interrupts him and asks him to keep the threats to himself to send the last person. Tian Yun says he will finish what he started. A woman with long ash-colored hair turns to the young man and says that everything is fine. He can leave the rest to them. The man refuses and says that since Tianyun has agreed to the last round, he should stay and fight to the end. The woman turns to Elder Zhao and says that Tianyun has already fought in two rounds, so now someone else must come out so as not to contradict the rules. The haze is completely dispelled and the entire area is now visible. One of the men of the Heavenly Spirit Clan turns to Lord Xi and says that it was the choice of a young man. So if he can win in the last round, he will provide a breakthrough pill as a reward. The audience heard about the breakthrough pill and began to discuss that it could help the cultivator break through the stage of refining the body to the level of refining the spirit. One of the viewers says that Elder Zhao seems to really want Tian Yun to join the battle. Tian Yun sighs, asking if the man will really provide a breakthrough pill. If this is true, then he is ready to join the fight. The man smiles grimly. In this case, he suggests starting the next round. He is confident that his fighter will defeat Tian Yun. A woman with long ash-colored hair turns to the guy, but he immediately turns around and asks her not to worry. The man turns to a fighter named Zhao Feng and says that he will fight in the last round. He asks him to give his all. Finally, the man says that if Zhao Feng can cope with Tian Yun, then he will solve all his problems. The man exhales and says that he can handle it. A huge man enters the battlefield and pulls out his weapon from behind his back. He turns to Tian Yun and says that he will make him pay for defeating his comrade. The man is an elite disciple of the Heavenly Spirit Clan. His name is Zhao Feng. He is several heads taller than Tian Yun. The man takes out his spear and hits the ground with it. Elder Zhao demands everyone to look at Zhao Feng's long spear. It looks like it weighs about 600, maybe 700 kilograms. Could anyone besides him, at the seventh stage of body refinement, brandish such a huge weapon? The woman notices that Elder Zhao has planned everything in advance. Due to the fact that they cannot defeat Tian Yun in close combat, he chose a man with a medium-range weapon. Zhao Feng's spear is too long and strong. It won't be easy for Tian Yun to shorten the distance and use his techniques. Zhao Feng says that his honor does not allow him to fight unarmed, so he will give him a chance to choose what to take to the battlefield with. Tian Yun says his spear looks impressive. A woman with ashen hair asks what kind of weapon to give him. The guy says that everything is fine. He shows his daggers and says that he already has a weapon with which he will fight. 
The elder looks at Tian Yun and chuckles. He asks how it will be different from hand-to-hand -hand combat. A woman with ashen hair asks how Tian Yun is going to fight with such a weapon. The woman thinks that he does not work with his feet too well, then why did he decide to use gloves? Zhao Feng looks menacingly at Tian Yun and says that he is our opponent who will defeat him, so let him not blame him for everything. Tian Yun says it's time for them to start. Suddenly, spears began to appear from the ground. The man uses a whirlwind dragon spear. The woman notices that the man's eyes have become fiercer. Apparently he swallowed a rabies pill. She shouts at Tian Yun to run. Zhao Feng is trying to strike a spear directly at the young man. The woman notices him trying to block the blow with another spear. She is worried about the guy, because this way he will be able to win. The guy smiles threateningly and applies a flying cloud tread. Several identical young men appear on the field. Zhao Feng asks how he manages to use cloud tread. Zhao Feng strikes with all his might with a spear at the place where the guy was. Then he notices that his feet are starting to get covered in ice. Then the ice passes over the whole body. The man screams in horror, trying to understand what is happening to him. As a result, his whole body and head are covered with ice. The guy strikes directly at the ice block in which Zhao Feng is imprisoned, and it shatters into pieces. The guy is standing in a fighting stance, right above the block in which the head of Zhao Feng was visible. The guy was breathing heavily, but he was very glad that he got the victory. All the spectators are watching the outcome of the battle. One of them covers her mouth with her hand in shock. Other viewers just stand with their mouths open. Elder Zhao is also very tense. He doesn't understand what happened and how Tian Yun knows not only the eagle claw technique, but also the flying cloud tread, how the guy was able to learn their techniques. The host announces that the winner was a fighter from Tian Zai castle named Tian Yun. Many viewers begin to shout with joy and delight. The guests who came from Tian Zai castle congratulate their young master on his victory. A woman with ashen hair stands in front of everyone and, putting her hand to her chest, sighs with relief that everything is over and Tian Yun is still alive. Tian Yun receives a new message congratulating the young man on his victory. He announces that he has dealt with the elite disciple of the Air Clan, Zai Zhao Feng. The guy got 700 experience points and 20 madness points. The following message notifies that he has completed the mission. As a congratulation, he is awarded a thousand experience points, as well as the armor of the God of Heaven and 200 coins of gold. The following message says that Tian Yun has risen to the first level of body refinement. The guy looks at the panel with the characteristics and thinks that the armor of the Sky God and 200 gold coins will last for a while. In the characteristics, the guy sees the level of some skills and equipment that are available to him. For example, the human level of the Great Star Absorption Technique. Skill, human level Eagle Claw Technique. Equipment is open, combat snow wolf boots. And also the skill, flying cloud tread. And skill, flying feather sword. The guy looks at the panel with all his characteristics and realizes that now he can open a box with gifts of the 11th level. A woman with ashen hair approaches the guy and, addressing Elder Zhao, says that Tian Zai Castle becomes the winner of this battle. She hopes that they will be able to put an end to the conflict that has arisen. The people from the Heaven Spirit Clan started shouting. One man started shouting that they would not follow her lead, since he was not a disciple of Tian Zai Castle. Tian Zai Castle has never accepted male students, so it doesn't count. Another man confirms his words. He says that the most that Tian Yun can represent is a freelance student, since he can represent Tian Zai Castle. The guy asks Elder Zhao if he is not going to act like he does not know how to lose with dignity. The elder looks at him menacingly and asks how the guy was able to learn the forbidden skills of the Heavenly Spirit Clan. Tian Yun scratches the back of his head and talks about what he has learned just by watching his students. He believes that in this case they cannot be considered forbidden. The man is amazed. He asks how, just by watching, he was able to learn such complex skills of the Heavenly Spirit Clan. A woman with ashen hair turns to the Elder and says that his fighters have lost. She asks him not to ruin the pride of the Heavenly Spirit Clan. The man thought for a moment. He stared intently into the woman's eyes. Then after a few seconds, he turned to his people from the clan and said that it was time for them to go back. At the same time, he threw a red box with a ball. The guy sighs and sticks out his tongue, realizing that this is not the end yet and most likely Elder Zhao will show something. The guy is wondering how much gold coins he can get if he deals with Elder Zhao. Clear sky is visible above the snow-capped mountains. A woman walks along a snowy path with Tian Yun. She says that with the continuous battle with the three disciples of the Heavenly Spirit Clan, Tian Yun's cultivation should be at the peak level of body refinement. The guy smiles and says that it's a little higher now. 
The woman asks him if he was able to break through the spirit refinement stage. The woman turns to the guy and says that before he could not cultivate at all, and now he has reached the level of refinement of the spirit. The woman asks him to tell her what happened to him. The guy rubs his nose and tells that a few days ago, he met a mysterious expert who decided to help him cultivate, and he unexpectedly broke through the spirit refinement level. The guy thinks that this excuse should work. Still, this is a better option than if he says that he has received excision abilities. The woman wonders what kind of mysterious expert could help the young man. She suggests that it could be Tian Yun's father. The guy looks away and says that this is possible. He says that the expert did not spread about any other information, but only told him to focus on cultivation. The woman sighs and says that she was very worried about Tian Yun all this time. She thought he didn't have enough strength and enough Kai in his blood. The guy smiles and says he just wanted to surprise his aunt. Previously, he was really weak and his Kai was not enough. It's already night outside. A light comes on in one of the rooms of the house. Tian Yun is shown in the window. The guy is happy that he finally has time to open the box with the gifts of the 11th level. The guy calls the system. Panels immediately appear in front of him. Tian Yun begins to inspect everything. The guy presses his finger on the panel with the image of the gift and is interested in what he will receive this time. He can't wait to find out. He opens the gift box and receives a notification. The system congratulates him on having received entry-level professional skills, the initial level of alchemy, the initial level of a blacksmith, the initial level of a rune master. The guy also received a gift box of the 15th level and one chance in the Wheel of Fortune. The guy thinks that even if we take into account that all the skills acquired at the entry level, they will still be very useful and will be useful to him not only in battle. Skills are equivalent to the third level in this world. In this world, all professions are divided into levels from the first to the fifth, the level of the master, the great master, and then the creator. The guy looks at the skill system and thinks that the third level is not bad in any of the categories. At least it's not a beginner's step. Tian Zai Castle is forced to look for outsider masters to make cultivation pills, weapons, and ammunition. The guy decides that now they won't beg anyone. Even though they are all at the beginner level, he will be able to rank them with practice. Tian Yun looks at the image of the wheel and fortune and realizes that he has one chance to spin this wheel. The guy looks carefully, thinking about what he might get. It requires the system to run the wheel of luck. The guy exclaims several times since he was able to get a divine ability. He really gets divine power. The system congratulates the young man and informs him that he has received a divine ability, the aura of luck. The guy is very happy that he got it. The system gives out a characteristic of the received ability. The aura of luck increases luck by five times and absorbs one point of madness every second. The guy looks thoughtfully at the book and thinks about how this ability increases luck five times. The guy assumes that it's something like finding money on the street. The guy shouts that he should try and runs to the exit. While he was walking down the street, he received three messages that madness glasses were absorbed. The guy expected that from the divine ability, the absorption rate would be too great. A girl with pink hair addresses Tian Yun. The guy recognizes Xiao Lion's sister. The girl runs up to the guy and says that the lord of the castle asked her to inform him that the next morning he will have to appear in the main cell. The girl stumbles over her own foot and falls right on Tian Yun. They are too close to each other. The girl bounces off the guy and asks for forgiveness from the young gentleman. The girl runs away, and the guy waves after her and thinks that this is also considered luck. It seems to him that the ability works well. The guy enters the building and hears someone addressing the lord and saying that he does not agree with something. The speaker indicates that the lord cannot ignore their rules. The speaker notices that the cultivation of Yui Tian Yun is very low. She asks how, in that case, he can represent Tian Zai Castle and enter the ancient ruins. The lord greets the young man who entered and says that he came very timely. They were just discussing it. The woman says that she has made a decision. Tian Yun will officially become a disciple of Tian Zai Castle. She also decided that the place in the ancient ruins that he won would belong only to him. The girl with long blonde hair says that even if the Lord had allowed Tian Yun to enter with his existing cultivation level, she would not have agreed. Most likely, Tian Yun will be dealt with and the place will be spent. This girl is the second elder of Tian Zai Castle, Jian Yuping. Lord says there's still six months before the ruins open. At the moment, Tian Yun is at the first level of body refinement. The woman is confident that the guy will meet the requirements. She asks Jian Yuping why she refuses in this case. Jian Yuping didn't understand at first. She was surprised because the guy was able to break through the spirit refinement stage. The Lord turns to the second elder and says that he does not know what she is thinking. 
She understands that the Elder wants her main disciple to get this opportunity, but Tianyun got it by fighting three battles, putting his life on the line. The woman says that Tianyun won because of his strength, so she has no right to interfere with him. The Lord rises from his seat and informs that the place in the ruins should belong to Tianyun. The woman turns around and asks if anyone has any objections. No one has any objections. The woman turns to the guy and says that he needs to work hard, and when he enters the ancient ruins, he will have many opportunities to improve his cultivation. Tianyun says he will try his best. The guy receives a message that says that his main task is to pass the ancient ruins immersed in the heavens. The reward will be control and power over ancient ruins immersed in the heavens, as well as 100,000 experience points and 10,000 crazy points, an endless sword. The guy understands that apparently he has activated the main mission. He wonders if the ancient ruins can be controlled. With such a big reward, the difficulty should be incredibly high. The woman asks what about weapons. She wonders if Master Kong the blacksmith has arrived yet. The woman says that the master is resting in an outdoor guest castle. This woman is the elder of Tian Zai Castle, Mo Yun. She says she's going to invite him now. The Lord turns to Tian Yun and says that she will ask Mr. Kong to forge a suitable weapon for him. The woman says that her student has talent, but it's still better to have a weapon, like a sword or a spear. This will help him increase his fighting skills. The guy says that everything is fine. He doesn't think he can forge a better weapon. Besides, his ice gloves are already at the level of the deadly iron rank, they have an incredible effect. The building is notified of the arrival of Master Kong. The man is asked to sit down. Master Kong sits down on a chair, looking at a man. A woman thinks that he feels like he is at least at the fourth or fifth stage of refining the spirit. Even though his cultivation is weaker than that of the elders here, he is still called a master. The Lord turns to Master Kong and says that this time they need him to forge three spiritual rank weapons. She asks him to name the price. Master Kong says that it is not easy to forge a spiritual rank weapon, and the price for it is not small. The man says he can forge weapons, but he has three conditions. If they don't accept them, then his interest in the deal will fade. The first condition is that he asks that his disciple be allowed to become a follower of Tian Zai Castle. The woman, without thinking twice, replies that they agree to fulfill the first condition. The second condition is materials. Forging three spiritual grade weapons requires a lot of rare and expensive materials, so the master needs a certain amount of money. He asks to give him money and he will buy the materials himself. The woman says she understands everything. She asks how much money he will need for materials. The man says that it is not much and calls the price equal to 10,000 coins. The woman leans forward, asking the man again. She thinks it's too high a price. That's about 300 for just one spirit rank weapon. The woman asks the man if he could reduce the requests. The man turns to the lord of the SH Chai castle and says that she should know the cost of a spiritual rank weapon. He goes on and says this is the lowest price he can offer. If they buy it elsewhere, it will cost them at least 5,000 gold. The woman nevertheless agrees and, sighing, asks what is the last condition of the man. Tian Zai Castle is not a big clan. If they use this amount of gold at one time, then they will have to save later. The man says it concerns him. He fell in love with one of her students. If the disciple agrees to be his Tao companion, then he will give all three weapons for free. The woman asks who is the girl herself. The man points at Xiao Lion. A pink-haired girl runs up to Tian Yun, asking for his protection. The man looks at the two of them questioningly. The guy thinks that he doesn't see a problem if Xiao Lion agreed to it, but if not, then he won't let it happen. The second elder asks the pink-haired girl to come to her. She says that Kong will like it, her great luck. The woman thinks that Xiao Lion's talents are low, so marrying her off in exchange for three spiritual rank weapons is worth it. Xiao Lion says she doesn't want to marry Master Kong and snuggles closer to Tian Yun. Master Kong is getting angry. He says he is a blacksmith of the third rank. If Xiao Lion marries him, then they will be able to use a lot of resources. Later, the man will become a blacksmith of the fourth or fifth rank. He asks if Xiao Lion still doesn't want to become his wife. Xiao Lion thanks Master Kong. She says she's not looking for a partner yet, so it's impossible. She hopes for his understanding. Master Kong gets even angrier. He says she is just a servant, so she doesn't dare to refuse him. The man raises his voice and says that if she does not become his Tao companion, then Tian Zai Castle will have to look for someone else to forge items. The Lord rises from his seat and says that in that case Master Kong can leave. The man indignantly asks what it means. The woman says that they call the man Master only as a tribute. But the man started mocking Xiao Lion because he was refused. The Lord says they don't want such a man forging weapons for them. 
The man is indignant. He points his hand at the Lord and says that Tian Zai Castle treats its guests terribly. He says they will regret it. The second elder approaches Xiao Lion and grabs her hand. She asks what the girl was thinking when she refused Master Kong. If the girl married him, she could turn from a sparrow into a phoenix. She could have had anything she wanted. Tian Yun comes out in front of Xiao Lion and says that the second elder is wrong. He says Xiao Lion has always been a phoenix. The girl did not agree, so there is no need to discuss this topic. The guy looks at the second elder with a smile and says that he can do the forging of spiritual rank weapons himself. The Lord thinks that Tian Yun said those words in a rage to silence Master Kong. A woman understands that becoming a blacksmith is not something that can be achieved in a few days. Tian Yun won't even be able to succeed by a miracle. Master Kong turns to the young man and asks him, grinning, if he can really forge a spiritual grade weapon. He starts laughing and says that he has heard about Tian Yun. He speaks negatively about him. He asks if he really thinks he can do anything because he won against the Heavenly Spirit Clan. The guy in response grins and asks what will happen if he can still forge a weapon of spiritual rank. The man gets up from his seat and says that if he really can forge a spiritual grade weapon, then he will give him a sword. In addition, starting from this day, he will walk on his hands. The man thinks that he would never have fallen for a simple provocation of some boy, especially after the maid refused him. Then the man points to Zio Lion and says that if it still doesn't work out, then she will have to agree to his terms. The man laughs because he gave the girl a chance. Since she had not accepted him before, now he would treat her as a servant, even if he married her. Tianyun says sister Zio Lion is not a thing. He's not going to use her as a subject for argument. The guy says that if he fails to forge a spiritual grade weapon, then he will chop off one of his hands. The man asks Tian Yun again if he is serious. Then he agrees to the young man's conditions, telling him to do what he wants. The man, raising his voice, says that if the guy does not keep his word, then he will pay for it. Tian Yun firmly believes that he will keep his word if he loses. The guy folds his hands, turns to the Lord and asks her to collect all the materials for him. He's going to make everything right away. The guy gets an alert. The system informs him that he has accepted the task to forge a weapon of spiritual rank. The reward for completing the task, 5,000 experience points and an immortal flame. Immortal flame is used to forge equipment of the highest rank and to create drugs. It can increase the rank of equipment during forging, also applicable during battle. The second elder asks the young man if he has gone mad. She tells him to go and ask Master Kong for forgiveness. The guy is not from his earlier words that Sister Zio Lion is not a thing. He scoffs at the fact that the woman calls Master Kong a genius. He asks why, in that case, she will not marry him herself. The second elder begins to get angry. Zio Lion looks at the guy with admiration. At this time, the Lord is about to leave the hall. She notices that the guy said a good thing. The woman says she will take him to the workshop. The guy looks at the Lord and asks her if she believes in him. The woman says she believes in him because they are a family. Everyone gathered in a room with a huge cauldron in the middle. A fair-haired woman brought all the necessary materials to forge a weapon of spiritual rank. She says there are five sets in the room. They have prepared two more in case the young man does not succeed. The guy confidently looks at the boiler and says that these materials will definitely be enough. He won't make a mistake. Master Kong looks at the guy with condemnation. He doesn't like the fact that Tian Yun is acting very cocky. A man thinks that even with his level, he only has a 50% chance of forging a spirit rank weapon. The guy wonders what kind of weapon he should forge. The Lord replies that most often they use a long sword, so it will be very useful. The guy accepts her offer. The guy approaches the boiler with all the materials and notices that the flame inside the furnace is ordinary, so he needs to be extremely careful. Master Kong taunts Tian Yun and wonders how much longer he can hold out. The man is sure that the guy is just bluffing. He's trying to get the man to lower the price. The second elder turns to the lord of the castle and says that this is too much. If Tian Yun fails, then they will lose valuable materials and offend Master Kong. Their students won't be able to enter the ruins with good weapons afterwards. The lord turns around to look at his student and say that she takes full responsibility for herself. The second elder doesn't believe her. She says that if the young man fails, then she will have to notify the ancestors about it and let them decide already. The Lord agrees with this. Zio Lion says that he may agree to get married so as not to frame the Lord. But the woman tells Zio Lion to believe in Tian Yun. The guy exhales. He throws all the materials into the boiler. Because of this, a huge flame bursts out of the cauldron, which forces Tian Yun to cover himself with his hand. Tian Yun begins to use magic. 
there is an explosion in the boiler. Everyone is looking at what is happening with horror. As a result, the young man still manages to make a sort of spiritual rank. The guy gets an alert. The system informs you that the task is completed. He received 5,000 experience points and an immortal flame. The guy is happy that he got another skill. Now his skill level is blacksmith, beginner. His skill is 10 units out of 100. The guy turns to the man and asks if Master Kong can check the product for quality. The Lord picks up the sword and says that he confirms that the sword is indeed of spiritual rank. She asks if Master Kong will try. Master Kong looks angrily at the Lord and says that he will not try and check anything. The man points his hand at the guy and says that the Tianzai castle deceived him and forced him to arrange an argument. He says that everyone was pretending in order for him to believe that Tianyun does not know how to forge weapons. The guy never said that he could not create weapons. He demands that Master Kong give his sword to him and now walk all his life on his hands, as they agreed. Master Kong asks him to stop. He lost the argument, but in his opinion, it was a trap. He believes that they had no intention of ordering anything from him. The guy says that if he wasn't so assertive, he wouldn't have intervened in the conflict. The guy gets angry and says that even if there are only women in Tianzai castle, they are masters here, not a man. The guy looks at Master Kong with contempt and says that women have the right to choose. He hopes that the man has learned this lesson. The guy says that now the man can go. But the most important thing is that he does not forget that now he has to walk on his hands. Master Kong drops his beads and says that the guy is still too young to force him to do anything. The Lord comes into conflict and says that she has enough rights for this. She asks if Master Kong should not keep his word, since he lost in the dispute. Tianyun could lose his arm, and Master Kong put his spiritual rank weapon. The man grunts, turns around abruptly and says he doesn't care. He is not going to argue, as he has other things to do. He remembered Tianyun for the rest of his life. The guy looks at the man with contempt and asks him if he is going to run away. The guy runs up to him from behind and kicks him. The man screams and flies out of the palace. The second elder approaches the Lord and says that the woman overdid it. Master Kong is a very important person in the Heavenly Moon City. She asks what they will do if a man brings his people to them. The guy says he will take full responsibility. He is only a disciple from the outside. What he does does not concern Tian Zai Castle. The second elder looks at the guy and says that although he knows how to forge weapons of spiritual rank, but the breakthrough in his skills is small, especially in comparison with the skills of Master Kong, who is known as a good blacksmith. She says that the young man has no power and connections. The guy agrees with her and adds that his skills are higher than his, so everything should be fine. He approaches the shelf, taking out various materials. He's going to forge more spiritual weapons so they can see the difference in their skills. The second elder asks what the young man is up to. The guy sits down on the floor and, folding his hands, begins to use his magic power. Magic envelops him. The guy uses magic to form a fireball in his hands and directs it towards the cauldron. A huge flame lights up. The woman asks what kind of flame he just used. The Lord thinks that no one could have imagined that Tianyun would receive such an unusual flame. In this way, he showed all his strength in front of Master Kong. The guy is happy that now he has an immortal flame. Now it will be much easier for the guy. Tianyun receives an alert. The system congratulates him that he has received a skill rating equal to 50. The guy was holding an ordinary length sword in his hand, which was a medium quality spiritual weapon. The second elder exclaims in surprise. She doesn't understand how a guy could make a medium quality weapon. The guy turns to the three elders and asks them to assess whether he is comparable to Master Kong. One of the elders says she is impressed. The second elder turns to the Lord and says that she must leave. She leaves matters to their care. The guy smiles and is going to forge until all the sisters are equipped with spiritual swords. He's going to see who dares to threaten Tianzai Castle. The guy gets an alert. The system informs that he has a new mission. Execute the request of Shizu Yun. The reward for the task, 5,000 experience points, 10 points to the location of the Zhu Yun shield. The guy is looking at a new assignment. He is surprised that the reward is not only experience points, but also location. The guy turns around and asks how the woman with ash-colored hair is treating him at the moment. The Lord turns to the young man, noticing his gaze on himself. A panel appears above the woman, which shows that the location is equal to 330 points. The guy thinks about whether it's good or not. The guy looks at the panel, which shows a graph of relationships, 0 points, a passerby, 10 points, an acquaintance, 100 points, a good friend, 200 points, a lover, 300 points, love to the grave. 
the guy notices that the woman's location to the guy is in the status, love to the grave. Tian Yun understands that his aunt is kind to him. The woman notices the guy's reaction and does not understand what is wrong with him. The guy receives a new notification. The system congratulates Tian Yun for fulfilling Shizu Yun's request. He got 5,000 experience points, 10 location points. He also rose to the second level of spirit cultivation. Now his forging skill is equal to the rank, beginner. The skill level is equal to 310 points out of 1,000. The guy chuckles, as he notices that they have run out of materials. Lord says she didn't expect to be successful every time. She looks at the swords, which are medium rank spiritual weapons. The guy laughs and wonders how he could not cope with this task if his aunt had so many hopes for him. He asks if they have any herbs. He could make pills. The woman says that in this case, Tian Zai Castle no longer needs to bow to anyone for a simple consumable. The woman unwraps the scroll and sees that at the moment they have no spiritual herbs. She thinks about it and says that she will send someone to buy them along with the materials for forging. The guy turns to the woman and asks if he can go and buy everything himself. He says he can sell things and exchange them for materials and gold. The Lord smiles and says that he doesn't mind if Tian Yun goes to get the materials on his own. She says it's not good to lock yourself in four walls. She says he will be accompanied by four students. The woman says that both students are the ones who will enter the ancient ruins with the guy. She asks the young man to use the chance to get to know them better, because then it will be easier for them to work. Tian Yun is greeted by two girls. They greet the young master. Above their heads, panels are visible, which depict the level of the location of the girls to the young man. The first girl's name is Queen Zhu. Her location level is 35 points. The second girl's name is Enling. She has 32 points. The guy looks at them and asks them to take care of him. The guy folds his hands and thinks that their inclination is at least not zero. Perhaps they changed their minds about him after that battle with the Heavenly Spirit Clan. The woman shows the storage ring and asks Tian Yun to take it. She says that there is a little gold in the ring and a spiritual weapon that the young man created. The guy thanks his aunt. Tian Yun thinks that the ring is very convenient. He can store a huge amount of things inside it. And their weight is not felt at all. The guy says that he and the girls will return as soon as they receive all the necessary materials. Tian Yun receives an alert. The system notifies about a new mission. Buy materials and return to Tian Zai Castle. The reward for the task is 10,000 experience points, 2,000 gold coins and one chance in the lottery. The guy also sees an alert that he can improve the favorability of the entire Tian Zai castle for 20 points. The carriage in which the girls and Tian Yun are sitting is going at full speed. The guy asks if they are heading to Heavenly Wind City. Kin Zhu replies that they are going to Heavenly Wind City, the largest trading city next to them. The guy heard that Mr. Kong is very close to the big families of this city. He hopes that they won't stumble upon him. Tian Yun thinks that if he tries to harm Tian Zai castle again, he won't let him go just like that. Tian Yun looks at the city in amazement and says that it certainly looks very lively. A horse-drawn cart is rushing towards the guy. The coachman shouts for all people to get out of the way and not get in the way. All the people are running away. One of the guards recognizes the winged sex carriage. The coachman shouts to all passers-by to get out of the way if they want to stay alive. One of the men is angry. He doesn't understand how they dared to break into the city so thoughtlessly. Another passerby points to his mouth and asks him to be silent. Kin Zai is not surprised that they are so self-confident. Because this is the winged sex carriage, they have a lot of influence in Heavenly Wind City. And Ling says that they create techniques much better than the Heavenly Spirit Clan. They have four places in the ancient ruins. The guy squints and watches the carriage of the winged sect. He notices that the cart itself is a spiritual weapon created by them personally. Even a low-level carriage of this kind would be difficult to destroy. The guy receives a new notification. It read about a new mission. You will need to defeat the self-confident disciples of the Wing sect, Ma Liang Peng. The system asks if the young man accepts the task. The reward for the task, 5,000 experience points, 500 blacksmith skill points and 500 gold coins. The guy is surprised by the new mission. He thinks why not, although he finds it strange that the system distributes random tasks. The guy thinks that unlike the main task, there is no need to accept this additional one. But if a guy activates the aura of luck at the moment when he finishes, then most likely he will receive more rewards. A guy with girls approach the palace and Queen Zhu of them says that they have come to the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix. One of the girls asks the young master to let them in. They are allowed, and they enter the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. The green-haired girl attracted the gazes of others. She turns to Lu Lai, because he told her that he would give eight silver coins. The girl was asking about the price of the jade spiritual herb. 
Each stock is worth at least 12 silver coins, and Lu Lai offers only three. The man lifts the girl off the ground and says that the Heavenly Phoenix Hall buys a stock of spiritual grass for four silver coins. He gives the girl more than she deserves. The man lifts the girl higher and says that he will not restrain the force if she continues to accuse him of cheating. The green-haired girl screams because she does not understand how the price could have dropped so sharply. She says the man is cheating on her. She demands that the grass be returned to her. Kim Zhu turns to Tianyun and says that this kind of thing happens on a regular basis in this place. She suggests moving on. The girl is trying to attract the guy's attention. But Tianyun gets a new alert. He received a mission to help a girl named Jia Lin Gun. Reward for completing the task, 1000 experience points to Jai Lin Gong's favor and 5 prestige points. A green-haired girl tries to bite a man's hand. The man screams in pain and presses his bitten hand to himself. The man asks the girl how she dares to bite his hand. He swings while the girl covers herself with her hands, but does not have time to do anything, because someone grabs his hand. The girl opens her eyes and sees Tian Yun grabbing the man's hand. The guy says that the price of spiritual jade grass is equal to 12 silver coins. The guy looks menacingly at the man and asks if he is ashamed to behave like this in front of a little girl. The man swings and says that it does not concern Tian Yun. The girl tries to cover the young man and shouts at him to be careful. Tian Yun manages to strike and tells the man to stay away from the girl. The man flies away and screams in pain. He asks Tian Yun if the guy knows who he is. The guy says he doesn't know and then sets a condition, if the man doesn't return the silver he stole, he will make him regret it. The man gets scared when he realizes that Tian Yun is a cultivator. He falls to his knees and asks for his forgiveness. He asks him to spare him and promises not to cause any more problems. Tian Yun approaches the man and seriously tells him to give all the stolen silver to the girl, and leave. The guy gets an alert. The system congratulates the young man that he completed the mission and received a thousand experience points. The guy also gets 100 points for Jai Lin Gun's favor and 5 prestige points. The girl hands something to Tian Yun and asks him to accept the gift as a sign of her gratitude. The girl asks for forgiveness for not being able to offer more, as she still needs to feed her younger brother. The guy says that everything is fine and asks the girl to keep the gift for herself. He asks her if she would like to go with him and his escorts to join Tian Zai Castle. The girl grabs her dress and says that her skills are not good enough. It is unlikely that she will be able to go. The guy turns to the sisters and asks if Jai Lin Guan can join Tian Zai Castle if he takes responsibility for the girl. Tian Zhu says it should work. Besides, he is still the young master of Tian Zai Castle. Adding one person won't be a problem. The guy smiles and tells the girl that she can go with them. He asks her again if she will go with them. The girl is embarrassed, looks away and says that she is very sorry, since she cannot leave her younger brother. Tian Yun receives a new notification that he has a new task, to help Jai Lin Gun's younger brother. The system asks if the guy will accept the task. Reward for the task, 1000 experience points, 50 points to Jai Lin Gong's favor, and 5 prestige points. The guy is surprised by the new task. He doesn't understand what these prestige points are. The panel shows that the guy has five prestige points. At the moment, the guy from the weapon has ice gloves. Among the armor, snow wolf boots, armor of the sky god. From divine abilities, a state of insanity, a lucky aura. The guy is also a blacksmith, a master of spirits and an alchemist. Also, the guy has developed various cultivation techniques, the skills of the god of the north, the eagle claw technique, the sword of the falling feather, the tread of the flying cloud, the technique of absorbing the great star. The system notifies that prestige points increase his luck, the higher their value, the luckier he will be. He can use them anywhere. The guy understands that a good deed increases his prestige. He wonders how effective it is. The guy still agrees to accept the task. The guy is confident and tells the little girl that she can take her younger brother with her. Jai Lin Gun asks if this is true. Tian Yun confirms his words and says that they need to buy something first, and then they can return to Tian Zai Castle. The girl tells Tian Yun that in this case she will wait for their return. People from the lower strata of society are not allowed to enter inside. The guy takes the girl by the hand and leads her along. He says she can come in with them and in that case no one will dare to stop her. When they come to the gate, the man puts his hand in front of Jai Lin Gun and does not let her go any further. The man asks where the girl is going. He asks if she doesn't know that people from the slums can't go inside. Tian Yun looks at the man and says that the girl is with him. He asks if there is any problem, he will take her inside. The man notices the cultivator and says that there are no problems. He turns to the girl and asks how it happened. 
he says there was a misunderstanding, apparently due to his poor service. He hopes that the girl will be able to forgive him. The man takes the girl by the shoulder and, smiling, says that the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix welcomes them. The man asks Tian Yun and Jai Lin Gun to look at their feet. The guy grunts and says he will spare the man. The girl goes inside and is amazed at the beauty of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. Swords, jewelry and various exhibits are on display in the hall. Jai Lin Gun notices the magic pills. The guy asks the girl what interesting things she saw. The girl is embarrassed and says that she saw the pills. The guy bends down and asks why the girl needs pills. The girl looks at the guy and says that her younger brother was poisoned and she heard that this pill can cure him. The guy smiles and says that if this is really the case, then she can just take him to her brother and he will help cure him. The girl looks admiringly at the guy and asks if he really can do it. The guy gives his word and says that as soon as they buy the necessary materials, they will immediately go back to Tin Zai Castle. The girl thanks the guy. Master Kong greets them in the hall. He crumples his beads and asks who allowed the girl to come to the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. The man looks at the girl with condemnation and asks when the Heavenly Phoenix Hall became a place for commoners. He says it spoils his mood. The guy asks if it's Master Kong by accident. The man turns to the guy and asks how he got to this place. The guy asks why they can't be in the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. The man lowers his gaze and notices the girl. He asks where the guards are and who let her into the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. The man says that the girl spoils his view, so he says that she should be taken away from the hall. One of the guards said that he would immediately take her out of the hall. The guard points to the door with his hand and, raising his tone, says that they are in the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix. Commoners are not allowed to enter this place. He demands that she leave. The guy is angry. He understands that Master Kong is a guest here, so it is not surprising that the guards obey him. The guy looks at the men and asks what makes them think that the girl came from a poor neighborhood. The guard says that the girl can't afford even the cheapest thing, so this place is not for people like her. The girl is going to the exit and says that she will just quietly leave. The guy puts something in the girl's hands and asks what about it. The guard turns to Master Kong and asks what he should do now. The master starts shouting that the Heavenly Phoenix Hall cannot accept people from the lower strata of society. He says it doesn't matter how much gold they have. It's hard for a girl to listen to a man. The guy stands up for Jai Lin Gun and says that at least she is better than people who wear expensive clothes, but behave just awful. Master Kong is indignant. I he says that he is the guest of honor. He demands that she leave now. The guy asks where the owner is in this case. The man starts laughing and asks if he really wants to see the owner. Master Lion Ji enters the hall. Master Kong turns to the man and says that he came very timely. Kong says that not only is Tianyun trying to frame him, he also came to the Heavenly Phoenix Hall with a girl from the lower strata of society. He asks to get rid of them. Lion Ji looks at the guy and the girls. He assumes that they came from the Tian Zai Palace. Kin Zhu asks Master Lion if he thinks his guests are a bit rude. Kin Zhu says that they came from Tian Zai Palace, so they deserve to be treated normally. Master Lion smiles. He says that this is not surprising, because they are both very extraordinary personalities. The man says that any visitor is their guest, not to mention that they are from Tian Zai Palace. He asks them not to arrange a conflict. He is sure that peace and harmony generate wealth. Master Kong turns to the pavilion Lord Lion Ji and says that if they let them stay, he will leave the hall immediately. The man thinks that insulting Master Kong for the sake of the Tian Zai Palace is probably not worth it. Lord Lion Ji bends down in an apologetic gesture and says that he is very sorry, but he must ask them to leave. Queen Zai comes forward and says it's outrageous. She is stopped by Tian Yun and says that they were not going to cooperate and visit such a terrible place anyway. The guy turns to Master Lion Ji and says that they should remember their choice. He thinks that their actions will not benefit them. Tian Yun leaves with Kin Zhu and Ling and Jai Lin Gun. Master Kong looks at them and shouts that they did not think of returning to this place, since this is his territory. Jai Lin Gong closes her eyes, sighs and says that she is very sorry since they were told to leave the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. The guy leans over to Jai Lin Gun and says it's not her fault. He says that in fact, this Master Kong has a grudge against them, and it has nothing to do with her. The guy says that instead, they will go to another place. He will make them regret their choice. Tian Yun, Kin Zhu, and Ling and Jai Lin Gun approach the Heavenly Rain Hall. A man comes out of the hall and addresses the young master. He asks if the young man collects artifacts. The guy says he would like to sell a spiritual grade weapon. The guy thinks that there is no other way out, since the Heavenly Phoenix Hall has made its choice. The young man says that in this case, they will use the Heavenly Rain Hall to make them regret. The man turns to the young master and asks him to wait one minute. 
he would immediately summon the pavilion lord Zai. Qianyun receives a new notification that a new task is available to him, to help the Heavenly Rain Hall suppress the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. The reward for the tasks is 5,000 experience points, 100 points to the location of Zai Yuai, 500 gold coins and 10 prestige points. A woman runs to call the pavilion lord. The guy thinks that Zai Yuai must be someone very influential in the Heavenly Rain Hall. It seems to the guy that there are more and more tasks. A woman comes down the stairs. She thanks the guests for waiting. She introduces herself to Zai Yuai and says that she is the pavilion lord of the Heavenly Rain Hall. The woman notices that the young man is surrounded by spiritual weapons. Absolutely all weapons are of average quality. The woman grins. She didn't expect that the guy would be able to create so many medium quality spiritual weapons at such a young age. She understands that if she works with him, she will be able to get a good profit. The woman asks if Tianyun is going to sell his swords. The guy says he's been thinking about it. He points to the swords and says that the weapon was created by him. The guy smiles and says that if Zai Yuai provides him with materials, he will be able to create even more for sale. The guy also says that as for his share, Zai Yuai will be able to decide for herself. But the only condition is that the woman will be obliged to sell weapons cheaper than in the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. Zai Yuai looks at the swords and asks the young master if he wants to steal customers from the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. She asks if he's mad at them. The guy says that you can and, so to speak. He asks if Zai Yuai is going to work with him. The woman looks at the guy with a grin and says that she will gladly agree to his proposal. The young man turns to Queen Zhu and An Ling. The young man says that since he will be busy for a while, he wants to ask them to go with little Miss Jai and pick up her younger brother. The girls obey. In the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix, Master Kong asks how Tian Yun dared to argue with him. He is sure that the guy will never be able to buy anything for himself in the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. Master Lion Ji says that it is in the Tianzai Palace that there are no blacksmiths, so he is not going to speak negatively about him in any way. A servant runs into the men's room. The guy turns to the Lord of the Lion Pavilion and shouts that something terrible has happened. Master Lion Ji asks what happened. He asks if the guy doesn't understand that running is indecent. The servants say that the Heavenly Rain Hall has started selling medium-quality weapons for 10,000 silver cheaper than their hall. Master Kong asks how this is possible. Lion Ji says they're crazy. 10,000 silver is almost half of the price of a low-quality spiritual weapon. It seems to the servants that this is the seller's idea. The guy is sure that if this continues, they will lose all their customers. Lion Ji grins at the generous salesman. He asks if the guy is really selling his medium-quality spiritual weapons at such a low price. The staff thinks this is the guy they asked to leave. Master Kong is angry because of such news. Lion Ji remembers the guy from Tianzai Palace. He wonders why the guy is selling spiritual weapons. The man says that Tianzai Palace doesn't even have enough spiritual weapons for itself. Lion Ji asks if it could be that they are missing something. Master Kong says that most likely they were angry at him and are now trying to take revenge. The master says he would like to see how much they can sell. Master Kong crumples his bracelet in his hands. The man hopes that the guy will stop and quickly return to the Tianzai Palace. Lion Ji points to the door and demands that the servants immediately go to their pavilion and buy everything there. The guy listens to the man. The guy turns to Lord Lion Ji and says that they bought up all their spiritual weapons, but they released another batch. The man tells them to buy the rest of the lot. After some time, the guy reports that another batch from the Heavenly Rain Hall has been created. Every time the guy comes running and says that there are new batches of weapons, the man bangs his fist on the table and does not understand what is happening. The Heavenly Rain Hall is selling its spiritual weapons again at a low price. Lion Ji is angry. He doesn't understand what's going on. He suspects that something is wrong here. In the Heavenly Rain Hall, people were buying spiritual grade weapons. One of the girls turns to Master Z. She says that this time the headquarters will definitely recognize her status. The woman says that everything is thanks to the young master. After all, he came to them at the most difficult time. Zai Yuai turns around and thinks that even though he is using them to suppress the Heavenly Phoenix Hall, they will not stay away anyway. The woman says that any blacksmith could have failed. But the young master has never failed. His skill level is very high. Tian Yun receives an alert. The system congratulates the young man that he has raised his forging skill to an average level. The guy is happy that he has finally reached the average level. This means that he will be able to forge a spiritual weapon of high quality, and perhaps even excellent. As expected of an advanced quality, success is only 50%, and the success of an excellent one is only 10%. Jialin Gun and her younger brother arrived at the guest residence in the Heavenly Rain Hall. 
The girl runs to the guy and asks him to save her younger brother, who is lying in bed as soon as possible. The guy asks the girl not to worry and says that first he needs to look at the boy's condition. The guy notices a wound on the boy's leg. He understands that it is poisoning. Most likely he was bitten by one of the poisonous snakes. The guy guesses that the poison got into the meridians and completely mixed with the boy's blood. The boy turns to his sister and rejoices that she has returned. He says that he had a dream where they were playing near the river and picking wild fruits. The girl cries and says that as soon as he gets better, they will go to collect wild fruits, and now he needs treatment. Tian Yun asks the girl not to worry. He says that the pill that the girl took in the Heavenly Phoenix Hall can save her brother, but there is a way to get rid of this poison much easier and faster. The girl looks at the fire that appeared in the young man's hand and asked if it was the flame that was used to create weapons. She wonders if he will disperse the poison with this fire. Magic penetrates into the boy's body. Tian Yun says that everything is ready. He was able to disperse the poisonous toxins. A girl with tears in her eyes asks how her brother is feeling. The guy looks at the girl with her brother and thinks that fortunately, this poison is not very powerful. The boy turns to his sister and says that he feels much better. The girl is crying with happiness and says that this is great news. The girl falls to her knees and thanks Chan Yun. She says she is ready to serve him all her life. The guy tries to help her get up from her knees and says that there is no need. Chan Yun receives an alert. The system reports that the guy completed the mission and received a reward. Sai Yuwai saw the guy's flame. Only alchemists possess this level of control. The woman assumes that he is one of them. The guy folds his hands and, addressing the pavilion Lord Zai, asks her to arrange a room where they can stay. The woman replies that she will arrange everything without any problems. Zai Yuwai asks to follow her. She's going to show them the room. The girls thank Master Zai. The guy opens the panel and notices that his success rate has increased. Previously, he only had 50% for the advanced level, but now he has increased to 55. The guy looks at the panel and guesses that prestige points also affect the level of success. If Tian Yun uses the Aura of Luck, then he can easily bring the indicator to 100%. A man comes to Zai Yuwai's room. He reports that the Pavilion Lord of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall is selling medium-quality spiritual weapons for 10,000 silver cheaper. The woman says that currently, the price of average quality has reached its limit. It seems to her that they can only suppress them so far. Tian Yun asks what will happen if they lower the price of the quality being sold. The woman thinks for a minute. Then Zai Yuwai says that advanced quality spiritual weapons are not cheap. Its price is equal to three medium quality spiritual weapons, so even if they offer it a little cheaper, it would be pointless. Tian Yun asks what will happen if they sell it for 5,000 cheaper. The woman thinks about it, and then says that the success of a medium rank spiritual weapon is very low. With all the failures, it's probably not worth it. The guy says that this is not a problem for him and asks to leave this matter to him. The guy turns around and says they need to keep up the pace to get their customers back. But whether they will be able to cope or not depends on Sai Yuwai. The woman says that if the young master can maintain success, she will give him 40% or even 50% of the profit. The guy leaves the hall, opens the system with panels and decides that they first need to raise the level of success. The guy uses prestige points and then activates the aura of luck. It activates the crazy mode. The panel shows a success rate equal to 100%. The guy is happy that his plan worked. A light appears in the doorway. Then a young man comes out with a sword. It was an ordinary longsword, which was an advanced grade spiritual weapon. The girl looks at the sword and says that the guy really tried. Tian Yun scratches the back of his head and smiles. Zai Yuwai thinks the guy is a real genius. She should leave a favorable impression of him. Lion Ji is keeping score. He says that after they lowered prices, customers switched back to their side. But if they continue to lower prices, then everything can turn into a complete horror. The man squeezes the bridge of his nose with his hand and says that the situation is developing this way thanks to Master Kong. Master Kong turns to the pavilion lord and says that he suspects the guy of cheating. Maybe they were just checking them out. There is also a possibility that these are spies sent by the Heavenly Rain Hall. Lion Ji asks the man to stop talking nonsense. A guy runs into the pavilion and informs that the Heavenly Rain Hall sells advanced quality spiritual weapons. And the price is less than theirs, by 5,000 silver. The men are stunned. They don't understand how this is possible. Lion Ji sits down and says that their pavilion is deliberately turning customers against them by lowering their prices. If this continues, the reputation of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall will be at risk. He wonders if the Lord of the Heavenly Rain Pavilion is in his right mind. He is interested in who creates this advanced quality spiritual weapon. 
The guy says that according to the information of their spies, his name is Tian Yun. He is the senior disciple of Tian Zai Castle. Yan Ji throws away the bills and shouts that it's the same guy they asked to leave the hall again. Master Kong says it's impossible. Abacus lands near his feet, which break and fly apart. Master Kong can create intermediate grade spiritual weapons, and for an advanced level, his success rate is less than 30%. Another person runs into the hall. He informs the pavilion lord that Tianyun has already successfully created four advanced quality weapons, and is still continuing. A person has heard that there will be more than 10 advanced level spiritual weapons on sale. Yan Ji turns to Kong Shen Feng and says that he is doing well, because of him the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix provoked such a guy. Master Kong tries to justify himself. He wants to say something, but Lion Ji points to the exit and asks him not to say anything more. They can no longer serve him as a guest. Then the man asks him to leave. The man leaves, thinking that he needs to take revenge on Tian Yun. Lion Ji thinks that the guy is doing this to get revenge on Master Kong. If Tian Yun had stayed then, the Heavenly Phoenix Hall wouldn't have failed. A man thinks that at the moment he can only ask for help from God. Tian Yun from Tian Zai Palace is too young to go up against Lord Lion Ji. Master Kong is walking down the street. He looks away and thinks that he didn't want to dirty his hands, but Tian Yun forces him to do it. The guy is breathing heavily during the creation of weapons. It's hard for him to create an entire party. Tian Yun says that he used too much spiritual energy, so it's hard for him to continue. A woman approaches Tian Yun and asks if he is okay. The guy replies that he is just tired, as he has been engaged in manufacturing for a long time. The guy gets an alert. The system congratulates him on completing his mission, to help the Heavenly Rain Hall suppress the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. Tian Yun gained 5,000 experience points, 100 points to Zai Yuwai's location, and 100 prestige points. The woman turns to the young master. A panel is visible above her head, which shows that the location is now equal to 142 points. Zai Yuwai thanks the young man for everything he has done for them these few days, but he needs to rest for a while. The guy got 500 gold coins. The system also congratulates him on having risen to the fourth stage of spirit development. The guy excitedly says that there is no need to thank him, since they are just helping each other. Tian Yun did not expect that it would be much faster to increase his level of weapon making, compared to the massacre of monsters. The guy smiles at Zai Yuwai and says that in this case he will return to his room to rest after work. Returning to the room, Tian Yun opens the system. Various information is visible on the panels. The guy's level is the 14th. He is in the fourth stage of spiritual purification. Has 378 units of experience out of 80,000. He has 382 crazy points. The prestige is 20 points. The techniques, weapons and abilities are all the same as they were before. The guy notices that the experience points needed to move to the next level have increased a lot. It seems to him that at the moment it is not as easy to raise the level as before. A shadow runs past the door of the room. The guy receives a warning about the danger. Tian Yun thinks it's a killer. He immediately activates the effect of the Heavenly God armor. The next moment, a man in red robes tries to attack him. But the effect of the armor does not allow to break through the defense, and the attacker flies back, making sounds of pain. The guy looks at the killer and thinks that it would be bad if he didn't have the armor of the Heavenly God. The man gets up from the floor and wonders what happened. How could he have flown a huge distance away? Tian Yun receives a notification that the effect of the Heavenly God armor reflects half of the damage done back to the enemy, limited only to melee damage. The man coughs, and then raises his head and addresses Tian Yun. The guy doesn't let him say a word, he asks the question who sent him. The man looks menacingly at the guy and then pulls out a dagger and tries to strike, but nothing happens as Tian Yun jumps aside. The guy notices that the killer is very fast, at least in the third stage of the development of the spirit. While Tian Yun was in the air, he used freezing and the killer's head was covered with ice. The guy starts to get angry because the man doesn't want to tell him anything. In this case, he decides to activate the crazy mode and the aura of luck. Tian Yun smiles and says that in this case, the man will simply become his experience points. The guy strikes and ice shards fly all over the room. Because of the impact, the wall broke. The guy receives an alert from the system. She congratulates him on coping with the killer and getting 8,000 experience points. The guy gets an invisibility skill and a shadow cloak, as well as a thousand gold coins, a scarlet dagger and 300 crazy experience points. Tian Yun is happy to receive the invisibility skill, the shadow cloak and the scarlet dagger. These are really good rewards. The skill hides the user's body, 
increases speed and damage twice, which can be useful during surveillance. The Shadow Cloak provides immunity to all attacks for 5 seconds, which is also very useful in combat. And the Bloodlust of the Scarlet Dagger restores the user's health points when damage is inflicted. It is imbued with a poison that can kill if it instantly hits a weak spot. The guy thinks that it will not be very convenient if these weapons and skills cannot be upgraded. It seems to the guy that all the weapons received for the massacre of monsters cannot be updated, which creates certain difficulties. But at least they are of good quality and can be used for a long time in battle, which is also one of their advantages. Tianyun thinks about who could have sent an assassin to him. He chuckles, guessing that it was someone clearly from the Heavenly Phoenix Hall or Master Kong. Something attracts the guy's attention. He turns around and sees a golden ring among the ice fragments. The guy picks up a gold ring, looks at it and assumes that it must be the killer's storage ring. There are low-quality spiritual weapons and pills on the table. The guy looks at all this and thinks that it's all the contents of the ring. The spiritual weapon has no markings, but judging by the quality, but judging by the quality, it is made by Master Kong. The guy decides to go to the Heavenly Phoenix Hall first and find out who sent the gift to him. He activates the cloak and climbs out of the window. When the guy jumps out of the window, he notices Master Kong on the street. The man thinks about what's going on, why it takes so long for the killer to just deal with the young man. The guy looks at Master Kong and then lands on the branches. The man is angrier at this time. He wonders how that man can call himself a Shadow League assassin if he can't complete a simple task for so long. As the guy expected, no one wanted to deal with him as much as Master Kong. This makes Master Kong very angry. The guy receives a system alert. She offers him to accept the mission to deal with Kong Shen Feng. The reward for the mission is 10,000 experience points, 300 crafting skill points, 300 gold coins and 300 crazy points. The guy accepts the mission. The next minute, he sneaks up on Master Kong from behind. A guy with a terrifying smile hovers over a man who doesn't even know it. A man feels something is wrong and abruptly turns around and asks who is next to him. A haze appears in front of the man. He feels something strange and frightening. He decides that, in any case, he must first leave this place. The guy is behind the man's back. A sword appears in his hands. And behind the man, a panel displays his characteristics. The guy doesn't care about anything except his cultivation level, which is only at the second stage of spiritual purification. The guy shoots the sword straight at the man and he pierces his chest. Tian Yun appears in front of Master Kong and says that his time has come. The man does not have time to say anything and falls to the ground. Tian Yun receives a notification from the system that he has completed the mission and received 6,000 experience points, 200 crazy points and one recipe for making the Hammer of God. The guy successfully completed the mission and received 10,000 experience points, 500 crazy points, 300 points to the skill of making and 300 gold coins. The guy opens the bottle and pours the contents on the body of Master Kong. He found this file in the killer's belongings. Perhaps with this thing, he wanted to erase all traces of evidence, including the body. The guy thinks that letting a man like Master Kong live means giving himself more problems in the future. The guy decides to be more careful from now on. Tian Yun walks back into the room. Zai Yuwei asks what happened to the young master. The guy says it's nothing special, just dealt with the killer who was sent to him. The woman is surprised at the words about the killer. She asks if the Heavenly Phoenix Hall sent him. The guy is not sure about this. He has completed all his tasks in this place, so he must return back as soon as possible to avoid even more trouble. The woman apologizes to the young master. She says her Heavenly Rain Hall was negligent about their security measures. As compensation, the woman is ready to offer them 10% more profit. The young man's share will be 60%, and they will receive 40%. The guy agrees. He says that in any case, if the guards are not at the 8th or ninth stages of spiritual purification or do not specialize in stealth, then they would not be able to stop the killer, so it's not the fault of the heavenly hall. The woman asks the guy to accept compensation as an apology. They didn't protect the guests well enough. She says it's the last thing they can do after all that Tianyun has done for them. Zai Yuwei thinks that the guy really helped the Heavenly Rain Hall to get more traffic and become more famous. Compared to that, this amount of money is nothing, and at the moment, if only she could get the guy to stay in their gym. Tian Yun is going out. He says he appreciates Zai Yuwei's offer, but he has all the necessary materials, so he will leave with his companions the next day. Finally, the guy says that it is not connected with the killer. The woman understands because the young master has made a decision. She says she's not trying to stop him. However, if the young master ever needs the help of the Heavenly Rain Hall, then they will undoubtedly help. 
The guy tells the pavilion Lord Z that they are leaving. The woman says they will always welcome them. They will also give a big discount if the young master ever wants to buy something from them. Someone runs into the Heavenly Rain Hall and informs that the Heavenly Phoenix Hall is holding an auction. They sell spiritual weapons of excellent quality. They also have a huge amount of advanced quality spiritual weapons made by the creators of the God Clan. A huge crowd of people is already gathering near their palace and they say that in Heavenly Wind City, apart from the spiritual weapons made by the creator of the God Clan, everything else is fake. The woman never thought that the Heavenly Phoenix Hall could ask for help from the creator of the God Clan. The intermediate exam for the master of the heavenly rain city and the assessment of the quality of spiritual weapons everything is decided by the creator of the god clan now they have sided with the heavenly phoenix hall and say that the heavenly rain hall's spiritual weapons are fake the guy thinks about it the woman notices this and asks if young master ma lion peng knows the guy answers in the negative one of the girls says that ma lion peng is one of the students who will take part in the ancient ruins she had never thought that he would be so arrogant the girl says that they should go to the heavenly phoenix hall and call that master for an explanation people run up to the hall and say that they demand a refund one of the enraged men says that they were told the truth all this is a spiritual weapon of intermediate quality the other man is not surprised that he was sold so cheaply. All require a refund. One of the enraged men says he felt very strange when he used a weapon. The other man never thought that the Heavenly Rain Hall would sell such weapons. The woman asks everyone to calm down. It ensures that all weapons are advanced quality spiritual weapons. People ask her not to try to deceive them again. The creator of the God Clan is a symbol of fabrication, so they only believe in him. Another man confirms his words and says that the Heavenly Rain Hall is only harm, so they want to return the money. Tian Young goes to the square and asks Zai Yu why to return all the money. The woman does not understand the young master. Then the woman still agrees. She asks everyone to follow her to get their refund. The guy realizes that he can't leave yet. He needs to make another visit to the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. In the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix, the pavilion Lord Zai meets Lion Ji. He wonders what brought them to his gym. A woman asks a man to stop pretending. She asks why he says that everything except the spiritual weapon sold in the Heavenly Rain Hall is fake. The spiritual weapon sold by their hall is of advanced quality, and is real, and the man knows it. She asks if he's going too far. A voice is heard announcing that he has studied the weapons from the Heavenly Rain Hall. It cannot be considered as a spiritual weapon of advanced quality. It is a spiritual weapon of intermediate quality. The man is Ma Lion Peng, a follower of the creator of the God Clan. He knows because he is the creator of the God Clan. The man says that the real advanced quality weapons are more powerful, and the weapons that the Heavenly Rain Hall sold are too weak. Tian Yun asks why they don't check it out in a fight. He suggests to see whose advanced rank spiritual weapon is stronger. The man asks if Tian Yun really wants to compete with the creator of the God Clan. Tian Yun confirms his words and asks if the man dares to accept his challenge. He's going to show them what a spiritual weapon looks like. Ma Lion Pen asks who the guy is since he offers to arrange a fight and find out whose weapon is better. The guy calls his name, Yi Tian Yun. The guy says that he created an advanced quality spiritual weapon, which the man called fake. The man looks at the guy carefully and then starts laughing very loudly. He says the guy is nothing, came from the Tian Zai Palace and still has no Kai blood. The man taunts the guy and asks if he really thought he could create a spiritual weapon. The man is sure that the guy asked someone to help him create a weapon. But the guy was tricked with so many advanced quality spiritual weapons. Tian Yun grins. He asks where the man heard about it and how he could believe it. The guy says that since the man believes that all the spiritual weapons that Tian Yun created are fake, then they should arrange a match. The guy asks if the man agrees to the match. He wants to see whose spiritual weapon is stronger. Ma Lion Peng asks how Tian Yun dares to talk to him like that. If a guy wants to arrange a match, then the man will agree, but he will have to fight alone so that his friends do not help him. Tian Yun asks how a man could doubt his weapon. The guy says that in any case he will personally fight with the man to prove his authenticity. The guy smiles and says that they will definitely be able to find out who has a fake and who has a real spiritual weapon. Ma Lion Pen offers to fight outside so that everyone can see who is lying. The guy agrees without any problems. All the people gather in the square. Tian Yun, Kin Zhu and An Ling are also standing on it. Kin Zhu says that Ma Lian Peng's cultivation is at the fourth stage of spiritual purification. She asks if the guy is sure he wants to fight him. An Ling confirms his sister's words and says that his cultivation level is higher than Tian Yun's. Also, if he was injured, then they wouldn't be able to meet the palace lord. Tian Yun asks the girls not to worry. 
he says he can take care of himself. He is confident that Ma Lian Peng will not harm him. A man meets a guy with a sword on the playground. He says that the guy only knows how to hide, but he still hopes that Tian Yun is a real man. Tian Yun says that at least he is better than those who spread false rumors using the influence of the clan. The man prepares the weapon for the attack and says that in any case, rumors or not, they will find out very soon. Ma Lian Peng shows off his advanced quality sword, the best sword he has created. The man looks directly into Tian Yun's eyes and says that he will prove to everyone whose weapon is stronger. The guy also prepares his weapon and says that he will use his heavy sword to see how strong his advanced grade spiritual weapon really is. Zai Yuwai looks at them with condemnation and says that this is just sparring, not a life and death battle. She hopes that there will be no accidents, otherwise the heavenly rain hall will not leave it just like that. The man says that Tian Yun is not worthy enough of him to fight with him for life and death. The man notices that Tian Yun is going to use a heavy sword against the light one. He is confident that he can handle the young man with one blow. One of the spectators thinks that the guest of the heavenly rain hall must not be the smartest, since he is going to use a heavy sword against the light one. Another viewer says that the disciple of the creator of the god clan cannot lose. He is sure that the guest of the heavenly rain hall will definitely lose. Another spectator says that Tian Yun was probably under emotion and asked for the match in a rush. Ma Lian Pen starts attacking and says that if anything, the sword has no eyes. He says that the guy can only blame himself for provoking the creator of the god clan. The man strikes, but Tian Yun deflects it with his sword. The guy realizes that the fight has begun and Ma Lian Pen is trying to deal with him. When the guy strikes back, the man jumps back and lingers in the air. The man is tense because the guy blocked his attack. He lands on the ground, and Tian Yun says he wants to see how long he can hold out. The guy blocks all the man's attacks and asks if this is really all he can do. Ma Lian Peng grins and says that Tian Yun has upset him. The guy is going to deliver another powerful blow. He shouts that it's his turn now. The guy strikes with a sword, but the man tries to put a block. Under the pressure of Tian Yun's sword, Ma Lian Pen's sword breaks. The guy is going to activate the crazy mode. The next second, a man's heavy growl is heard and a powerful explosion occurs. Everyone is covering up because of the wave of a powerful explosion. At this time, Zai Yuwai is standing and watching the haze dissipate on the site. As soon as the haze is completely dispelled, Ma Lian Pen appears. He tries to stand up, leaning on his sword. At the same time, he coughs. The man looks at his sword and notices that it is broken. Another person comes out of the haze and it turns out to be Tian Yun. He asks if this is the limit of his sword. Wasn't it Ma Lian Peng who said that his spiritual weapon was a fake? The guy asks why then this top quality sword of his was destroyed by his fake one. He asks whose weapon is fake in this case. One of the viewers suggests that the weapons sold by the Heavenly Rain Hall were indeed advanced quality spiritual weapons. The other man says it can't be. In this case, it turns out that everything that the disciple of the creators of the God Clan said is a lie. One of the guys in the crowd of spectators suggests that the man deliberately lied. Ma Lian Pen hears all this. A man is sitting on his knees in front of Tian Yun. He asks him how he dared to strike him. The man is very angry and tries to attack with the help of a furious wave of the wind. The guy smiles and, shouting for him to get lost, strikes again. As a result of the blow, the man flies up. Ma Lian Pen exclaims. Then the guy jumps up and, persuading the man to surrender, strikes another blow with the sword, sending the man down. Zai Yuwai thinks that the young master is still young, but his cultivation level is not low. Its creation standard is also quite high. She thinks the guy has a lot of potential. Tian Yun is standing over a man. He says Ma Lian Peng has lost. It seems that his weapon is not the best. The man gets even angrier. He pulls out a dagger and says they haven't finished yet. He's not going to lose to the young man. Ma Lian Peng jumps straight at the young man, about to attack. He shouts at him not the most pleasant things. The guy repels Ma Lian Peng's attack. The man only has time to exclaim. Tian Yun says that the man lost. Instead of admitting it, he dared to use a hidden attack. He's very sorry. The guy says that he failed to carry out a covert attack. Everyone abruptly goes into shock and stands with their mouths open. They all see that Tian Yun has dealt with a follower of the God Clan. The guest of the Heavenly Rain Hall turned out to be so ruthless. One of the spectators asks if he didn't see that a follower of the creator of the God Clan tried to deal with him. It's normal that he counterattacked. It's over, but since Tian Yun has dealt with the follower of the creator of the God Clan, he will also have problems now. Tian Yun receives an alert. The system congratulates him on having dealt with Ma Lian Peng, 
and received 10,000 experience points and a thousand gold coins. The guy also got the skill of the steps of the heavenly clouds, the skill of swordsmanship, a furious sweep of the wind and 400 crazy points. The system also congratulates the guy that the mission is completed and Tianyun has received 5,000 experience points. 500 points of craftsmanship and 500 gold coins. The guy grins and says that the fight with Ma Lion Peng was not the easiest. He didn't expect the man to attempt a sneak attack. Lion Ji appears. He says that Tianyun has dealt with Ma Lion Peng. He immediately points at the guy and orders the guards to grab him. Ma Lion Peng is a guest of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. The man says that since the guy dealt with him, they should give an answer to the creator of the God Clan. If Tianyun escapes, it will be an even bigger problem for them. The guy asks if they really want to grab him. He says the guards might try. Lion Ji asks if the young man should resist. He just dealt with a follower of the God Clan. If he didn't give up, he would drag Tian Zai Palace into this matter. The guy is angry. He does not understand why if he is attacked, he cannot counterattack in response. There is no logic in this. The guy asks if he should bow down to a man if he is one of the creators of the God Clan. Lion Ji says that if he does not surrender obediently, then Tian Zai Castle will be destroyed by the creators of the God Clan. And Ling steps forward. She turns to Pavilion Lord Lion and says that he is very arrogant. Even third-class warriors wouldn't say such words. She asks if he could introduce them to the creator of the God Clan at the moment. The girl says that Tian Zai Castle may be weak, but they also have their own connections. If something happens in Tian Zai Palace, the forces won't just wait and watch. Lion Ji says that they should follow him back to the God Clan creator's palace anyway. Otherwise, they may not blame the man for what happens next. Zai Yuwai thinks that if Tian Yun really follows Lion Tian Chen to the creators of the God Clan, then he will definitely lose his life. She has to do something to help the guy out of these situations. A girl from the Heavenly Rain Hall turns to a woman and asks her not to be reckless. They can't say anything to the creators of the God Clan either. Zai Yuwai thinks that if she really fits in, she will become Tian Yun's accomplice. Thus, she will bring problems to the Heavenly Rain Hall. A woman bites her lips because she is very sorry. At this point, the guy says that all responsibility lies with him. Tian Yun says that from now on, he is no longer an external disciple of Tian Zai Palace. The guy frowns. He says he's the problem, so there's no need to involve anyone else. And Ling addresses the master. She asks him not to act recklessly. She steps forward and tries to draw attention to herself. Lion Ji says chuckles. He gets angry and speaks negatively about Tian Yun. The next second, he demands that the guy be captured, but left alive. The guy understands that all these people are at the fourth or fifth stage of spiritual purification. Tian Yun pulls out his sword and prepares to attack. He tells the guards to approach him, because he is not afraid. The guy also puts on Snow Wolf combat boots, and activates the crazy experience points mode. The guy moves to attack. He punches one of the guards in the face. Then the guy activates the Aura of Luck. He notices that one of the guards is trying to grab him from behind. The guy turns around and kicks. Then the guy jumps up and strikes with a sword. All the guards scatter to the sides. Tian Yun receives a message that he has dealt with the Deacon of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. He gained 8,000 experience points. The guy also received one third level pill to restore the spirit and 400 crazy points. One of the guards doesn't understand what's going on. He asks Tian Yun not to come any closer. The guy rises in the air with the help of the steps of the heavenly clouds. Tian Yun uses a furious sweep of the wind and strikes the man. The guy receives a notification from the system that he has dealt with the deacon of the heavenly phoenix hall and received 10,000 experience points. The guy also got one pill of double experience and 500 crazy points. The guy receives a new notification that he has successfully passed to the fifth stage of purification of the spirit. Tian Yun stands among the defeated opponents and asks if anyone else wants to try to defeat him. Lion Ji doesn't understand what's going on. The man notices that the skills that the guy released were previously used by Ma Lion Peng. The man thinks about how Tian Yun was able to learn about the skills of the creators of the God Clan. Qin Zhu and An Ling simultaneously say that the young master has become stronger than before. Lion Ji puts his finger to his mouth and says that the guy does not want to reveal his true strength. He wonders how he dared to deal with his deacons. The man says that he is from the Heavenly Phoenix Hall and is not going to spare Tian Yun. The man gathers all his strength and asks the guy to let him see what he is capable of. Tian Yun receives a new notification that he has a new mission, to deal with Lion Tian Chen. 
the system asks if the guy is going to accept the mission. The reward for this mission is 30,000 experience points, 10,000 gold coins, a power belt and an experience card. The guy notices a panel above the man, which shows the characteristics of the boss Lion Tian Chen. The guy smiles and thinks that the man is a boss level character in the seventh stage of spirit purification. The guy starts attacking. He says he didn't expect a man to turn into a boss. He was waiting for him. The man gets gloomy and demands to stop him being so arrogant. He has to use 10,000 sword strikes. King Yun then uses a furious sweep of the wind. A whole funnel formed, and then an explosion occurred. After such an attack, the guy jumps back. Tian Yun is angry. At this moment, Lion Tian Chen flies at him to attack the guy. Tian Yun blocks the blow with his sword, but it is very difficult for him. The guy's sword flies off to the side. Drops of blood are running down his arm. Qin Zhu and An Ling look at the fight and worry about the young master. The guy sees An Ling and asks her to stay away. Tian Yun says that he is no longer a disciple of Tian Zai Palace, so the girl should not interfere. The guy asks her about it. Girls can't leave their little brother. The man says that the guy is too stubborn. He points at him with his sword and says that now that he doesn't even have a weapon, he wants to see how long the guy can be arrogant. Tian Yun chuckles. Lion Tian Chen looks at the young man questioningly. Tian Yun asks why the man thinks he has no other weapon. The guy puts on equipment, ice gloves. The man grins and asks if the guy is really going to fight him with gloves on. The man swings and says that if the guy wants to leave the world of the living in this way, then he will fulfill his wish. The man rushes at the guy, but something stops him. The guy clutches Lion Tian Chen's sword in his hands. The guy says through clenched teeth that this is a great start to the absorption technique. The guy receives messages that he first gets 500 experience points, then 460 points, 570, 630, 520 and 660 experience points. The guy grabs the sword and, saying that his turn has begun, sends the man down. He decides to end it all. The man falls to the ground. Tian Yun lands right on top of him, causing Lion Tian Chen to start coughing. The man thinks that such an outcome of the battle was impossible. The guy says that nothing is impossible, it's just that the man's level is too weak. The guy activates the aura of luck and then is going to strike. Before the attack, the man asks the guy to let him leave so that he can convince the creators of the god clan not to deal with Tian Yun's case. But the guy doesn't listen to him and strikes. The impact causes a huge magic wave. All the viewers are stunned. Tian Yun receives an alert. The system congratulates him on having dealt with Lion Tian Chen, so he gets 80 experience points and 5,000 gold coins. The guy also gets a power bracelet, a power ring, 10,000 sword strikes, a wind chase sword and 700 crazy points. The system also congratulates the guy that he completed the mission to deal with Lion Tian Chen. He received 30,000 experience points, 10,000 gold coins, a power belt and an experience card. The guy successfully passed the sixth stage of spiritual purification. The guy is happy that he even raised the level. One of the spectators cannot believe that the Lord of the Lion Pavilion is now gone, since his cultivation was at least at the seventh stage of spirit purification. Zai Yuai can't believe that the young master is so powerful. Then the girl gets the idea that the danger has not passed yet. Zai Yuai addresses the young gentleman. She says he has to leave this place as soon as possible, otherwise it may be too late. Neither the Heavenly Phoenix Hall nor the creators of the God Clan will let them go. The guy looks at her and doesn't say anything. Tian Yun then hands over his ring to Kin Zhu and asks her to take it away. He says that this is his battle and that he will handle it all by himself. The guy asks the sisters to come back and tell the Lord of the Palace not to worry about him. He leaves Jiu Lin Yun and her brother in their charge. The guy thinks that now that everything has turned out this way, there will be many strong cultivators after his life. If the guy comes back, then Ant will choose to protect him, and it will only bring more harm to Tian Zai Palace. The guy runs away. His sisters only have time to scream. Kin Zhu says that Tian Yun will not be able to escape. Boss Bo Yu Shen appears in the square. The man is the clerk of the creators of the god Bo clan. Most of the people in the square believe that this is the end for Tian Yun, because he provoked the creators of the god clan. He will not escape. And Ling and King Zhu cover themselves with their hands due to a strong gust of wind. One of the girls notices that the man must be at the peak of spiritual purification. Queen Zhu hopes that their younger brother will have time to leave. The guy rushes through the streets. He never thought that another boss would appear when he dealt with another one. Even if the rewards given for the massacre of bosses are good. If a guy rushes into battle with his current strength, then it will be very difficult to cope with him. Tian Yun has only one life, so he needs to be careful and careful. The man rushes after the guy. 
He's asking, does the young man really think he can escape from him? The man uses his abilities and fixes Tianyun's aura, so wherever he hides, he will find him. The man stops and looks around the square questioningly. He wonders where the guy has gone. The man does not understand how Tianyun disappeared so quickly and suddenly. Bo Yushen hits the wall and shouts that it's best for Tianyun to come out himself, otherwise he'll regret it. A man goes inside the building and looks around. Tianyun watches Bo Yushen. The man says that he knows that the guy is from Tianzai Castle. He says that if the guy doesn't show up, he will grab the girls who came with him. He's already figured out what he's going to do with them. The man says that when they get sick, he will deal with them. He asks what the guy will do. He shouts that it's his choice. The guy is watching Bo Yushen. He thinks that he cannot allow something to happen to his older sisters, otherwise he will never forgive himself. Now the guy has no choice, so he takes out a rabid pill. The guy throws it into his mouth and eats it. It activates the crazy power mode. The guy also puts on a power bracelet, a power ring and a power belt. The guy receives a notification that he has activated a set of bonus effects. 50% of the additional effect is added to him. The guy is going to attack. The man notices it above his head and understands what is going on. Tianyun sends a powerful stream of magic, but Bo Yushen manages to jump aside. The guy turns around and notices how the man is about to attack him. Bo Yushen says that everything is very good. He says it's time to deal with him. The guy thinks that the armor of this deacon must be of high quality. Even with the crazy mode effect, he won't be able to pass it. A man attacks a young man. At this moment, Tianyun activates the extra effect of the Heavenly God armor. The man tries to attack the young man again. The guy thinks that he could have gone to another world if he didn't have the armor of the Heavenly God. The guy takes the restorative pills out of his pocket and eats several pieces at once. As expected, the recovery pill has three stages, and under the crazy regime, this effect doubles. The guy also activates invisibility. The man does not understand what is happening. He doesn't feel Tianyun's presence at all. Bo Yushen is very angry because after his direct attack, he is still fine. The man did not expect that Tianyun would be so strong. It doesn't matter to him how, but he has to deal with it. The man raises his sword and calls Tianyun an arrogant boy. He says the guy can't hide from him forever. The man uses his abilities to the maximum and says that he will deal with the guy here and now. The guy sneaks up. He thinks this is his chance to attack. But the man manages to react, as he notices that the guy is going to make a hidden attack. The man manages to dodge and launch a counterattack. Then he is going to attack Tianyun again, but he uses the steps of the heavenly cloud and evades. The guy understands that Bo Yushen is too strong. This gap in cultivation is not something that can be overcome with a six-figure effect. The man is going to attack. The guy tells him to calm down. The man is going to use his most powerful attack again. The guy thinks it's not the time to give up. He must come out of the battle alive. The guy at speed fly into the man to attack. The man dodges the blow. He is surprised because the guy is using a stealth attack again. He thinks the guy is too naive. The guy still touches the man with a dagger and then just sweeps on. The man doesn't understand what just happened. The guy starts moving around the hall in rapid leaps. He asks the guy if he really thinks his techniques will work on him. The man asks to be allowed to show the real strength of an expert from the creators of the God Clan. Another attack is flying at the guy. He understands that this is a hidden weapon and does not have time to react. A lot of needles arrive in Tianyun, but after a second, his silhouette disappears. A man looks at all this and does not understand how this is possible. Tianyun's shadow appears right in front of the man. He says that the man will go to another world today. An attack arrives at the man and he does not have time to react. He starts coughing because of the pain. The man asks how the guy managed to break through his armor. The guy asks if the man really thought his armor could withstand his continuous attacks. Tianyun was able to easily attack Bo Yushen thanks to his Shadow Cloak. Shadow Cloak effect, immune to all physical attacks for 5 seconds. The man says that if he kills him, the creators of the God Clan will never let him go. The guy swings and says that it doesn't matter to him how many people will come for him, he will cope with everyone. The guy decides that when he becomes strong enough, he will visit their clan and thank them personally. The guy freezes Bo Yushen. The man freezes in ice. He tries to say something, but the guy destroys a block of ice with a run and says that he is going to destroy the creators of the God Clan. The guy gets an alert. The system reports that he successfully dealt with Bo Yu Shen and received 10,000 experience points. He also gained 5,000 experience points, a thousand crazy points, and a hidden weapon, the Pear Blossom Needle. Another alert is coming. 
The system congratulates the young man on the fact that he dealt with the boss and received special awards, as well as the first level and one chance in the lottery. The system congratulates the guy that he has passed to the seventh stage of spiritual purification. The next second, another notification comes that the guy has moved on to the eighth stage of spiritual purification. The guy is happy that he got two levels at once. Punching needle of a pear flower, within a hundred meters, cultivators of the purification stage and below go to another world when hit. The guy says he got a great weapon, but unfortunately, he can use it once. This weapon can help him defeat a huge number of people at a time. He's going to see who dares to beat him. The guy understands that in any case he has to leave this place. The guy calls the king of the snow wolves. The king of the snow wolves appears near the guy. He jumps on it and jumps. Night falls. The guy finds a cave and is going to make an overnight stay there. The guy is sitting in the cave, stroking the wolf and saying that he should be safe. The guy offers to look at the general status. At the moment, the guy has the eighth stage of spiritual purification. Experience points are 17, 580 points out of 130,000. He has 3,698 crazy glasses, 15 prestige points. Of the weapons the guy now has, ice gloves, a scarlet dagger. From equipment, snow wolf combat boots, heavenly god armor, shadow cloak. Of the items the guy has, a card that increases experience by 5 times, 4 recovery pills, a gift bag of the 15th level, 1 lottery draw, a pouring needle, a pear flower. The guy notices that he has a gift bag. Tianyun was in a continuous battle, so he forgot to open the gift bag. The guy receives a new notification. The system congratulates the young man on the fact that he received an evaluation eye, a special lottery draw. He also received a tenfold experience card and a 20th level gift package. Evaluation eye can see detailed information about the target, stats, class, to evaluate the combat strength. The guy activates the evaluation eye. He looks at the Snow Wolf King and sees his entire characteristic, the eighth stage of body purification, a durable fur that is like an intermediate quality armor. He has sharp and strong claws, which act as a weapon of intermediate quality. The experience of the Snow Wolf King is 1000 experience points. His potential, second class, overall combat capability, 1300. The guy notices the fighting strength of the Snow Wolf King and thinks about what number his fighting strength is equal to. Tianyun's total combat capability, 18,570 points. The guy is happy with what he saw. He thinks he can recognize the fighting ability of his opponents and escape if they are too strong for him. Tianyun tries to apply a lottery ticket. He receives a notification that he has received a pill for 5,000 experience points. The guy falls to the ground and, under the surprise gaze of the Snow Wolf King, begins to knock on the ground with his hand, because his prestige level is too low. 5,000 points is too little for his current level. The guy suddenly gets up from the floor, as he remembers that he has an aura of luck. If he can increase his luck five times, then he can increase his overall level. He decides to use it in a lottery draw. Tianyun looks at the panel and wonders if it will work. The guy clicks on the panel and spins the wheel of luck. A notification arrives that he has used 1,000 crazy points. The guy stands near the Wheel of Luck and prays that he has a divine ability. The guy looks at the Wheel of Fortune and thinks that it will be good if it is not a one-time use. The guy gets an alert. The system congratulates the guy on getting 100 transformation masks. The guy grins when he finds out that he has received 100 formation masks. One of them appears in his hands. A man in gold gloves slams his hand on the table. He can't believe that a man would let a terrible event happen in the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix. The man in gold gloves raises his voice and says that Ma Lion Peng and Deacon Bo are no longer in the world of the living. The man he was addressing is Zion Tian, the Lord of the Control Pavilion of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. Zion Tian says that the Heavenly Phoenix Hall also suffered losses. He also confirms the information that the Lord of the Lion Pavilion and some of their deacons are already in the other world. The man in the golden gloves says that the guy who arranged all this came from Tian Zai Castle. He heard that this guy doesn't even have Kai blood, but he was able to handle Deacon Bao. The man in the golden gloves is Kin Yun Chen, the master of the God Clan creator sect. Kin asks if anyone from Tian Zai Castle could have helped Tian Yun escape. Zion Tian says that perhaps the lord of the Shizu Yun Palace has spoiled him too much. So it seems to the man that the elder of Tian Zai Castle or even Shizu Yun herself is helping him. Kin says that Tianyun has stated that he is no longer a disciple of Tian Zai Castle. His actions are also unrelated to him. The man asks how his actions cannot be connected if in this case they will suffer losses. Zion Tian says that this time, the reputation of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall was severely damaged, 
and the heavenly rain hall suppress them. Kin asks the man not to worry. He will give him a high reward for the capture of Tian Yun, and when he is in their hands, they will deal with him right in front of Tian Zai castle. He says they will attack the palace and take all its treasures for themselves. Zion Tian smiles and says that there are not the smartest people in Tian Zai castle if they think they can get out of this situation without conflict. Kin says that he constantly hears rumors that Tian Zai castle owns treasures that everyone wants to get. But no one can dare to attack so recklessly. According to the man, it looks like it's time to take action. The guy is on the illusory beast mountains. Tian Yun thinks he has found the right place. The guy realizes that his cultivation is too low. Monsters in the outer regions of the burrow are weak, so the guy can safely break into the core condensation area. He rides the snow wolf king. They stumble upon some wild animal that blocks their way. The guy grins and says that the wild animal appeared very timely. He gives the command to the snow wolf to attack. The wolf successfully copes with a wild animal. The guy receives an alert that Tian Yun successfully coped with a giant bear and received 90 experience points, one bear skin and 90 crazy points. The guy looks at the system panels and says that the result is quite good. He decides to activate the crazy experience points mode and get 1800 points. The guy hears something and thinks that someone is fighting nearby. The next second, Tian Yun runs to his snow wolf to get out of this place as soon as possible. The guy receives a new notification that he has been given the opportunity to accept a random mission, saving Miss Yan. The system asks if the guy will accept the mission. The reward for the mission, 5,000 experience points, 100 points to the location of Yan Lin Zhu, and 10 prestige points. The guy notices those 10 prestige points, stops and still accepts the mission. For the sake of prestige points, the guy is ready to save the girl. In the forest, covered with a strange fog, there is a group of men. One of them says there is no movement ahead. Kai Wen's guard hopes that no more beasts will arrive at the noise of the battle. Lao Jan, the butler of the Yan family, was looking at this man. With all these people in the formation was Yan Lin Zhu, the young miss of the Yan family. One of the men notices someone's shadow and asks who is next to them. Tian Yun appears in front of the formation. He asks them not to be afraid and says that he just came to practice. The guy thinks that the mask of a hundred transformations is a real blessing. With her, he can be anywhere without revealing his identity. The guy uses a mask of a hundred transformations, which can change the age and appearance. The guy notices that these people are at about the first and second stages of spiritual purification. The guy assumes that they collect herbs in the forest, so they can be harmless. Security guard Wen swears. He feels something, and then asks everyone to be on the alert, as the fight will begin soon. A huge number of bears are running towards them, intending to attack. Yan Lin turns around and apologizes to the young master, as she is sorry that they dragged him into the battle. Tian Yun thinks that Yan Lin is very beautiful and well-mannered, unlike his guards, who didn't even bother to hide their annoyance. The guy smiles and asks the girl not to worry, since this battle would have happened anyway. Since the guy is with them, he asks them to let him help them out of this situation. The guard Kai Wen grins. He thinks that the guy is waiting for the moment when they are distracted to attack later. The guard turns around and demands that Tian Yun leave. The man is sure that Tian Yun is trying to take advantage of their miss. While Tian Yun is silently looking at the sword that Tan took out, a girl looks out from behind his back and asks what he is saying. At this moment, a bear appears behind the guard ready to attack. The girl shouts to the man to turn around. The man manages to react and stabs the bear with his sword. Lao Jan also shouts to the girl that there is another bear behind her ready to attack. The girl turns around and gets scared because there was a bear right behind her, which opened its mouth. The girl covers herself, and Tian Yun strikes the bear and he falls back. The bear flies away from the blow for a huge distance. Lao Jan ran to the girl to help her up. The guy receives a notification that he has successfully coped with a giant bear, and received 700 experience points, one bear skin and 70 crazy points. The guards look at Tian Yun and wonder who he is. They celebrate his incredible strength. Yan Lin notes the enormous strength of the young man. This strength impresses her. One of their guards is very angry, thinking that the guy is trying to move them to the background. The other guard just chuckles. All the guards run towards the bear at once and shout at him to eat the girl with Tian Yun. The guy looks at them with a smile, and then defeats the bear with one blow which then flies away. The man rubs his head with his hand and says that they finally coped with all the bears. Tian Yun receives an alert that he has completed the mission and received 5,000 experience points. He also received 100 points to Yan Lin's location and 10 prestige points. The guy thinks that everything is going very well. 
He rejoices that he has received an easy 10 prestige points. The girl turns to her guards. She hands them the recovery pills and says that they did a great job, so now they can rest. Yan Lin turns to the young master and thanks him for his help. The guy notices a panel above the girl's head, which shows the location points, 103. She hands him one of the pills. The guy is happy that with the location of a little more than 100 points, he has become a good friend for her. The guy takes a pill. The guard chuckles, not understanding what Tianyun has done at all. He says the guy just punched the bear. The second guard says that the bears can come back to them, since the guy did not win all of them. The girl introduces herself, and then she asks the young gentleman to introduce himself, wanting to know his name. The guy introduces himself using a fake name. He thinks he should hide his real name for now, in case the creators of God put a bounty on his head. The girl turns to the guy and says that she would like the young master to be her guard. He will receive a very generous reward for accompanying him. She asks if the guy is interested in this. The guy receives a notification that a new mission is available to him. Accompany Yan Lion Zoo for herbs. The system asks the guy if he will accept this mission. The reward for the task, 10,000 experience points, 20 to Lion Zoo's location and 15 prestige points. The guy decides to accept the mission. He tells the girl that he will accompany her for herbs without any problems. One of the guards turns to Miss Yan and asks if she is sure that she wants to hire some stranger to accompany her. The man says that Tian Yun can be strong, but how can she be sure that he inspires confidence? The guard adds that they ensure her safety. If a girl invites some random stranger, then he can become a burden for them. The guy looks at the man and realizes that this Tan apparently does not treat him very well. The girl smiles and asks Tanya not to worry, as she knows exactly what she is doing. The girl smiles even wider and says that the young master is quite experienced and strong, so everything will be fine. She invites them to continue their journey. The man tells Tianyun to just follow his instructions and not bring problems. Otherwise, he will pay for it. The guy says he doesn't need to listen to him. He emphasizes that Miss Yan is his employer. Then the guy runs forward and, approaching the girl, asks what spiritual herbs she is looking for. He asks if there is anything he can do to help in the search. The girl says that she is looking for dragon tail grass. She had heard that the grass was growing somewhere in the middle of the illusory beast mountain territory. But it's pretty hard to find. The guy remembers that dragon tail grass does not belong to high class herbs, but it is really very rare. It is mainly used to treat those who suffer from a deviation in cultivation. The guy apologizes before asking if Miss Yan has anyone in her family who suffers from a deviation in cultivation. The girl is amazed that the young master knows the characteristics of the herb. The guard blocks the way with his hand. He asks everyone to stop because he noticed something in the bushes. The man turns around and tells Miss not to worry as he is coping with the monster. The man smiles and thinks that he will not give the guy a single chance to show himself. The guard rushes into the attack, shouting wishes for death. There is a fox, which with one kick repels the man. The guy looks at the fight of a man and a fox, thinking that after all, Tan Yan is not very smart. It's already sunset outside. Tian Yun and his companions pass by high cliffs. One of the guards rubs his forehead with his hand and says that the road is very tiring. He asks why they still haven't found the dragon tail grass. The man turns to Miss Yan and asks why we wouldn't let them go back home, since they couldn't find the grass. It's too dangerous to stay in this place overnight. The girl agrees and is about to say something else, but the guy stops her. He turns to Miss Yang and asks if she could let him lead the way. The girl turns to the young master. One of the guards asks what the guy thinks he is. Another guard asks what if Boss Tan couldn't find, then what makes him think he can do it? The guy stands between the two guards and asks if they can't see that Miss Yan is in a hurry to find the dragon tail grass. The guy says that if men are afraid, then they can go home, and he will go on a search. Tian Yun thinks that these guards have been searching for grass for too long. He will find the dragon tail grass himself and complete the mission. The man starts screaming. He asks why the guy thought they were scared. He says they were just worried about Miss Yang. The guard follows the guy and says that if he thinks he can find grass, then no one will detain him. He asks him to let him see if Tian Yun is really capable of finding this herb. The guy stands on the dais and activates the Aura of Luck. He decides to see if he can use the Aura of Luck to find the dragon tail grass. The guy manages to lose 5 crazy points while walking through the forest and looking for grass. The guy is very hurt by the fact that one crazy point per second is taken away from him. The guy thinks that he has activated the aura of luck and the grass should appear very soon. The girl notices something. The next second, she runs forward and starts smiling with joy that they have found the grass of the dragon's tail. The guard can't believe it. Lao Jan looks at the grass and confirms that it really is her. 
the guards are still in amazement. The guy notices another clearing with the grass of the dragon's tail to the side. He comes closer, picks the grass, and then he feels something unpleasant. The guy managed to injure himself with grass. A girl approaches Tianyun and says that she did not expect that the young master would find the dragon tail grass so quickly. She calls the guy awesome. Tianyun receives a notification that he has completed a mission to accompany Yong Lion Zhu for herbs. He gained 10,000 experience points, 20 points to Yong Lion Zhu's favor, and 15 prestige points. The guy is happy that the mission is completed and everything went well. He says that he found what the girl was looking for and offers to go back. Suddenly, a golden light appears in the sky. Everyone is wondering what it could be. The guy receives an alert that he has a new mission, limited in time, the legacy of the dragon god. The duration is only three days. Reward, legacy of the dragon god. The guy chuckles, noticing that the mission is limited in time. He accepts the mission. The guy receives the following notification stating that if he exceeds the time limit, he will be deprived of life by the dragon god. The guy is shocked by this news. He doesn't understand why. Is it really all because of the grass? The guy notices to himself that the grass is really strange. Usually, dragon tail grass can't hurt anyone. Yan Lin looks at the guy questioningly. The guy notices something and thinks that something swallowed his blood when it stung him. He didn't notice it in time, but maybe that's what called the mission. The guy wonders if the dragon god really chose him. His luck is too good. A golden glow appears around the guy. The girl asks the young master what is going on. The system informs that the countdown of the mission begins. The guy accepts the circumstances. Tianyun realizes that he has only three days, and it seems that he has to go to the forest. He understands that if he delays, the dragon god will take his life. The guy turns around and tells Miss Yan that he needs to go. He hopes this herb can help them. The guy jumps up and rushes to the golden ray, which is directed into the thick of the forest. The girl does not have time to say anything, as the guy is already leaving. The guard says it looks like a treasure has appeared. He turns to Miss Yang and says that they will not be able to accompany her in the opposite direction. The second guard says that they plan to go see what is there, so he asks the girl to be careful when she comes back. The guard ran off to the same place as the guy, and Yan Lin didn't have time to say anything. Lao Jan, who was standing behind her, says that they need to leave this place as soon as possible. Tan is rushing through the whole forest. He thinks that Tian Yun definitely has some connection with the treasure. The second guard asks what they are going to do now. Tan say they should follow the guy and wait until he finds the treasure. Then they will ambush him and take everything for themselves. The guy receives an alert from the system that Tian Yun successfully deals with the Black Tiger and receives 6,000 experience points. And he also gets 500 crazy points. The guy receives a new notification. The system congratulates the young man that he has raised his level to the ninth stage of spiritual purification. The system congratulates that the Snow Wolf King has been promoted to the sixth stage of body cleansing. The guy pulls the grass out of his sleeve and notices that it glows brighter. It seems to him that they are approaching their destination. In this case, the guy jumps on the Snow Wolf King and continues to move forward. They are rushing forward together at full speed. The guy notices that the air in this place is completely different. He makes the assumption that they must be arriving at the right place soon. The guy sees something ahead of him. Tian Yun on the wolf jump right to where the golden ray from the sky appeared. Inside, the guy notices some strange place. The guy realizes that he got into the castle of the dragon god. He examines everything and notes that the situation is quite gloomy. There is only silence around and not a single person or living being. The guy tells the snow wolf that he can rest for now and lets him go. The wolf disappears and only a haze remains after him. Tian Yun climbs the stairs that lead inside the castle. He gets up and wonders what he can find inside. The guy pulls dragon grass out of his sleeve. It glows very strangely, so the guy assumes that this is the key that opens the door. The guy brings the grass to the door, on which strange round symbols were depicted, and the door suddenly opens. An image of a dragon appears on it, which also lights up with a golden glow. The guy goes inside and turns around, checking to see if anyone followed him. It was as if he felt someone's eyes on him. The guard noticed that Tian Yun was coming inside. At the same moment, they both moved forward in order to have time to go in and follow the young man further. The guy immediately noticed them, so he hid behind a post and waited for the right moment. The men went inside and decided to stop to look around and understand where Tian Yun had gone. Tian Yun comes out from behind the pillar and says that the guards decided to follow him after all, instead of accompanying Miss Yang. Tan looks at the reflection on the blade of his sword. He didn't expect the guy to be so lucky. The man assumes that the dragon tailgrass is the key to the dragon god's castle. 
For this reason alone, the man demands that Tian Yun give him the grass. If he gives it away, they will spare him and just leave. The guy tightens his grip on the grass in his hand and, grinning, asks if they will really spare him. The guards immediately rush into battle. They rush straight at the young man and one of them says that if Tian Yun doesn't want to get hurt, then he'd better do as he was told. The second man shouts that they are going to grab the guy. Tian Yun spreads his arms to the sides and uses an eagle claw. His hands immediately transform. In a matter of seconds, the guy grabs the man by the head with one hand. He just looks at him in shock and can't move. Then the guy grabs the second man by the head. And the last thing that is heard is a man's sigh. The guy receives an alert that he has dealt with Tan Yong Shen and received 2000 experience points, as well as 200 crazy points. The second notification of the system comes, which says that the guy dealt with Kai Wen and received 800 experience points, 80 crazy points. The guy scratches his head and thinks that despite the fact that he defeated both guards, he had nothing at all. Tian Yun walks through the palace and wonders if the one who gets the dragon tail grass will become the heir. He doesn't think it's that easy. The guy on the contrary is preparing for something dangerous and difficult. The guy stepped on a protruding tile and activated the trap. He froze, and the next second he jumped away from the place where the arrows were flying. The guy used the steps of the floating cloud to dodge all the arrows flying at him. The guy was able to reach the end, dodging all the arrows. He turned around and was convinced that it would not be so easy to get an inheritance. But a couple of arrows won't be able to stop him. The arrows were left behind the young man. He walked a little further, sighing with fatigue. Once in the new room, the guy noticed the statues of dragon warriors. The guy passes and looks at the huge statues of dragons. It seems to him that this place was very important to the dragons. But as the human race expanded its territory, the dragons were forced to leave this palace. One of the statues starts moving and swings a spear at the guy. The statue says that if the guy wants to go further, then he will first need to fight with her. The guy manages to react and jump up to avoid being hit. The spear strikes directly at the place where the young man was standing. Tian Yun climbs onto the spear and, thinking that this is just for him, climbs up it. The guy jumps up and strikes with magic directly on the head of the statue. He presses harder on her head and as a result, the statue begins to crumble into pieces. Another statue flies to the guy with a spear, which says that all trespassers should be punished. The guy understands that it will be very difficult to cope with another statue. Tian Yun activates invisibility and avoids being hit by the spear held by the dragon statue. The blow was struck again right at the place where Tian Yun was standing a few seconds ago. The guy receives a notification that he has perfect invisibility. Also, his speed and damage are doubled, which increases his chances of not only survival, but also victory. The next moment, the guy jumps up and activates the evaluation look. With the help of it, the guy sees that the dragon statue has 5,000 health points. Cultivation is at the fifth stage of spiritual purification, and the long spear of the dragon statue is a weapon of advanced quality and normal level. While the guy was looking through the characteristics with the help of an evaluation glance, another dragon statue came to life. Looking at the second animated dragon statue, the guy notices that the dragon statue has advanced quality and normal level protection. Combat capability, 4700. The guy pulls out his dagger and says he can handle both of them at once. He activates the aura of luck and strikes first at one dragon statue, and then switches to another and also destroys it into pieces. Both statues fall to the ground and begin to crumble. Tian Yun is sitting on one of these statues and is in a depressed state, because even with the activated aura of luck, he could not get anything. He expected at least some rewards. The guy shakes his hand, sighs and says it was a waste of his crazy glasses. But he spent a huge amount. The guy looks around and notices something interesting. He gets up from his seat and walks over to the huge dragon statue that was sitting on the throne. She was even bigger than the others. The guy is wondering if this statue is different or the same. There is a lot of pressure coming from her, but for some reason she does not move and does not try to attack him. The guy assumes that this statue is the legendary dragon god. He tries to evaluate it with his own eye, but he does not succeed. The stats just don't appear like they did with other opponents. Suddenly the statue opens its eyes. They burn red. The dragon god looks at the guy and calls him his descendant. The statue says that a very long time has passed and she finally waited for her descendant. 
The guy in his head grins and thinks about when he became his heir. The guy assumes that the dragon god mistook him for someone from the dragon race. The guy wonders who it could be. The dragon god points his hand at the guy and says that he needs to swallow the grass he brought and accept his legacy. This is the only way he will get incredible power. The guy looks at the grass and realizes that it is not just grass, but the grass of the dragon god. She only slightly resembles the dragon tail grass, so she activated the quest. The guy looks at the grass and thinks that he really will have to eat it to accept the legacy of the dragon god. But he is in no hurry to eat it, because he doubts. The grass seems to come to life, and it flies into the mouth of the young man. Seeing no other way out, the guy still swallows it, feeling very strange. Energy begins to envelop him. The guy feels a huge force filling his body. A dragon spirit appeared around him and began to wrap around his body. The body that could not cultivate due to the lack of Kai blood began to change. It was getting stronger. The guy receives a notification that he has successfully absorbed the grass of the dragon god. First he got 8,000 experience points, then 9,000 experience points, a second later even more experience, and so on several times. After gaining experience, the guy's hair grew back. He fell to his knees and thinks about how it all happened. Can he really be the heir? The guy looks at his hand and thinks that he has never seen his father, but he has heard that he was a strong cultivator. Perhaps, after all, because of him, the dragon god took him for his heir. Perhaps the line of kinship can be transmitted through him, and the herb of god could awaken her powers. The guy's head starts to glow. He involuntarily rises into the air and lets out a cry, either from pain or from misunderstanding. Tian Yun receives an alert. The system congratulates him on completing the mission, the successor of the dragon god. The guy received the dragon god's legacy, the secret art of the dragon god. He also received the dragon god's bloodline. A whole queue of men crowded around the dragon god's palace, trying to knock down the door and go inside. They all saw the golden glow and decided that this was a great opportunity to become stronger, and maybe get a treasure. One of the men says that a huge number of people came to this place. He asks if it would be beneficial for them to share all the treasure they found with everyone who came. One of the warriors replies that it depends on their capabilities, but first they need to open the door. The door began to open itself. A voice was heard in the crowd demanding to move back as soon as possible to stay safe. The man was worried that monsters could come out of the door. One of them suggested that the owner was coming out of the palace. He asks everyone to move away to let him pass. Everyone looks at the gate and sees someone really coming out of there. Tian Yun walked out onto the square without deactivating the appraisal gaze. He looks at the men and sees the characteristics of each. Someone has the fourth stage of spiritual purification, and someone has the eighth. The guy sees that the cultivation of all the gathered people is below the core condensation stage, because the level of the illusory mountain is too low. He is surrounded by a lot of people. If a guy hasn't learned to fly, then he probably won't be able to leave quietly. One of the men demands that the guy stop. He says he cares who he is, but if he's going to leave, he has to give him the treasure. The guy looks at him menacingly and says that if he wants the treasure so much, then let him try to come up and take it. A man is interested in how Tian Yun was able to enter the palace. The guy walks past him and says that he entered with the help of his legs. Tian Yun says that if a man wants something, then he should rely only on himself. The crowd screamed. The men began to get indignant because the guy was grinning at them. They demand that the guy give them the treasure as soon as possible. One of the men says that he will not be able to escape from them. The guy asks why he should give away the treasure, even if he has it. He is interested in what is the merit of all these gathered men. Tian Yun folds his arms over his chest and repeats that if they don't let him leave, they will regret it. One of the men tries to attack and asks Tian Yun to let him see what he is capable of. The silver-gloved man's hand is stopped by Tian Yun's grip. The man looks at him with horror, not understanding how he could get caught so easily. The guy freezes his hand and blows it into ice fragments with one blow. The man falls on his back. One of the men asks to look at the guy and says that his spiritual weapon is at least of advanced quality. Even the weapons of these men do not achieve such an effect. They all surround him and tell him that he should give up all his treasure. Otherwise, he will regret it. The guy looks discontentedly at all those gathered and thinks that they are crazy. After all, he hurt the hand of one of them, and they didn't take a step back. In that case, if so many people charge at the same time, it will be very dangerous. The guy raises his hand and warns for the last time all the assembled men. Tian Yun says that if they don't listen to him, they will end up in another world. The guy uses a hidden weapon, a pear-colored needle. All the bandits immediately rushed into battle. One of them suggests just dealing with the guy and taking all his treasures. Tian Yun activates the crazy glasses mode. 
He uses a hidden weapon in battle, a pear blossom needle. Needles cut into the bodies of all opponents. As a result, half just falls to the ground. The guy receives an alert that he has dealt with Liu Yun and received 3,800 experience points, one recovery pill, and 80 crazy points. The next notification was that he had dealt with Long Tian Yan and was receiving 15,000 experience points, one double experience pill, and 600 crazy points. Another notification was that Tian Yan had received 8,700 experience points, one wind chasing sword, and 200 crazy points. Thus, he constantly received alerts during the battle. The bodies of the defeated opponents lay on the ground. The survivors fled, shouting that they had met a demon, the very incarnation of the devil. They begged for mercy. Tianyun receives an alert according to which the guy has raised his level of basic condensation to the third stage. The guy looks at the hidden weapon of the pear blossom needle and thinks that it turned out to be useful after all. Only he is sorry that it is disposable. The guy throws away the hidden weapon and says that with its help he can increase his level much faster. The weapon falls on the stairs. Three days later, people gathered in the city. One man shouted that 10,000 coins of gold was a lot. He asks why they can't just try and see if they can beat the young man. Another man says that if he wants to try, then let him go alone, as it is very risky. They heard that Tianyun is very ruthless, so the man is scared and he does not want to leave the world of the living. A passerby from the crowd heard that Tianyun had slain everyone who was in the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. There were so many victims that a river even formed there. And he also heard that the guy took all the treasures. His interlocutor says that if they grab the guy, then all the treasures according to the idea should be theirs. The man replies that without the main condensation of the cultivation stage, they will not be able to grab the guy. The guy walks into town hiding behind a straw hat with a brim. He should return to Tianzai Castle and assess the situation. Moreover, there is little time left before the discovery of the ancient ruins. The guy walks past Yong Lin. The girl turns around and notices the young gentleman. The guy takes off his hat and says that their meeting is a great success. He asks if the dragon tail grass has helped to get rid of the disease. The girl says that this can only temporarily suppress her. If they want to remove the disease completely, then they need another herb. The guy asks if the dragon tail grass could be powerless in such a situation. He is interested in what can help in this case. An older man approaches them and says that a soul-restoring herb can help. The man says that the grass of the dragon's tail causes a blazing heat, so they need the support of the grass that returns the soul for maximum effect. If you combine them together, the effect will be amazing. The guy thinks about it. He tries to remember about the properties of the herb that returns the soul. Tian Yun then says that this herb can really improve the effect of dragon tail grass. But if there is too much of it, then it is worth waiting for damage to the soul from it. The guy asks what state the patient's psyche is in. The girl says that the patient is actually her father. The girl says that until recently it was heavily cultivated. At the moment, he is in a coma and occasionally wakes up. The guy says that if everything is so neglected, then the grass of the dragon's tail will be enough. In this case, it is dangerous to use a herb that returns the soul, since there is a possibility that a person will remain in a coma forever. The man begins to get angry and asks if this is really Tian Yun trying to say that the treatment he invented is dangerous. The man says that he is a third-class alchemist. His name is Kong Lion. He asks which sect Tian Yun came from. The guy asks how his mistake is related to where the young man came from. It doesn't really matter. The man raises his voice and, pointing with his hand at the guy, asks what qualifications a person should have in order to condemn an alchemist of the third class. Tian Yun says that if Miss Yang's father's situation is really difficult, then he has no right to use the soul-restoring herb. The man gets even angrier and asks the guy to shut up and not talk nonsense, because he is a third-grade alchemist. The guy turns to Miss Yang and says that he is also an alchemist, so she can entrust her father to him. He adds that in this case it will be possible to cure the father completely, using only the grass of the dragon's tail. The girl thinks and bites her finger. She agrees and, turning to Master Lai, asks them to continue their journey. The guy gets an alert. The system offers a new mission, to cure the illness of the head of the Yang family. Reward for the task, 10,000 experience points. Also 100 points to the location of the head of the Yang family. 30 points to the location of Tian Lin says, 20 prestige points. The man asks the girl if she really believes that it is possible to cure her father with the help of a single dragon tail herb. Kong Lion says that in this case he will go with them, as he wants to see how the guy will try to cure her father. The man immediately says that if the guy does not succeed, then the girl will pay double the amount for treatment. The guy asks the man not to worry, because if his plan turns out to be a failure, he will pay as much as Kong Lion wishes. It's dawn outside. 
Tian Yun came to Miss Yan Lin's palace. He says that the girl's father cultivated too recklessly, but everything will be fine with the dragon tail grass. The guy examines the man and notices that he has a type of aggressive cultivation that can lead to soul damage. In this case, there is no magic pill. He asks the girl how they treated the man before. Kong Lion says the guy doesn't even know that, but calls himself an alchemist. He says that they use dragon tail grass to make pills. Then the man touches his beard and says that there is a way to make the medicine more effective, using the herb that returns the soul. The guy is not surprised why the man did not get better. He says Kong Lion doesn't even know how to use dragon tail grass properly. The man is angry at him, but he is interrupted by the voice of Tian Yun who asks Miss Yang to forgive him for the following actions. The girl doesn't understand why the guy is apologizing. The guy brings the needle to the man's finger. He tells them that in order to cure the father completely, they have to mix the patient's blood with dragon tail grass before they make the pill. The type of this condition is very rare, so not many alchemists know about this method. He adds that it is more dangerous for the patient. The man starts to get angry. He asks who told this information to the guy. The guy asks if he mentioned Kong Lion. He wonders why the man is so angry. Then the guy asks the man not to bother him while he makes the pill. If any incident happens, it will be Kong Lion who will have to bear the responsibility. A strange flash occurs. She was also visible on the street. The guy uses magic to create a pill. It seems strange to a man that a guy doesn't need an oven to create a pill. He also wonders if the guy could have a spiritual fire. Tian Yun raises his hands, which hold the future pill. Magic envelops him. The guy receives an alert that he has successfully created a second level pill, the Dragon Tail Pill. He also gained a thousand experience points and 50 skill points. The guy throws the pill to the girl and asks Yan Lin to give the pill to her father. The girl obeys him. The guy asks the man if he has anything he would like to say. The man chuckles and says that first he needs to look at the result, because the patient has not woken up yet. The girl gives her father a pill and he opens his eyes the next second. Yan Lin is very happy about his father's awakening. She excitedly shouts that he is awake, and then asks how he feels. The man turns his head and says he feels much better. He also notes that the pill created by the alchemist is really good. The girl helps the man to stand up and says that the pill was created by a young master. The man thanks the young man. He says that being such a talented alchemist at such a young age is very impressive. The guy folds his arms at his chest and says that he is very glad that the pill was able to help him after all. The man looks at Tian Yun. Initially, he thought that the young man was a disciple of Kong Lion. Kong Lion says that since the head of the family has woken up, he will leave and is heading out. The guy is happy that the alchemist calmly leaves without complicating the situation. Tian Yun receives a notification from the system that he has completed the mission and received 10,000 experience points, 100 points to the location of the head of the Yang family. 30 points to the location of Yang Lin and 20 prestige points. The guy asks what the man is holding out to him. Is it really an alchemist's furnace? The man asks Brother Li to accept this gift may help in the future. The guy says that this is not necessary, since he just did what he knows how to do. He says it's a saint rank furnace, it's hard to buy even for a large amount of money. The man says that the oven is indeed a holy object of low quality. They don't have anything else to give. There are no alchemists in their family, so the man would not want this purple alchemical furnace to stand idle. He asks the young man to accept her. Tian Yun says it's too expensive. The man says that they wanted to find a reliable alchemist who could be trusted with the furnace. And now since Tian Yun helped him and his family, the furnace should belong to him. The man thinks Brother Li deserved it. He hopes that this will help the young man in the future. Tian Yun folds his arms and agrees to accept the oven. He still feels that he is taking advantage of kind people, so he decides to stay in their house for a while. Tian Yun says that if they buy him materials, he will be able to make pills for the man, so he will feel comfortable accepting the gift. A few days later, the girl stood in front of the table and marveled at how many pills Tian Yun had made. The guy receives an alert that he has increased his condensation level to the fourth stage. The guy is happy that he has raised his level again. Suddenly a girl runs into their room and, addressing Miss Yang, says that something terrible has happened. She asks the girl to go to the front hall and look. In the last few days, the head of the Yang family has been ill, but he has recently recovered. Therefore, people came to him to congratulate him on his recovery. The guests brought a gift, and they asked the man to accept them. The man thanks the head of the Wang family and the head of the Zhen family. He says thank you to them for their kindness. He is grateful that they paid him a visit. The guest says it's not worth it. They came for another question. They hope that the head of the Yang family will be able to help them. At this time, the guy and Miss Yang Lin were passing by the men talking. 
The guy and the girl hear the head of the Yang family saying that he is ready to do everything in his power. The head of the Wang family says that he actually heard that the Yang family has a saint rank alchemy furnace. He asks if he can borrow it for a while. The girl stands next to her father and thinks about who could have revealed this information. The man chuckles and asks the head of the Wang family to stop joking. He asks how his family can have such a valuable item. They're just glad they have a few spiritual weapons. The head of the Zhen family drinks tea, and the head of the Wang family rises from his seat, knocking on the table and tells the man to stop pretending, because he has long since introduced his people into their house. His information must be accurate. The head of the Wang family says that recently the King Xuan family spread the information that the brother of the head of the Yang family left the world of the living right on the street. The man asks if the head really thinks that their family still has support. The head of the Wang family asks the man to be wise and tells him to give him the sacred alchemical furnace. The man uses his strength to lift the table and says that the head of the Yang family should give him his daughter for his son. The man throws the table aside and says that otherwise there will be no more Yang family in this city. The head of the Zhen family says that this coffin is prepared for the head of the Yang clan. He adds that a man chooses whether he wants to live or not. The girl is amazed by the news that her uncle is no longer alive. Her father was in a hurry to break into the central area of transparency. After the news that the Yang family no longer has an expert in the field of condensation, their family will definitely be attacked by others. The girl calls her father, who in a moment became gloomy and lowered his head, trying not to look at his daughter. The head of the Yang family gets up from his seat and, pointing at the door, tells the men to leave and leave his daughter alone. The head of the Zhen family says that this is impossible. The head of the Wang family rises and demands that the alchemy furnace be given to him. Maybe he'll think about keeping them alive. The man asks them to think. The head of the Yang family asks if he is considered stupid. He understands that even if they give up the oven, they still won't be released. The head of the Zhen clan says that if they know the outcome, then they can no longer waste time. Their family has only one choice. The man asks to give him the oven. Then he will be able to guarantee a painless departure to another world. Tian Yun shows the alchemy furnace and asks if the men are talking about it. They will immediately recognize the holy quality item. The head of the Zhen family goes straight to the guy and asks who he is. The guy replies that he is a guest of the Yang family. The head of the Yang family stands behind him. He says that the young master should leave and not interfere, since this matter does not concern him. The guy turns around and smiles. He says he can't leave knowing that the Yang family is in danger. The head of the Wang family mocks the man, asking him how he could give such an important family item to some child. The head of the Wang family asks if the man wanted him to bring his daughter and leave with her. The head of the Zhen family says that he gives the guy a chance. He asks him to give up the alchemy furnace. Since he is not a member of the Yang family, then they will let him live. The guy spreads his hands and, smiling, asks if they really think that he is so easy to believe people like them. The guy says that if they leave now, he will save their lives, then instantly become enraged after saying the phrase. The head of the Wang family says he would like to leave the young man's body unharmed, but now he's going to fulfill his wish. The guy is blocked by the head of the Yang family with his hand. He tells Brother Lai to quickly pick up Zhu Er and leave with her. He's going to hold them off as long as possible. The guy smiles and asks the head of the Yang family not to worry, as he will deal with them. The head of the Wang family demands that the guy stop being arrogant and let his abilities be seen. The man is going to attack with a fist of heavenly power. The guy uses floating cloud steps and successfully evades attacks. Then, dodging all the attacks, he comes closer to the man and strikes him in the face. The head of the Wang family flies back. The head of the Zhen family appears ahead. He tries to attack the guy in a jump with his spiritual weapon. The guy notices it. The man uses a wind protection strip. Miss Yang screams, as she is very worried about the young man. The man also screams, hoping that he is alive. The guy manages to repel the attack with a dagger. Subsequently, the man's sword blade breaks. The man doesn't understand what just happened. And the guy is smiling contentedly, hiding behind his dagger. Tian Yun then activates his ice glove. He hits her right in the man's stomach. The head of the Zhen family plunges into the thickness of the ice. His icy body falls to the ground. A man with his daughter looks at all this and notices that Brother Li is very strong. The guy uses the technique of absorbing a magnificent star right on the ice block in which the head of the Zhen family is imprisoned. The guy receives notifications that he is gradually gaining experience points while using the technique of absorbing a magnificent star. The head of the Wang family cannot get up from the floor. He is in pain and wonders what kind of devilish technique is attacking him. 
he asks the young man who he really is. The guy, smiling, looks at his opponents and says that they don't need to know who he is. The guy stops using the technique and says that all this is the result of their greed. The head of the Wang family looks at the guy. He thinks that he looks young, but his cultivation is already stronger than that of a man. He wants to find out who the guy really is. The man asks the guy to stop and says that he has a rare treasure. He begins to offer to let them go in exchange for the treasure. But the guy interrupts the man and, using the immortal flame, creates a flame on his finger and tells the man to take his rare treasure to the afterlife if he can. The man from the Wang clan opens his eyes in horror and says in a panic that the guy can't just deal with him. Tianyun receives a notification that he has defeated the head of the Zhen family and received 40,000 experience points. He also received a soul capture technique in a human level martial art field, a thousand crazy points. Then comes another notification that the guy defeated the head of the Wang family and received 40,000 experience points. The tyrant cloud technique of a human level martial art, a thousand crazy points. Tianyun opens the system with panels and looks at his characteristic. At the moment, he has the 24th level, the 4th stage of core condensation, 457,281 points out of 60,000, 28,728 crazy points, and 70 prestige points. The guy has a cultivation technique, the art of the Northern Abyss God, the Dragon God technique. Among his skills are, Great Star Absorption Technique, Floating Cloud Steps, 10,000 Swords. Of the weapons the guy has, Ice Gloves, Scarlet Dagger, Wind Pursuit Dagger, Heavenly Wind Dagger. Among the guy's equipment you can see, Snow Wolf Combat Boots, Heavenly God Armor, Shadow Cloak. And of the divine abilities he possesses, a crazy mode, an aura of luck. The guy also has accessories, making a hammer of god, a bracelet of power, a ring of power, a belt of power. Of the items the guy has, recovery pills in the amount of 20 pieces, dual experience pills in the amount of 8 pieces, a gift set of the 31st level. The guy thinks that he still needs a lot of experience points to raise the level. The man turns to Lee's brother and wants to ask him a question. The guy responds immediately. The guy turns around and asks if there are any more enemies. The girl looks at him with embarrassment and says that there are no more enemies. The head of the Yang family says that their family doesn't have many enemies. Only these two are a man from the Wang and Zhen families who wanted to get the alchemy furnace. The man says that since he is still ill, these heads of families decided to come to him to force him to give up his own daughter. The guy grunts, puzzled. He still counted on a huge number of opponents. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps is heard. Someone is approaching their house. Judging by the trampling, a lot of people are approaching them. A man with blue hair comes into the house and says that the guy is so young, but already strong enough to defeat two heads of families. It really shocks him. A man walks into the back of the house. Along with him came a huge number of guards. Tian Yun doesn't recognize the man. He chuckles and asks who the man is and why he came to this house. The man says that he is the co-head of the Yuan Ping Heavenly Phoenix Association. The guy notices that Kong Lion is standing behind the man. He looks at the guy with displeasure. The guy smiles. He asks again what the Heavenly Phoenix Association is. It seems to the guy that this time Kong Lion came with reinforcements. At the moment, the young man is not going to let him go anywhere. Tian Yun used an appraising eye. He saw that the man was indeed the co-head of the Heavenly Phoenix Association, Yuan Ping. He had the fourth stage of core condensation. Next to the man was the deacon of the Heavenly Phoenix Association, Liu, who was in the third stage of core condensation. Also with them was Kong Lion, who was in the seventh stage of spiritual purification. He was standing not far from everyone, showing his displeasure. Besides them, there was Subordinate A, who was in the third stage of spiritual purification, and Subordinate B, who was in the fourth stage of spiritual purification. Yun Ping turns to his younger brother and says that he will be glad if he becomes part of their sect. It would be great if he joined them. Tian Yun asks everyone to come in. He says that he is the one who has to solve all the cases. The head of the Yang family says that he understood everything. The guy guesses that all these people came for the same reason as the previous heads of families. Apparently, they cannot allow the case to end this way. The guy stares intently at the guests who have entered and says that he is not interested in conflicts with other families. The man asks Tian Yun not to rush to reject them. He says that the holy quality alchemical furnace is a strong item. Yun Ping says that the guy will only be able to keep the alchemy furnace if he joins their heavenly phoenix hall. The guy asks if all these people who have come just want to take away a thing of holy quality. The man rubs his mustache and says that they really want to take away a thing of holy quality. Therefore, Tian Yun must either join them or leave the world of the living. 
The man hopes that the guy will make the right decision. Tianyun clenches his fist, which swirls magic. He says that all the people from the Heavenly Phoenix Hall are exactly the same. The guy is angry because they always use not the most honest ways to achieve their goal. Yun Ping asks Tianyun not to provoke a conflict, just because he managed to defeat the head of the Wang family and the Zhen family. All the trained fighters who came with Yun Ping take out their weapons and run forward, intending to attack the guy at once, and together, they hope to defeat him with the help of a huge number of fighters. The guy's eyes glow with blue fire. He looks at the attackers and speaks negatively about them. He is very angry because they make too high demands. He decides to use the ice glove and crazy glasses mode. It also activates the dual experience card. The guy swings his ice glove, about to attack, and shouts terrible things about hell, trying to scare his rivals. But the opponents continue to attack. Tianyun jumps up, swings and uses his glove to launch an ice attack at his enemies. The men were confused for a while, not expecting to see such power. And then they started trying to dodge the attacks. But the warriors do not have time to do anything and freeze in a huge block of ice, in the center of which is Yun Ping. They're all frozen and can't move. The guy stops right in front of the block. He gets up and stares at the man, who asks him if the guy is a demon since he has such a powerful force. The guy replies that he really is a demon who deals with such terrible people as this man. The guy uses the great star absorption technique and reaches his hand towards Yun Ping's face. He just looks at her with horror and can't do anything. Every second, the guy starts receiving messages that he has earned a certain number of points. The number of points became more and more every time. The guy uses his powers and breaks the ice block in which all his rivals are located. The block splits into pieces, and more than half of the fighters crumble into ice fragments. Tianyun receives a notification that he has dealt with Deacon Liu, and received 15,000 experience points, a double experience card and 800 crazy points. The next notification says that Tianyun defeated Kong Lion and received 10,000 experience points, 500 crazy points. The new message said that he had defeated subordinate and subordinate B, receiving 13,000 experience points, 600 crazy points. The guy stands directly over Yun Ping, who is lying on the floor and looks at Tianyun with horror. The man asks how it is possible to be so strong. He is interested in who Tianyun is. The guy presses his foot on Yun Ping's face and replies that it doesn't matter since he won't stay alive anyway. The man screams and then says that if he takes the man's life, he will be hunted by people from the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. Yun Ping is confident that the leader of the association will avenge him. Wherever the guy goes, they'll find him. The guy takes off his mask and says that he will not mind if they look for him, because for him this is an ordinary situation. The man looks at the guy with horror as he recognized him as the same Tian Yun from Tian Zai Castle. The man silently presses his foot harder on the man's face. The next second, he receives an alert that he has defeated Yun Ping and received 60,000 experience points, a double experience card, a sword technique with a heavenly feather and 1,400 crazy points. The system congratulates the guy on the fact that he has successfully moved to the fifth stage of core condensation. The man is standing right in front of the head of the Yong family and Miss Yong. He says that he is very sorry that the two of them can no longer stay in their house, since the Heavenly Phoenix Hall, and the families of those two men will arrive very soon. Miss Yong says she knows. She turns to Brother Lai and says that he should be careful not to get caught by the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. It's too dangerous. The guy folds his hands, bows and says that he will leave this place right now so as not to get caught by the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix. Miss Yong looks at the guy and thinks that he is most likely from a strong clan or sect. She is very sorry because she can't ask him to stay. Such a strong person in the clan would be useful. The guy stares at the girl and then says goodbye to her, promising that they will meet again if fate allows. Tian Yun arrives at Tian Xuan Palace. The Lord and all the elders are sitting in the hall. They're discussing something. The second elder turns to the Lord of the Palace and says that the ancient ruins are opening. She asks when the Lord will determine the last participant. The Lord sighs and says they will leave it empty. She wants to wait for Tian Yun to return. The second elder says that the guy is being pursued by the creators of the God Clan and the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. The woman says that if they let him come back, they will make the people from the Heavenly Phoenix Hall their enemies. Also, if they give the guy a place, then most likely they will have problems of a huge scale. The Lord turns to the second elder and asks if she really thinks that Tianyun will intentionally cause them problems. The Lord is sure that Tianyun punished these people because they behaved unfairly. The second elder says that even if this is the case, he had to endure. They can't let him speak negatively about the big clans. He should understand that. 
an excited girl runs into the hall and tells the Lord that she must leave, since people from the creators of the God Clan and the Heavenly Spirit sect have come. The Lord looks at the girl and opens his eyes in surprise. She gets up, about to go out and meet the people from the creators of the God Clan and the Heavenly Spirit sect. The Lord thinks that the arrival of people from the creators of the God Clan and the Heavenly Spirit sect at such a time is definitely not something good. The woman thinks that the people from the creators of the God Clan and the Heavenly Spirit sect came most likely because of Tian Jun. The woman stares ahead. The next second, she says emphatically that they need to meet them. Two crowds gathered in front of Tian Zai Palace. The Lord stands in front of his people and asks if she can find out why the leaders of the two clans have come. The woman says she is sure that the ancient ruins should open only in a week. The man interrupts her and, addressing Lord Shi, says that they have come to demand that they give up their places for the ancient ruins. The man reports that the disciple of the palace and Tian Yun sent their disciple, as well as the Lord of the Pavilion of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall, to the world of the dead. They should compensate. The man is Kian Yun Chen, the master of the creators of the God Clan. Behind him is a man in a blindfold, whose name is Jia Jai Yun. He is a master of the Heavenly Spirit sect. The second elder says that Yi Tianyun has already announced that he is no longer their disciple. She says the guy was just an outside student, so they can't be held responsible for his actions outside the yard. Kian asks what kind of jokes are these. It can't help but concern them just because Tianyun said he was no longer a disciple of Tian Zai Castle. The second elder wants to say something else, but the Lord interrupts her. The woman points her hand at her to stop saying anything. Lord says that from what she heard, it was his disciple who provoked Tian Yun and caused trouble by calling his weapon fake. Lord adds that when he challenged him to a duel, Kian's disciple used a sneak attack. The woman says that only a Kian disciple can blame himself for his own demise on the battlefield. The man stares at the Lord and asks who can confirm her words to prove the truth. Kian says they only wanted to take Tian Yun away to ask a couple of questions, but he dealt with everyone they sent. The man could never have imagined that Tian Zai Castle would behave so recklessly. The Lord is enveloped in ice magic. She asks if the man thinks she is naive enough to believe his words. Kian raises his hand up and tells them to leave, as he does not want to give his slots to anyone. The man turns to the Lord again and says that since she won't let him grab Tian Yun, she shouldn't blame them for what happens next. The Lord asks what the Kian sect master intends to do. She says that Tian Eleven Palace may not be strong enough to stand up to the two clans, but if they corner them, they will suffer. The man chuckles and asks if the woman is talking about asking her disciple who married Kin Xu in palace to bring reinforcements. He then speculates if the woman is talking about asking their ancestor to come out of closed cultivation. The Lord begins to get angry. She stares at the man and tries to say something, but is interrupted by the man behind Kian. This man recalls that he told Kian Xu and Castle not to interfere in this matter. The girl who jumped out behind the woman turns to the pavilion lord of the main administration of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall and says that as merchants, they should not interfere in the affairs of the clan. The head of the management of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall says that usually they should not interfere, but the disciple of the Tian Zai Palace dealt with many of their people, so they decided to make an exception. The man says that on this day, Tian Zai Castle will have to give them an explanation and settle this case. The man's name is Zion Tianya. He is the lord of the pavilion of the general administration of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. Kian says they are willing to forget this problem only if they agree to their two conditions. The man smiles madly and says that they will have to give them all their slots of ancient ruins. The second condition is that the lord of Shi Castle will have to marry Kian. Otherwise, Tian Zai Castle will be destroyed on the same day. A woman is embarrassed and speaks negatively about a man. He made her very angry, so she restrains herself in words. Suddenly, someone appears behind Kian and shouts that they can see if the man will really be worthy to marry the Lord of Shi Castle. The second elder frowns at the guy and asks if he is looking for death by coming to the castle at such a time. Zion Tian chuckles and says that they were looking for the guy everywhere, but they never expected him to come to them. Kian turns to the guy and asks if he should call him brave or just a stupid boy. The guy speaks negatively about cyanide. He is very unhappy with the fact that a man wants to marry the lord of their castle. He asks me to stop him. The man begins to grin. He says whether the guy believes it or not, but he can handle it with one finger. It won't be difficult for him. The man turns his gaze and hears someone asking if he is really going to take his life. The lord looks menacingly at the man and says that she will try. A woman is enveloped in magic. The man, pointing at the woman, turns to her and says that he recognizes that she is strong but he does not believe that she thinks she can defeat them all. Kyan shouts to his fighters to grab the guy. 
All the fighters who stood behind him immediately prepare to attack. The Lord took out her sword and rushed forward, shouting that now they would have a chance to check it out. Gia pulls out her sword, also preparing to attack. Kyan chuckles and also gets into a fighting stance. The men are trying to attack the Lord. A woman releases a stream of energy, because of which men have to retreat. The girls from the Tianzai Palace run up to the Lord and ask if the woman is okay after the attack. The woman waves it off and says she's fine. She commands everyone to help Tian Yun. Tian Yun is surrounded by a huge number of fighters with weapons at the ready. The guy looks around gloomily. The Lord brings his hand to his face and thinks that Tian Yun is surrounded, so she must help him. He is in great danger, and a woman can't just stand still and look at her student. Kyan looks at the Lord and says that if she moves again, he does not guarantee that his people will spare the guy in their palace. The man stares at the Lord and says he will give her another chance. She should give him all the slots in the ancient ruins and marry him. But now, in addition, he wants them to give the mysterious treasure of Tanzai Castle, which is rumored. If the woman does not agree, then the man will deal with all the inhabitants of Tanzai Castle and take him away on his own. One of the elders pulls out her sword and says that, as expected, the people from the creators of the God Clan and the Heavenly Phoenix Hall are looking for a mysterious treasure, and Tianyun is only their cover, serving to hide their true motives. In the first place they always had a mysterious treasure. The man grins and confirms the woman's words. He says they have no other choice anyway. If they refuse, they will deal with them. He promises to destroy Tianzai Castle. After saying these words, the Lord tightens his grip on the sword in his hand. But after a few seconds, suddenly the sword falls from her hands to her feet. The woman looks at her opponents and says that if she agrees to their demands only after they release Tian Yun. Kyan says that Tian Yun is very lucky that the Lord of Shi Castle decided to go so far to save him. She is clearly willing to do anything for her student. The woman is even ready to marry Kyan and give the mysterious treasure of Tian Zai Castle. All these actions can lead to terrible consequences. Although the guy does not know what kind of treasure Tianzai Castle hides, but since these three strong clans have joined together, then it must be something amazing and strong. Tianyun no longer needs his aunt to protect him. Now he can stand up for himself and protect his aunt. The guy activates the Crazy Points mode, the Tenfold Magnification card, the Double Crazy Points card, the Double Skill card. The guy also uses five pills of double experience and activates the Aura of Luck. Now he is fully prepared. Tian Yun attacks all the fighters who came with Kyan. He sweeps and strikes very fast. All the fighters just fall without having time to react. The men try to attack Tian Yun, but they fail because they are too slow. Some stopped, thinking to retreat for a while, after they saw that the guy was stronger even than their elders. The guy strikes again and asks to let him see who dares to encroach on his aunt and take the treasures of Tianzai Castle. Tianyun smiles and says that he will not allow anyone to pluck even a stalk from the grass that grows near Tianzai Castle, not to mention some treasures. Many residents of Tianzai are asking if it is true that Tianyun is now fighting with people from the creators of the God Clan and the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix. They don't understand when the guy managed to become so strong. Someone assumes that the guy had a happy meeting with someone very strong and powerful. The Lord looks at the young man and realizes that with this speed, power and weapons, the guy will be stronger even than their elders. So the fight will not be easy. Tian Yun uses a fighting technique, the Ten Swords return to origin. His dagger is wrapped in strange magic. Then the guy raises his fingers and puts them in front of his forehead. Behind him, a lot of daggers appear, shrouded in magic. The guy shouts loudly, 10,000 swords return to origin, and they all fly straight at the opponents. The guy receives a notification that he defeated the elder of the Heavenly Spirit Clan and received 12,000 experience points, 2,000 crazy points. Then the guy receives an alert that he has defeated the elder of the Heavenly Spirit Clan and received 12,000 experience points and 2,000 crazy points. Another announcement was that Tianyun had defeated the elder of the God Clan creators and received 13,000 experience points, 5,000 to craft skill, and 2,000 crazy points. Kyan looks at all this with horror and thinks that this guy's cultivation is not at the 7th or 8th stages of spiritual purification but at the third or fourth stages of basic condensation. He wonders how they got it so wrong. The man shouts to his fighters to stop Tian Yun as soon as possible. All the men fall while taking the attacks. Zion Tian Yun looks with horror at his fighters, who are only getting smaller every second. Tian Yun is notified that he has defeated the elder of the Heavenly Phoenix Hall and received 12,000 experience points, as well as 2,000 crazy points. Zion Tian is going to attack. He shouts at Tian Yun not to be too cocky. Tian Yun receives a new notification. 
the system congratulates him that he has successfully moved to the sixth stage of condensation. The man uses all his strength and creates a hurricane tornado that is heading towards Tianyun. But the guy manages to bounce back. Tianyun is in the air and asks if the man is the head of the pavilion lord. He speaks negatively about everyone who came from the Hall of the Heavenly Phoenix. The guy says he will do them a favor and send them to the World of the Dead. The guy activates the crazy damage mode. He also activates invisibility and jumps off the column. Tian Yun attacks Xian Tian. The man was hit right in the stomach and began to fall forward. The guy receives an alert that he has defeated Xian Tian Yun and received 40,000 experience, as well as combat equipment, extreme brilliance. At the same time, 1,300 alchemy skill points and 3,000 crazy points are now available to him. The guy lands on the ground and notices that a huge number of small daggers are flying at him. The lord jumps out in front of Tian Yun. She deflects all the blades flying at him and tells him to be careful. The man chuckles, looking at all this. The lord says that Kyan is the leader of the clan, but uses a hidden weapon to attack with a hidden attack. She asks if it's shameful. The guy looks at his aunt with admiration. He thinks that none of this matters, because she has always remained on his side. The woman turns around, looking at Tian Yun and says that he has finally decided to return. The guy says he never wanted to leave, but he couldn't let Tian Zai Palace get into trouble because of him. The woman is silent at first, and then says that she should take care of him. If something happens to him, she won't be able to live anymore. Kyan looks at all this and speaks negatively about the scene that Lord and Tian Yun staged. The man shouts to his fighters to deal with everyone. He wants to see how the two of them can save the entire Tian Xuan castle from their attacks. The man shouts cruel words and tells his fighters not to let anyone from Tian Xuan castle stay alive. The Lord says that the man should try to hit her if he dares. She is trying to shame him. The woman runs to attack and tells Kyan Yan to go to the world of the dead. But some kind of warrior aspires to a woman. The Lord has to repel the attack with his sword. Jian asks the man why he doesn't hit first. Jia then turns to the Lord and says that he will let her see the entire Tian Xuan castle covered in blood. A woman recognizes a man from the Heavenly Spirit Clan. Tian Yun uses his strength to put on an ice glove and rush forward, attacking opponents with freezing. All of them are covered with ice and cannot move. The guy looks menacingly at his opponents and says he wants to see who else dares to touch Tian Zai castle. All opponents are frozen. They look at Tian Yun with horror, not daring to move, because the ice does not allow. Lord wants to know what's going on. She wonders if it's all because of Tian Yun. She admits that he is really strong. The woman turns around and notices that behind her in the ice block is Jia, who cannot move. The ice block in which the man was begins to crumble into fragments. Then it completely collapses and Tian Yun is seen behind it. The guy receives an alert that he defeated the leader of the Heavenly Spirit Clan, Jia Yun and received 40,000 experience points, a spirit freeze pill, and 3,000 crazy points. The guy turns to his aunt and says that with him in this place, no one can harm Tian Xuan Castle. He says we need to defeat everyone. The woman turns around and addresses the guy. Then she notices that someone in the ice block is still alive and is trying to get out. She understands that it is not yet time to relax. The ice block in which the Kyan was located is being destroyed. The man is very angry. He stares at the woman. The woman rushes forward, raising her arms to attack, and says she will deal with Kyan Yun Chen. The man completely comes out of the ice block, but a lord runs at him with a sword. She speaks negatively about him and is going to strike. Suddenly, a huge hand appears behind the woman and asks how she dared. The woman freezes in place. The woman gets hit hard. The whole place where she was standing is covered with strong magic. Tian Yun looks at it in horror and tries to shout to his aunt. He runs up to the place where the blow was struck and picks up his aunt's body. The guy hands her a restorative pill in his hand and tells her to eat it. The woman's body is covered with wounds. She asks the young man not to worry and says that she is fine. Someone appears in the square. Everyone turns to look. The guy feels a very strong aura. Tian Yun wonders who it could be. He stares intently at the man and in the next second activates the evaluation gaze. The guy looks at the characteristics of the man and sees that he is the boss. His name is Qin Tian Long. It is in the ninth stage of core condensation. He has a spiritual armor of excellent quality. He also owns the technique of the earth rank, the palm of heaven. His combat ability is 80,000 points. The guy is happy that another boss has finally appeared. He is wondering what reward he will get for defeating him. The guy receives an alert that a new mission is available to him, to protect Tian Xuan Castle and defend against enemy invasion. The system asks if the guy is willing to accept this mission. 
reward for the task, 100,000 experience points, 20,000 gold coins, one lottery ticket, 100 points to the location of everyone in the castle. The guy smiles grimly and says that he will definitely accept the task. He's getting ready for the next fight. Kyan throws himself at the feet of the boss, calling him an ancestor. He says Tanyun froze everyone. He doesn't even know what kind of martial art the guy uses. The man says they can't move at all. And he also says that half of the fighters have already lost their lives. Kin Tian Long speaks negatively about all the fighters. He says they can't even capture the little Tian Xuan palace. In the end, he has to do everything himself. Kyan admits that he and his men failed Kin Tian Long. He asks for his forgiveness. Kin Tian wanted to wait for the elder of Tian Xuan castle to come out, and then he would use a sneak attack. He never thought that the boy would displace him. A man is enveloped by magic. He directs his magic towards the ice blocks. He asks the guy to let him see how strong he is. Fighters frozen in blocks open their eyes, which light up with red fire. Their faces become angry. All the fighters break out of the ice captivity and are going to attack Lord and Tian Yun again. The woman grins. She feels a dense devilish aura. She understands that Ancestor Kin is not so simple. The woman heard that he defeated many cultivators and used their blood to concentrate this evil in his hand. The woman points at Kin and asks Tian Yun to be careful, otherwise he will get affected by a strange aura. The guy frowns and thinks. He asks his aunt not to worry about it, as he will be fine. Kin orders his fighters to attack everyone. The fighters immediately became alarmed and, shouting about their terrible intentions, ran forward to attack. One of the elders turns to the lord and asks her to let them deal with them. The residents of the Tian Xuan palace rushed to the attack. The enchanted Kin fighters were running towards them. Tian Yun stands right in front of Kin Tian and says that he will pay for touching his aunt. The man, grinning, looks at the guy and asks him in this case to approach him and show what he is capable of. Tian Yun takes off, intending to attack the man. His whole body is shrouded in magic. The guy tries to touch the boss, but the man just grins. In the next second, the guy's hand directs an icy stream of magic directly into the man. An ice block forms ahead. Tian Yun's hand is lying right on the ice block. He exhales because he has spent a lot of energy on the attack, fearing that he simply will not have enough. He looks at the ice block in which Kin Tian Long is now imprisoned, and then he tilts his head and thinks that this was his strongest attack with the ice glove. He doesn't know if he can do it again. Suddenly the guy hears a crack. He abruptly opens his eyes and notices that the man has already made his way through the ice barrier. Kin's eyes are burning red. The whole block is surrounded by red magic. Kin Tian Long is completely released and breaks out of the ice block. The guy at this moment jumps back to a distance so as not to be attacked. The man says that Tian Yun is really strong. He didn't expect anyone to be able to resist him. Kin's forces are beginning to spread to the inhabitants of Tian Zai Castle. Girls can't resist his power. The second elder also served the Kin forces. The girl's eyes begin to glow with blue fire and their faces acquire a pale shade. Everyone has an evil grimace on their face. The guy is trying to hide from the evil aura that is trying to surround him. He feels an evil aura. Because of her, even the elders will be damaged. The guy used too much power just like that, so it's getting harder for him to block the evil aura. Someone is addressing Tian Yun. The guy turns around and notices how someone's light breaks through the evil aura. The lord asks the guy to leave her kin Tian Long. She asks the guy to help other girls. The woman says that it will be difficult to cope with a man. His cultivation is very high, so she wants to fight him. The guy comes forward and says that he is no longer a weak child who needed his aunt's protection. At this moment, it was Tian Yun's turn to protect his aunt and everyone in Tian Xuan Castle. The guy turns around and asks his aunt to confide in him. The woman looks at the guy and still decides to trust him. She leaves the boss to him. Tian Tian Long turns to the guy and asks if the guy wants to fight him for life or death. Kian shouts that Tian Yun is a naive boy. He asks how he thinks he can defeat his ancestor. He says that against the background of his ancestor, the guy looks pretty weak. Kin says that Tian Yun is very young, but has already been able to defeat many of the elders of his clan. He has to admit that the guy is much better than the fighters from his clan. The man asks Tian Yun if he wants to join his clan. He wonders if the guy wants to stay alive. Tian Yun frowns and replies that he would rather go to the world of the dead than join his clan. The guy has some kind of red haze at the corners of his lips. He says he won't let Tian Xuan castle be destroyed. The guy spreads his arms to the sides and a stream of fiery magic bursts out of his body, which takes the form of a dragon. The guy uses all his strength. The woman turns around and sees the guy. She is shocked and wonders if this is Tian Yun's power. The girl calms down a little. She sees that he really is no longer the little boy she should be worried about. 
Kin Tian Long starts screaming in rage. He asks the guy if he is from the dragon race. The guy looks at the man piercingly, and then she starts attacking him with her magic. The yellow rays are flying straight towards Kin. The guy tells the man that he should stay in his clan. He speaks negatively about the man. The man grins and says that he never expected that such a strong rival as Tianyun had been hiding in Tian Xuan castle for so long. The man makes a wave of his hand and uses his magical abilities. The guy activates the first dragon god art form. He swings and brings his hand forward, thereby sending a clawed paw straight towards the man. Kin Tian Long doesn't understand what's going on. He puts his hand forward to block the blow. Then, having fought back, he bounces back. The man admits that the power of the dragon is really terrible. The guy destroyed his evil blood banner very easily. Tian Yun reappears to strike again. He shouts that he hasn't finished yet. Then he swings and says he'll try again. The guy uses the dragon's claw, and again directs his hand towards the man who was just standing. The man is horrified by Tian Yun's strength. At first he doesn't look ready to fight off the blow, and then he starts smiling and demands that the guy doesn't look down on him. The man takes his hand behind his back and with the help of magic forms a sword in his hand. He immediately grips the hilt of his sword. Then Kin Tian Long swings and strikes, which destroys everything in its path. When the blow reached the guy, he stood and watched as strange red spirits appeared from the blow. The guy understands that Kin really has a strong spiritual weapon, which will be difficult to dodge. Kin Tian Long laughs and says that the guy will not stay alive. The guy only manages to hiss. Then he collects his own red energy in his hands and uses the technique of absorbing stars. The guy gets into a fighting stance and chuckles. He keeps his hands at the ready and magic swirls in them. Magic begins to envelop everything around. The man looks at the guy and does not understand how he did it. The man is going to attack again. He shouts that he wants to see how strong Tian Yun really is. Kin Tian Long uses the bloody glowing sword of God, a top-class spiritual weapon created by absorbing the blood of thousands of people. This sword causes low-level cultivators to have a strong thirst for blood and loss of sanity. His combat abilities, 10,000 units. The guy saw all this with the help of his appraising gaze. He saw that the sword was very strong, so also with high combat power. The guy immediately moves forward. He holds his hand out in front of him and smiles as he sweeps across the square. The man swings the bloody glowing sword of God and is surprised that the guy still thinks he can defeat him. The guy jumps and turns out to be already near kin, and asks why they don't check it out. The man already strikes and says that the guy wants to die and Tian Yun dodges and runs right under the sword. Kin Tian Long stops, not understanding what just happened and why the guy ran past. As it turned out, the guy was running towards Kyan. He strikes the man and says that they are, it still depends on which of them will lose their lives. The guy strikes directly at Kyan Yun Shen's chest. The man asks Kin Tian Long to save him. He screams in pain. Kin Tian Long turns around. He had a very gloomy face. He asked how the guy dared to do such an action. Tian Yun receives a notification that he has won and received 43,000 experience points, 1,000 craft mastery points and 3,600 madness points. He receives another notification. The system congratulates the young man on successfully reaching the 7th level of core condensation. The guy laughs and rejoices that he has increased his level, which means he has become stronger. A yellow haze emanates from his body. With this condensation improvement, Tian Yun can now fight Kin Tian on the same level. The man makes a swing and strikes. He asks how the guy dared to defeat the master of his clan right in front of his eyes. The guy is preparing to repel the attack. Then she turns and, looking at the man, chuckles. While Tian Yun is attacking a lot of the man's punches, he manages to repel each one very quickly. Then the guy rushes towards Kin Tian Long and hits him. The man does not understand what is happening and wonders how a guy can be so fast. The guy strikes the last blow, and the man distinguishes, screaming in pain. He manages to group up and get back into a fighting stance. At this time, Tian Yun is standing in front of the man. Kin Tian Long notices that the youth's speed and strength have become much higher than before. He thinks that he misjudged him, or there is an option that the guy was just hiding his true level of cultivation. The man understands that in any case, he must defeat him. Kin Tian bites his fingers. Then he runs his fingers along the blade of his sword and leaves a bloody trail. A strange inscription appears on the blade, which burned with red fire. The man swung his sword. His combat abilities were 95,000 points. And after a few seconds, they began to rise to 110,000. The guy notices that Kin Tian Long's fighting abilities have increased again by almost 20,000 at a time. 
It was as if he had drunk a berserker potion. Lord notices that the men's aura has become even scarier than it was before. She wonders if this is Kin Tian Long's true strength. One of the elders frowns and, addressing the lord of the palace, says that they cannot come closer. The man is angry. He says that H6 will allow Tian Yun to see his true strength. His eyes light up with a red flame. The man opens his hands and says that this is the day he will paint the Tian Xuan Palace in a bloody color. And when he finishes, Tian Xuan Palace will be wiped off the face of the earth. The guy looks at his characterization. He had 125,000 experience out of 150,000. 128 points of insanity and 70 prestige points. The guy thinks about having accumulated quite a lot of madness points, so now he can use them at his discretion. The guy improves his crazy regime. His eye lights up with yellow fire. He then decides to improve the Dragon God's bloodline. A strange yellow symbol appears on his forehead that glowed. Tian Yun raises his hand and activates the insane mode. A huge golden dragon wraps around him. Kin Tian Long sees the strong aura of the dragon and is in amazement. He can't move. The guy moves forward and decides that it's time for them to finish this fight, which has already dragged on. The man waves his sword in anger and, raising his tone, demands that the guy does not behave impudently. The man is surrounded by a barrier. The guy is rushing straight towards him. He gathers all his strength into a fist and swings. The guy hits his fist on Kin Tian Long's barrier and punches it, hitting the man right in the jaw. The man receives a blow of great power and flies off to the wall. The guy keeps his fist in the air, directing the flow of magic. The guy says that no one will be able to touch the Tian Xuan palace. He will fight for him to the death. The fighters come to their senses after Tian Yan's victory over boss Kin Tian Long. They don't understand what happened. The girls from Tian Zai castle also come to their senses and notice that the evil aura is dissipating. A huge pit is visible on the square, in which the defeated Kin Tian Long lies. He's lying unconscious. Then the man starts coughing up blood. The guy approaches him and, addressing him, offers to choose, either he does not stay alive, or he takes all his relatives and leaves the castle. The man asks how the guy's cultivation has grown in such a short period of time. He wonders what kind of evil technique the guy used. Kin Tian Long thinks that Tian Yun's cultivation should be at the peak of the condensation realm. Besides being from the dragon race, he also has such an evil technique. The guy gathers all his strength in his fist and says it doesn't matter. He gives the man three seconds to make a choice. He starts counting down. The man leans on his trembling hand and rises. He thinks that if he can get hold of Tian Yun's evil technique, then no one will be able to resist him. Kin Tian Long thinks that he can sacrifice all his fighters and try to defeat the guy. The man completely gets up from the ground and, raising his sword, summons a huge spirit, intending to attack the young man. The guy stands in front of the man and says that since he has made his choice, he will have to cope with the consequences. Tian Yun summons the golden dragon and uses it to dispel the spirit summoned by the man. The guy glares at the confused man and says that he is about to leave the world of the living. The guy hits Kin Tian Long right on the chest. He flies straight up, screaming in pain. Then the guy groups up for a jump and says that he will explain one important thing to everyone. He jumps up and deals another blow to the man, sending him back to the ground. The guy shouts that the consequences of the attack on the Tian Xuan palace will be terrible. The lord looks at the guy and thinks that he has really become strong. She smiles involuntarily. She understands that the guy no longer needs protection. The haze rose again in the square. When it dissipates, a guy who was standing right over a man who was lying in a huge pit became visible. Kin Tian Long asks the young man if he really thinks that Tian Xuan Palace will be safe when he deals with him. When reinforcements from other factions arrive, the guy clenches his hands in his fist and says that the Heavenly Phoenix Hall, the Heavenly Spirit Clan or someone else, it doesn't matter to him. He can handle anyone to protect the palace. The guy strikes the last blow right at Kin Tian Long. After that, he receives a notification that he defeated Kin Tian Long and received 50,000 experience points, a combat technique, a bloody beast soaring into the heavens and a spear of a bloody beast, which is a low-grade holy weapon. The guy also received a blood priest bracelet, which is a low-grade holy weapon, a thousand craft skill points and 4,000 madness points. The system notifies Tian Yun that he has defeated a target much stronger than himself. And as a reward, he gets 10 chances to draw the lottery, as well as 10,000 madness points. The next notification says that the guy has successfully completed the task and received 100,000 experience points, 10,000 gold coins, one chance to draw a lottery, and 100 favor points to everyone from the Tian Xuan Palace. The guy thinks about the fact that he has received two holy grade equipment. 
Even though they are low grade, it's amazing to get two holy equipment at once. Someone hits the guy lightly on the head, which makes him cry out. A lord stands in front of him and asks the guy not to think that she will forgive his escape just because of what he did that day. The guy scratches his head and, chuckling, says that he just didn't want to involve the Tian Xuan palace in his showdown. The woman says that he can't solve such things on his own, especially since he didn't even bother to send her a message. The woman lowers her gaze and says that she was very worried and thought that something bad had happened to the guy. The guy looks at his aunt in shock and notices that she is crying. He had never seen her like this. The guy puts his hands on her face and apologizes for bothering her. He asks her to look at him. She can see that he is very strong now and can protect his aunt in the future. The woman puts her hand to her face and, turning away, says that at the moment the guy is just arrogant. Then the woman turns her gaze to Tian Yun and adds that she is still glad to hear such words. The guy looks at her, but doesn't say anything. Everyone gathers in the hall. The Lord says he wants to appoint Tian Yun as an elder. She asks if anyone has any objections. All the elders bow their heads and say that no one has an objection. Then a guy comes out and says he wants to say something. Tian Yun turns to the master and says that he thinks it would be better if he remained an external disciple. Also, the guy is not very good at managing the palace, so he does not want to be an elder. The guy understands that the elder has to take care of many things, but he doesn't want to waste his time on such things. The woman turns to Tian Yun and says that he does not need to worry about such things. He just has to represent their Tian Xuan palace. The woman adds that in addition, if she had allowed him to manage the Tian Xuan palace, it would have collapsed on the same day. The guy folds his hands and, smiling broadly, says that everything suits him in this case. The woman says that since the leaders of the three clans were defeated on their territory, they will not leave it just like that. Now all residents of Tian Xuan Castle should be extremely careful and cautious. They need to be ready to attack. The woman says that the rivals will use any excuse to attack them, but in the end they just want to get the treasures of the Tian Xuan Palace. The guy is interested in what treasures of Tian Xuan Castle everyone is constantly talking about. He looks at the Lord. The woman says she intends to hand it over to Tian Yun and let him use it if necessary. She asks if anyone has any objections. The guy does not believe that he will be able to use the treasures of Tian Xuan Castle just like that. One of the elders turns to the lady and says that the palace treasures have always been used by the Lord of the Palace and no one else. She is not sure about the fact that it is possible to entrust these treasures to someone. The woman replies that she understands everything perfectly. But Tian Yun is much stronger than her. If the three clans attacked again, he would be able to use the treasure to defeat and protect them. The guy is worried. He asks everyone to stop and says he doesn't even know anything about the palace treasures. The Lord shows the same treasure. It turned out to be the Jade of the Frosty Soul. Its passive effect calms the shoulder and clears the mind, increasing the speed of cultivation. Frost Soul Jade's active skill, creating an icy territory that freezes everything within a certain radius. This is an intermediate level sacred item. The guy understands that this is not an easy treasure, since the temperature in the palace has suddenly dropped. The woman says that this is the Jade of the Frosty Soul. It not only helps in cultivation, but also allows you to release the effect of the frosty earth, and if you combine it with an ice-type skill, the effect will significantly increase. The guy is surprised by the intermediate soul object. He says that the item deserves the title of treasure of the Tian Xuan Palace. The guy reaches for the treasure with his hand, but the box closes abruptly, not allowing him to touch the object. The guy turns to the lord of the palace and says that he cannot accept him. This item doesn't do much good. The guy believes that the Jade of the Frosty Soul is more suitable for the Lord, so he asks her to keep the item for herself. The woman stubbornly stands her ground and hands the box with Jade to the guy to take it. But the guy refuses and pushes away from himself. The woman is silent for a while, and then he says he will keep it for Tian Yun, until the moment when he needs the Jade. The woman is already addressing everyone and is now talking about ancient ruins. Since they defeated two masters from the sect, then they got their slots. The woman then turns to Tian Yun and says that they need his help in choosing the eight disciples who will enter the ruins. The guy is a little confused. He asks if he should choose all eight students. He is interested in what about him. All the girls look at the guy with suspicion. They think who Tian Yun will choose after all. The Lord says that only cultivators of the spiritual perfection level and below can enter the ruins. The woman says that the guy is already in the sphere of core condensation, so he doesn't have to worry. The guy wonders why he can't enter the ruins. He does not understand how in this case he can fulfill the mission. The woman turns to the guy. She says that with his cultivation level, it's pointless to go there. 
His cultivation won't improve. The guy bows his head and agrees, saying that he understood everything and accepted that it was pointless to go to the ancient ruins. The guy exhales. He remembers that this is his main mission. He must fulfill it, no matter what. If he fails, he will not be able to advance further. Tianyun closes his eyes, driving away unnecessary thoughts. He decides that it doesn't matter. He'll think about it all later. Now he wants to arrange a lottery. The guy calls the Wheel of Luck. It activates the Aura of Luck. Then he gives a command to the system to start the lottery. The system spun the Wheel of Luck and he received a notification that he had received a pill with 10,000 experience points. The guy is angry because he got a consumable. He says it's all very useless. Then the guy spins the wheel of luck again. He gets 50,000 health pills. The guy turns the wheel of luck for the third time. He gets one life as a reward, which is why he decides to turn the wheel for the fourth time. Then the guy asks to stop and asks how he won his life and what it means. He presses the button located on the panel. He is shown that life is automatically activated after his death, and he has the opportunity to be reborn once. The guy's eyes lit up. He decides that not all consumables are useless. He asks the system to give him even more of them. The more, the better. The guy turns the wheel of luck once again and gets a sword as a gift. This goes on several times, and he gets a lot of different weapons and pills. Over time, the guy gets tired. He sits down on the floor and tries the pills. As it turned out, these pills are completely useless, they do not help him, no matter how much he eats them. At least he got a weapon that can be used in battle. The guy opens his profile and sees that he has the 27th level, the 7th stage of core condensation. He has 617 experience points out of 1,500,000, 43,000 crazy points, 70 prestige points. He owns various cultivation techniques, the art of the god of the northern bowels, the technique of the dragon god. Among the skills stand out, the technique of absorbing the great star, the steps of the soaring cloud, the spear of the bloody fiend. From the equipment the guy has, snow wolf combat boots, armor of the sky god, a cloak of shadows. Among the divine abilities, crazy mode, aura of luck. The guy also has a blood relationship, the dragon god's kind. Among the accessories, the hammer of the artisan god, the bracelet of power, the ring of power, the belt of power, the bracelet of the blood fiend. The guy has items, a health points recovery pill, a double pill, a 31st level gift bag, one extra life, an ill-fated god pill. The guy puts his hand with the pill to his mouth and feels disappointed, as he can only wait for the ruins to open. The next day, all the residents of Tian Xuan Castle gathered near the ancient ruins. One of the girls tells her older brother that she is very nervous. The older brother replies that she doesn't have to worry, since he will be watching her at this place. He tells her that she should believe in herself and try her best. Initially, the student assessment test was not conducted so early, but due to recent incidents, the Tian Xuan Palace needed a rapid increase in its strength, so it was postponed to an earlier date. The guy looks at the little girl and wonders if it's all too early for her. One of the girls whispers to the other that she sees a girl with green hair. She wonders who she is and how she became close to Tian Yun. One of the girls says that the girl has neither looks nor talent, and it seems that she is from the countryside. The second girl confirms her words and says that she also heard that she brought her younger brother. They had all spent a lot of effort to come to this place, but in their opinion, Lin Yun was just using her relationship with an elder to easily enter their castle. The guy notices the girl's tears and, covering her with his hand, asks her not to listen to other girls from the clan. The girl looks at her older brother with admiration. The guy says that when he was not accepted, he also heard similar words. He tells the girl that she just needs to use her power to prove her case. The girl becomes more confident. She thinks that Big Brother is right, she should use her abilities to prove herself. One of the girls turns around and tries to say something to her interlocutor that the girl tried to get closer to the elder. She assumes that she has already been accepted, but she came just for show. The girl is interested in what the elder is thinking about and why he likes someone like her. The interlocutor notes that the girl is dirty in shabby, worn-out clothes and still wants to enter the Tang Shuen Palace. The girl starts to get angry. She claims that girls can say anything about her, but they are forbidden to say anything about her older brother. The girl is going to prove to all of them that they are wrong. She will pass the exam and use her powers. The girl turns to her even harder and asks her again, grinning. She asks who the girl thinks she is, since she says such things. The second girl says that Lin Yun won't last even one round. Suddenly someone asked for silence. Someone's voice was coming from the cave. A man came out and said that the exam was starting. The man is a deacon of Liang. He is the examiner of the outer disciple of Tian Xuan Palace. The man greets Tian Yun, calling him Elder Yi. 
the guy turns to Deacon Liang and tells him to conduct the exam according to the usual rules. He does not need to be given special attention. The man folds the seal and summons a spiritual array. A huge seal appears on the ground. The man says that this is a spiritual strike array. As soon as a person gets up there, he will be attacked by soul strikes. The longer they last, the stronger their mental spirit. The deacon says that in order to become an external disciple, a person needs to withstand 9 attacks. But if someone can withstand 11 rounds of attacks, then he can become an inner disciple. One of the girls is amazed that it takes only 9 rounds to become a student. She thought they would need to withstand at least 11 or 14 attacks. The second girl tells her not to relax, as it is already difficult to withstand 10 rounds. Few people will be able to become an inner disciple. Lin Yun thinks that cultivating the mental spirit is much more difficult than cultivating the body. Someone remembers that there was a man who lasted up to 13 or 14 rounds. The girl is thinking about paying back her older brother and she must do her best and hold out. She must become an official student. Someone from the crowd of candidates for students in the Tian Xuan Palace asks to look at a girl who is going to rush into battle. The dark-haired girl says that one candidate wants to become an official student. But will she be able to withstand nine rounds of attacks? Her interlocutor chuckles and thinks that she will fall after one or two rounds of attacks. They continue to discuss Lin Yun. One of the girls asks if the result matters, because the girl will still become an official student. Since she is close to senior I the dark-haired girl says that she really envies her. Deacon Lin says that the evaluation of the first group of participants begins, everyone else needs to be quiet. The man folds his hands in the seal. Lin Yun folds his arms and prepares for attacks. Everyone immediately begins the ritual. Absolutely all the candidates folded their hands as if they were praying. The man reports the beginning of each round. First round, second round, third round, fourth round. On the fifth round, many girls began to fall to their knees exhausted, unable to withstand the attacks. But Lin Yun still stood and held on tightly. The sixth and seventh rounds are being held. Lin Yun was still standing on her feet while the rest of the remaining ones were already falling to their knees. The girls who discuss Lin Yun are wondering how the girl has been holding on for so long. The deacon announces the eighth round. The dark-haired girl looks with disdain and says that Lin Yun is just a poor girl from the street. She can't resist attacks. The second girl squints and says that she will not be able to withstand the ninth round. The deacon announces the ninth round. Lin Yun is still standing quite steadfastly. She is ready to go to the end. Everyone is watching how only one girl is kept inside the seal. The man announces the tenth round. He looks at Lin Yun and notes to himself that she is holding up quite well. He is sure that there is potential in it. On the eleventh round, the girl's legs began to shake. And on the twelfth, she screamed and fell to her feet, unable to stand it. One of the girls can't believe that Lin Yun actually lasted twelve rounds. Another girl asks who could say that the girl is in this place only at the request of Elder Yi. The girl with short hair is wondering where a poor girl from the countryside has such a strong mental spirit. Others note that she is strong. Tian Yun looks at Lin Yun and tells her that she is doing well. The girl breaks down with tears and says that she managed to pass the exam. She throws herself into Tian Yun's arms. He slaps her on the back and says that she really coped and was able to prove her independence. Tian Yun congratulates the girl on becoming a member of the Tian Xuan Palace, and even became an inner disciple on her own merits. The girl is crying. She thanks her older brother and hugs him tighter. The guy receives a notification that he has completed a hidden task, the initial period of raising a holy girl. He got 50 experience points. Also now Tian Yun has added 50 favor points to Ju Lin Yun and 30 prestige points. The guy doesn't understand what's going on. What else is going on during the saint's upbringing? He asks the girl if she is a saint. The girl looks at the guy in surprise and does not understand his question. The guy asks her to forget about it. Tian Yun asks the girl if she knows who her parents are. Lin Yun replies that she has never seen them. She and her younger brother were always alone. She shares a secret that even her younger brother is not her blood relative. They just grew up together in the same palace. The girl asks her older brother why he is asking about this right now. The guy replies that he is just curious and asks the girl not to worry. The guy assumes that Lin Yun was abandoned in the countryside as a child, but he does not understand why the clan would do such a thing. And judging by the results, Ju Lin Yun's innate abilities are very strong. If he continues to develop her, she may become a saint in the future. Tian Yun turns to the girl and says that she has great potential, and she will become much stronger by entering the ruins. But since the girl's cultivation is still low, she can wait until the next time so as not to put herself in danger. Lin Yun says she doesn't mind. 
She is just happy to be able to join Tian Xuan Palace. Half a month later, a cart pulls up to the palace. The Lord turns to Tian Yun and says that this time the young man will accompany the girls with the support of the Great Elder. A woman has to take care of many things in the palace, so she stays. The guy understands everything. He says that if other sects make a move, then she will have to send them a massage immediately. The woman nods in response. She asks the guy not to worry about it. They will cope if someone attacks the palace. She says it's late anyway and it's time for him to hit the road. Birds are flying in the sky. The carts are traveling on a rocky road. In the distance, you can already see some kind of palace. As soon as the cart arrives at the right place, the guy gets out and looks around. He analyzes the place and realizes that he sees a gate leading to a dive into the sky to the ancient ruins. Now the guy has to figure out how to get inside. Most of the factions in this place are second class, and there are very few, if any, first class factions like Tian Xuan Palace. Someone approaches Tian Yun and asks if he has arrived from Tian Xuan Palace. He is asked why Lord Shi did not come this time. The guy turns around and asks if the head of the Heavenly Land Clan Hua Quan is asking him. He apologizes for not recognizing him right away because of his clothes. Quan says there's nothing wrong with that. He prefers to remain inconspicuous when he is outside. The guy says that the Lord of the Shi Palace is busy with something, so this time he came on her behalf. Quan smiles and says he sees everything. He had heard that three great forces attacked Tian Xuan Palace, but were eventually destroyed. The guy grins and says that the old ancestor of the Tian Xuan Palace is really strong. One of the elders confirms Quan's words. She says that even if Tian Xuan Palace is only a first rank faction, then they are not weak. Suddenly, a sound is heard. All the people around fell silent and began to look around. Most people started shouting that the gates to the ancient ruins were opening. The gates to the ancient ruins have opened. Everyone screamed with joy that they could now go inside. Everyone immediately ran forward, going inside the gate. The guy thinks that since he is in this place, he should try to enter. Tian Yun turns to the great elder and asks if the woman could give him a token. He wants to try and see if he can get in. The woman sighs, takes out a token and gives it to the guy. She sees that he still hasn't given up, so she gives him a chance to try. The guy obediently thanks her. The guy holds a golden token in his hand to enter the ancient ruins. He thinks that the token does not look like something special. The guy decides it's time to go and try. He takes one step towards the entrance to the ruins. At first, he does not feel any rejecting force and moves on. An elder was watching him. It seemed strange to her that the guy managed to enter, because cultivators above the level of spirit cultivation should not enter the ruins. The woman herself approaches the gate and notes that there are still restrictions that she cannot circumvent. The guy expected that the great elder would not be able to enter, as for Tian Yun himself, he was able to pass most likely thanks to the system and the task. The guy claps his hands with joy and thinks that now that he has entered, he can complete the mission. The guy looks around and sees a huge palace located on an elevation. He understands that these are ancient ruins of immersion in heaven. The ruins were mostly explored, and most of the treasures were also taken away. But the guy is not in this place for the sake of treasures. Tian Yun is approached by a girl who turns out to be Queen Zhu. She asks how the elder got into the ancient ruins. He says he's not sure about his assumption. He just walked in and found himself in this place. Someone's voice is coming from the opposite direction. Someone recognized Tian Yun. Everyone turns to see this man. Towering over them was a man who introduced himself as Mi Lin Feng. He is from the Heavenly Lands clan. The guy turns around and asks what he needs. Yo Ling makes sure that the guy is Tian Yun, who is very famous. He says the guy has a reward with a big reward. While the man jumps off the platform, the guy asks what it matters, especially for him. The man heard that he was very strong and made a lot of noise in the Heavenly Phoenix Hall by defeating Liang Tian Cheng. The man smiles and says that in the end, Tian Yun needed Tian Xuan Palace to get out of trouble. Lin Feng tells the guy that he should rely only on his own strength and not hide behind women. Queen Zhu starts to get angry. She asks how a man dares to say such words about their elder. The girl says that Tian Yun didn't rely on anyone to solve his problem. She asks him not to say anything, since the man does not know anything. The man asks if Tian Yun can speak for himself. He asks why the girls speak for him. The guy turns around and tells Kin Zhu that it's time for them to leave. Lin Feng looks at the guy's back with displeasure. The man had heard that Tian Yun had single-handedly dealt with several people from the Heavenly Phoenix Hall, and now he's just leaving. Kin Zhu shakes his fist and demands that the man stop talking about their elder as if he knows what happened in the Heavenly Phoenix Hall. They say that the only one who shows himself terribly is himself. The man immediately becomes enraged. 
He demands that they be silent, since he is not talking to them. Lin Feng is sure that if Tian Yun is really as strong as the rumors say about him, then he is challenging him to a duel of life and death. The guy turns around. He looks at the man with contempt and says that he doesn't care what he thinks about him, he's not interested. Tian Yun thinks that the guy himself is asking for a conflict, but he does not have time for it. Lin Feng raises his voice and says that this is what he expected from Tian Yun. He knew that he would hide behind his women and rely only on Tian Xuan Palace. He says Shi Xuan should be ashamed of the young man. The guy turns around and says that the man still attracted his attention. He asks if Lin Feng really wants a life and death duel. Since that's the case, he will arrange it right now. The man pulls out his sword, very much rejoicing at Tian Yun's agreement. He urges the guy to start a duel as soon as possible. The man starts attacking the guy with his sword, shouting terrible things to him. The guy easily dodges and says that Ling Feng is too slow. Tian Yun knocks the sword out of the man's hands. Lin Feng screams in surprise, and then he does not have time to dodge the kick and flies back, crashing into a stone. The guy receives an alert that he has defeated Lin Feng and received 9000 experience points and the Jade Sky Sword, which is a low-grade spiritual weapon. The guy also gets 90 madness points. Several people immediately run to Senior Lin Feng, trying to help him, but it was already too late. One of the men turns around and asks how Tian Yun dared to defeat their elder Liang Feng. He says the head of their clan won't let him go. The guy grimaces, rolling his eyes, and says that it was Lin Feng who wanted a life and death duel. He asks why he is being accused. The guy confidently says that if someone dares to say something bad about the Tian Xuan palace, then he will not mind fighting them in a duel for life and death. The guy asks if anyone else wants to fight him. Tian Yun tells her sisters that they need to go ahead. They have already lost a lot of time in this place. One of the girls asks the elder where he is going to go. The guy says he's just going to walk around and see if he can find any treasures. Queen Zhu says that most likely there is nothing of value left in this place, so they will not find anything. Then the girl points her hand forward and says that they can only find the test obelisk. The guy asks the girl again, not understanding about which obelisk she is talking about. The guy looks at the tower in front of him. He says they have no choice but to go to this place anyway. They're all heading forward. Tian Yun thinks that maybe he will find something in this place that will help him with his mission. The guy notices the test obelisk. He assumes that people sit down in front of him and meditate. While people are meditating near the obelisk, they can learn a new technique based on their standard. The highest rank of martial technique that anyone has ever studied is sky rank, and the lowest is human rank. A scroll appeared in front of the man who was sitting and meditating in front of the obelisk. He looks at it in surprise at first, and then stretches out his hand to take it away. The man examines the scroll and realizes that he just got a medium rank combat equipment. The man gets up from his seat and, sighing, walks past Tian Yun, who is watching him. The guy looks at the obelisk and wonders how the secret is hidden in it. He decides to sit down and try to meditate. The guy is sitting right in front of the obelisk. It is illuminated by a beam coming from the obelisk. Then the soul seems to leave the guy's body. Through the beam of the obelisk, the soul passes inside and is transformed. The guy finds himself in some snow-covered place with monoliths. He looks around to see where he is. Tian Yun wonders if there is only the name of the martial art in the body, but not the rank and its effects. The guy comes to the conclusion that he can judge them only by name and make his choice. The guy touches the writing on the monoliths. From the looks of it, once the martial art is taken away, it will disappear from the realm. The guy understands that he has to leave everything to luck and choose at random. But the guy is not interested, he just wants to complete his mission. Tian Yun activates the aura of luck and decides to walk past the monoliths. He calmly walks by, and then notices something strange in the distance. It seems strange to him that there is nothing on one of the obelisks. He thinks his luck isn't good enough yet. The guy does not accept this option. From the very beginning, he walked in a circle, no matter how far he went, he returned back to this very area. The guy gets the idea that he can't leave this place at all. It's like he's in a maze. Tian Yun reaches out with his hand to the monolith, but it sparkles, which is why the guy immediately pulls his hand away. The guy suggests that this obelisk may be the core of the maze. If it really is a core, then it has been in front of him all this time. The guy gets upset because he wasted a lot of madness points. He sighs. Then the guy swings and destroys the monolith into pieces with one blow. He stands in the middle of the monoliths, but nothing else happens. After a few seconds, the monoliths began to crumble and disappear, and the guy started coming out of the fighting stance. The guy is happy that he finally got to the goal. The situation has changed. To get to this place, you had to first break through the maze outside. Those who don't know this can only choose the martial arts written on the obelisk outside. 
Suddenly the guy turns around and notices something. It seems to him that he sees the way. He follows this path and sees that the road leads down to the courtyard. He goes down to the bottom and sees a house with a yard. The guy immediately realizes that this is just an illusion. But despite this, the yard is too simple. The house itself is small. But in the guy's opinion, that's what makes him stand out. Truly strong cultivators do not dwell on luxury, but behave modestly. The guy knocks on the door and is immediately let in. He goes inside, not expecting to meet someone. Tian Yun notices an elderly man. He greets the gentleman who is sitting and drinking tea. The man waves for the guy to sit down and says he doesn't need to be so formal. He's just a manager, so the guy can call him Elder Xuan. The man asks Tian Yun to follow him to another place, since the guy is the chosen one. The man leads the young man into another room and informs the gentleman that the chosen one has arrived. There is a strange altar in the room. The guy recognizes the king of spirits. The spirit king is a level just below the saint king, and it is the highest cultivation level ever achieved on the continent. The guy is not surprised that he was able to create such mysterious ruins. The guy starts talking about the spiritual king Xuan Tian, but he is interrupted, and the man says that even if he is the king of spirits, he still will not be able to escape fate. The guy is holding lighted sticks of incense in his hands. He places them near the altar. The guy asks to be allowed to pay homage to the king of spirits. The guy folds his hands and thinks that he is very sorry to lose such a strong and talented cultivator. The man praises Tian Yun. He says his heart and character are good. He is worthy to become the hereditary disciple of the master. The guy asks, he just brought the incense sticks and has already received the qualifications necessary to become the hereditary disciple of the king of spirits. The man asks the guy not to be surprised. He says it just means he has the right to take the test. The man adds, saying that at least Tian Yun is better than all those who are insincere and who want to inherit. The guy asks if there were others who came earlier in the hope of taking their inheritance. The man confirms his words. Other people came, but they were all insincere, so they could not receive the inheritance. And all these people were punished for deceit and deceit. The man tells Tian Yun that he doesn't have to worry. He sees that his character is not bad. His master likes people like him. The guy thinks that he has a really good character. Otherwise, if he had received a severe injury in the state of the soul of the spirit, then even if he had gone to another world, he would not have remained the smartest person in the whole world. The guy bows his head and asks if he can find out what Elder Xuan's trial will be like. The man says that if the guy wants to inherit and become the successor, then he must defeat his master. There is a strange energy emanating from the altar at this moment. The guy feels it and tries to figure out what's going on. Suddenly the guy is in the middle of the fog. He's just standing there trying to figure out what just happened. The guy looks around and notices something strange, namely, the area for the fight. When the fog clears completely, Tian Yun can get a better look at this place. The spirit of a man appears in front of the guy, who is wearing golden armor. He's in the air. The man says that the golden spirit is the spiritual consciousness that his master left when he left the world of the living. The man says that if Tian Yun can defeat this spiritual consciousness, then the inheritance will be his. But if the guy on the contrary loses to the spiritual consciousness, then he will lose the memory of this place. The guy smiles, looking at the new opponent in the form of a golden spirit, and says that he understood everything. He's ready to fight. The man adds that the spiritual image of the master will be adjusted according to his age. As for the level of spiritual consciousness of the master, Tian Yun will know everything about it when he tests it. The man looks at Tian Yun and wishes him good luck. He says that if the guy can defeat the master, then he will become the successor. Tian Yun looks menacingly at his opponent. He thinks that defeating the spirit king Xu and Tian, even if it is his youngest son, will not be easy. The guy activates his evaluation view. With his help, he sees that the opponent's fighting abilities are increasing every second, starting with 46,000 points and ending at 51,000 points. Tian Yun stares at the spiritual consciousness of the master and thinks that at such a young age, the fighting abilities of the spirit king have already reached 50,000. The guy asks the man if his owner uses any weapons. The man replies that his master does not need the help of weapons, he relies on his fists. Then the man raises his chin and adds that the young man can use any weapon he brought with him. The guy gets into a fighting stance and says that in this case he will also use only his fists to express his respect. The man says that everything will be as Tian Yun wishes. He reminds that if the young man fails, then he will not have another chance. The guy interrupts his speech and says that he has no problems. He thinks his fists can't lose to someone. The guy shouts that he is ready to start. 
the spiritual consciousness of the master suddenly begins to send strange magical streams. The spiritual consciousness rose up and headed to attack Tian Yun. The guy didn't understand what happened at first, and then he got into a defensive stance as he realized that he would be attacked very fiercely from the very beginning. The spiritual consciousness of the master lands right on the spot where the guy was standing. There is a powerful explosion, because of which the ground under your feet begins to collapse. The spiritual awareness of the master notices that it hit the spot, driving the young man into the ground. A second later, a hand rises from the ground, holding the fist of spiritual consciousness. The guy shouts that he caught him. Tian Yun grabbed the fist of spiritual consciousness Master AI decided to use the star absorption technique on her. The guy was getting more and more experience every second. Starting with a thousand experience points, the guy holds the spiritual consciousness of the master. He is not going to break out of the grip yet. The guy thinks that everything is going well so far. Apparently, he can still absorb the experience of the state of mind. The guy thinks that even if the master is the king of spirits, he will still become his source of experience. The guy is absorbed more and more points. He pulls the fist right towards him. The guy smiles, because at his age, the role of spirits has such high combat abilities. If the guy had come at a later time, then he would have had no chance of winning. The guy attracts the fist of the spirit even more strongly and thinks that the system will make a big contribution to his victory. Then the spirit turns over Tian Yun's fist and throws it away from him. But the guy manages to grab the hand of the spirit. The guy is behind the spirit and asks him if he is going to escape. The spirit only turns around. The guy knocks the back of the spirit with his knee and puts it on the ground. He won't let the spirit escape. The guy smiles and says that the spirit is really strong, but if he can't attack, then it's all useless. The guy looks at the panel in the open system. He thought that in a state of mind he would not be able to gain experience, so he did not take any pills. But since the guy can, he's going to take a few pills. The guy smiles insanely, anticipating victory. He takes the experience pill three times and becomes much stronger. The guy gets first 5,700 experience points, then 5,090 experience points and so the number increases to 5,700 experience points. Tian Yun presses with all his might on the back of the spirit. The man watching the fight is surprised by the unusual strength of the young man. There aren't many cultivators who can match, much less surpass, his master. Then the man stops. He comes to the conclusion that it will all end very badly, because the spiritual power of the master is completely absorbed. 